With the rise of data usage in the business world, the need for managing databases has also grown significantly as data storage is critical to growing businesses. Now, there is no question of one size fits all answer to the question of which database management system is best because the choice of the DBMS depends on various factors like the requirement of application or system being developed be it hardware or software and scalability and performance whether the system has the ability to expand or contract the capacity of resources in order to support the ever changing usage of your application which will ultimately result in performance now different dbms have their strengths and weaknesses and what may be the best dbms for one application may not be suitable for another although there are many popular database management systems like oracle sql server postgresql and sqlite but one such DBMS which stands out from the rest and widely used by many is MySQL. So, what could be better than staying ahead of the curve and getting trained in MySQL? Well, subscribing to Simply Learn, of course, since we publish tech-related content every day to help you master various emerging technologies and programming languages and also make sure to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. Now, MySQL is a popular open source relational database management system that has been around since 1995. The future of MySQL looks promising as it continues to be widely used and is constantly evolving to meet the ever-changing needs of the users. As more businesses move to the cloud, there is likely to be a greater demand for cloud-based MySQL deployment. This includes both MySQL as a service and running on cloud-based virtual machines. So learning MySQL can add great value to your array of skills. Now this MySQL full course is designed to provide a comprehensive overview of MySQL database covering everything from the basics of installation and understanding what is SQL and using various types of commands, operators, clauses, joins to advanced topics such as joins, stored procedures and triggers. So whether you are new to MySQL or an experienced developer looking to expand your knowledge, this course will provide you with the foundational knowledge and practical skills that is needed to work with MySQL effectively. Throughout this course, you will learn how to create and manage MySQL databases, how to query and manipulate data using SQL statements, and how to optimize performance using indexes and other techniques. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's session. Over to our training experts. And I welcome you all to this interesting session on introduction to SQL. Learning SQL isn't an uphill task because unlike other programming languages, SQL is quite simple and uses common English words in its usage. Even a non-technical professional with no prior experience in programming can easily learn and understand it. According to a survey by Stack Overflow in 2020, SQL ranked as the third most used programming language. Also, every 9 out of 10 companies in the world uses SQL. So without any further ado, let us dive straight into today's topic on introduction to SQL. Firstly, let us discuss the agenda for today's session. We'll start this tutorial by understanding what a database is and look at some popular databases. Next, we'll understand the need for databases. After that, we'll look at the evolution of SQL and how it grew over the years. Then, we'll discuss what exactly is SQL, followed by some of its unique features, Next, we'll go through the working of SQL, types of SQL commands. Towards the end, we'll discuss the advantages and disadvantages of SQL. And finally, we'll see some applications of SQL in real life. What is a database? Data in today's world plays a vital role in our everyday lives, be it your work-related data in your laptop, your bank account details, or even your Gmail password. So it's necessary to store this data safely and in an organized way. That's where database comes into picture, which holds and manages the data. A database can be defined as a collection of information or processed data that can be stored and accessed whenever needed. For example, we can use a database to store the complete details of an employee working in an organization. The primary goal of a database is to store and retrieve information efficiently. Popular Databases Some popular open source and commercially available databases are MySQL, Oracle Database, Microsoft SQL Server, MongoDB, and PostgreSQL. Why we need a database? 
Now that we've understood what a database is, let's understand the use of database and the need for it. Database came into existence in the early 1970s, but all the data was stored in computer files before that. As the technology kept advancing, it became difficult for computers to handle when the number of files increased and the volume of data grew. The so-called traditional file system was no longer able to store and retrieve data efficiently. Let us now see some of the limitations and drawbacks caused by traditional file system. Data redundancy and inconsistency. Redundancy means when the same data is getting duplicated and repeated in different locations. This leads to excess and unwanted storage, which eventually results in inconsistency where the data in separate files do not match with each other. Data isolation. Data is isolated because uh, it is scattered in various files in different locations and the files may be in different formats as well. At any point, writing new application programs to retrieve the appropriate data becomes difficult as the files are separated from each other. Limited data access. File storage systems usually do not have access for multiple users. This means multiple users at different places cannot access the data simultaneously. It becomes difficult to access important data if multiple users are searching at the same time. Security and integrity issues. Data stored in files can easily be accessed and tampered. So it's essential to prevent unauthorized users access to hold the data's integrity. In order to eliminate all these drawbacks, we use a database that is controlled by a database management system. Let us now look at the history of SQL. SQL was developed by IBM in the year 1970. Dr. Cordboys and Donald Chamberlain proposed a paper on usage of relational database management. They came up with SQL, which can be used to perform operations on data stored in the databases. SQL was made publicly available and was accepted for the use of relational database in the year 1974. Initially, the language was known as Structured English Query Language, pronounced as SQL, which was later changed into SQL in the year 1978. The American National Standard Institute, ANSI, and other international organizations have standardized SQL as a language for database communication in the year 1986. Though companies use a different version of SQL nowadays, the latest version of it was released in 2019 by Microsoft. What is SQL? SQL is defined as a structured query languages. It allows the user to manage and manipulate the database. So you might have got a doubt in your head that we have discussed databases earlier and why we are discussing SQL now. Well, you got it right. Both database and SQL are interconnected to each other. SQL allows you to perform operations like insert, update, modify, and delete in the database. In a nutshell, SQL is used to communicate with the database systems to retrieve the information. Features of SQL. SQL is one of the most demanding skills nowadays. With the ever increasing amount of data, SQL serves as a powerful tool to provide insights to businesses while handling databases. SQL is used to define the overall schema, that is the complete structure of the database by managing and manipulating the data accordingly and retrieving the information whenever required by the user. SQL also allows flexibility as it uses simple English words in its queries like create, delete, etc. SQL can handle large amounts of records stored in databases with utmost efficiency. Let us now see how SQL works. A typical SQL database engine includes a storage engine which is a database server and a query processor within the SQL engine. To understand simply, let us take an example. Suppose John is an HR manager working in an organization. He wants the information of all the employees who have joined last year. John writes an SQL query in his laptop to retrieve the data. In order to execute the query, it must interact with relational database management system within the database server. And the request should be a valid query before the SQL engine can process it. The SQL engine then writes to and retrieves data from the database server. Both database server and SQL engine work hand in hand together to process the required data. The system processes the SQL request and sends it to web server 
to access the information via SQL database. And if the information is found in the tables, the database server sends the information back to the user. In this way, John can retrieve the information from the database using SQL. Types of SQL commands. SQL commands give instructions to database to perform specific actions to retrieve the data. SQL commands are broadly classified into four types. The first one is data definition language or DDL. DDL allows the user to define the table and change its overall structure. Commands that are used in DDL are create. It is used to create a new table. Alter. It is used to modify the existing table by adding unique attributes. Drop. It is used to delete the whole table and the data stored in it. Truncate. It is used to delete the rows in a table. The next one is data manipulation language or DML. DML is used to access and manipulate data in tables. Commands that are used in DML are select. It is used to extract data from the tables. Update. It is used to update a value in the existing table. Delete. Unlike the drop command, the delete command is used to delete a specific row in the table. Insert. It is used to insert a new value into the table. The next one is data control language or DCL. DCL is responsible for maintaining the security which gives control access and permissions to the database. Commands that come under DCL are grant. It is used to grant permission to user to access the database. Revoke. It is used to cancel or take back the earlier granted permission. The last one is transaction control language or TCL. TCL has three commands, namely commit. It is used to permanently save the transaction. Rollback. It is used to restore the transaction that is not saved. Save point. It is used to hold a transaction temporarily. It can be rolled back to its previous state at any point. Let us now look at some of the advantages of SQL. One of the main advantages of SQL is that it provides access to data stored in database with its high speed and faster query processing quickly and efficiently. SQL is open source. That means it is publicly available and can be accessed from the internet. It is also straightforward to implement as well. SQL also provides the user to have multiple views of their content stored in the database. SQL is efficient in retrieving vast amount of data using simple queries. And also it is portable as well, which means you can perform all these operations at your home or your workplace through your laptops and PCs. Disadvantages of SQL There are two sides to every coin and similarly SQL also has few advantages which are not that significant. Initially, one may find it challenging to work with SQL due to its complex interface. Since it's a platform-based languages, most of the commercially available SQL servers costs are relatively higher. SQL is constantly working on these massive amounts of data stored in the databases and hence maintenance costs are also high as well. Let us now look at some of the applications in real life of SQL. SQL is widely used in various sectors nowadays. Some of them are education. Schools and universities use SQL and databases to store and retrieve information about their students, faculty and staff. Healthcare. Hospitals and other medical centers use SQL to store the details of the patients without any hassle. It also helps in maintaining all their documents and bills as well. Retail and e-commerce. With its vast presence in the market, retail and e-commerce companies store their customers' data to improve their shopping experiences by providing special offers which will in turn help their businesses to grow. Banking. SQL is one of the significant components of banking sector as well. Banks store the account details of customers and the transactions done on day-to-day -day basis in the database. Finance. Finance is another massive area where SQL queries are used regularly in managing the assets, revenue details, shares of the companies, etc. Faster execution and retrieval of data are key for all the businesses to make strategies and derive insights from it. Companies using SQL SQL is used extensively every day by some big tech giant companies like Google, Microsoft, 
Oracle, Amazon, Facebook, etc. Even small companies and startups heavily rely on SQL to make better decisions and provide solutions and service to customers. With that, we have come to the end of this session on introduction to SQL. By now, you must have got some idea of what SQL is. Over the years, SQL has evolved and is widely used nowadays worldwide. It is one of the most efficient database languages out there. It can perform various operations on the database to retrieve the data instantly. SQL is very simple to understand and easy to learn as well as all the commands and queries are written using English words. Unlike other programming languages, SQL requires almost no coding. It does not require thousands of lines of code. The syntax is also user friendly and easy to implement. Hey everyone, welcome to another interesting video tutorial on how to install MySQL server on your Windows system. So in this session, uh, we'll go through the complete installation process of MySQL Workbench as well as MySQL Shell, which is basically a command line used to create tables with the help of SQL language. So without any further delay, let's get started. But before we begin, make sure you have a good internet connection so that at any point you won't find any issue or difficulty with the installation process. So let's go ahead and start with the installation. Firstly, go to Google and type MySQL. You'll find MySQL official website page on the search result. Click on that. Once you reach their official website page, uh, you'll find download section. Click on that. Now scroll down a bit and you'll find MySQL Community GPL Downloads. Click on that link. Now you'll find various options for downloads such as various uh, repositories, uh, MySQL Shell, MySQL Workbench, etc. But since we are installing it for the first time on our Windows system and we are only concerned with the MySQL Workbench and Shell, uh, we'll go with MySQL Installer for Windows. Click on that link. Now you'll find two options for download. Uh, the first one is Windows 86 32 bit MSI installer. It is showing here 32 bit, but it will uh, work for 62 bit systems as well. So don't worry. And you can choose either of the two. And uh, I'm going with the first one. Click on download. Now you'll find this page where you'll have a uh, login and sign up uh, for the Oracle account. For time being, just ignore that and click on no thanks to start my download. Save it on your system. Once it's downloaded, uh, open the file, give all the necessary permissions. Now you'll find a setup page uh, where you'll have different options uh, such as developer, server, client, full and custom. Uh, we'll choose custom because we want uh, MySQL Workbench and MySQL Shell. So click on next. Now we have to select the products which we want to install in our system. Uh, you can find MySQL Server, click on that and expand it. You'll find MySQL Server 8.0, click on that. You'll find the latest version of it, uh, click on that and uh, select the arrow and send it to the other side. Now scroll down a bit and uh, you'll find applications, click on that. You can see MySQL Workbench, expand it and you'll find the latest version of it as well. Click on that and uh, click on the arrow and send it to the other side. Scroll down a bit and you'll find MySQL shell as well. Click on that, expand it, select the latest version, click the arrow and send it to the other side. Now we are good to go and uh, click on next. Now it will ask for uh, the path where you want to install all these files. Uh, we are saving this on our C drive. Uh, just check all the necessary paths and uh, click on next. Now all the three products are ready to download. Click on execute. Again, uh, now depending upon your internet speed, this may take a while. So don't worry, just sit back and uh, wait for it to get downloaded. You can see all the three are successfully downloaded. Uh, click on next. Now we need to install all the three products. Click on execute. So you can do the installation process simultaneously with me or uh, just take a note of it and perform it later as well on your PCs and laptop. Uh, this might take a while, so we'll wait for it to get installed. As you can see, all the three of them are uh, successfully installed. Click on next. Click on next again. 
Now you'll find the server configuration type. Uh, you'll find different port number and protocol port. Just leave as it is because it is set by default by the system. Click on next. Now we'll have the authentication method. You'll be provided with two options. Uh, we'll choose the recommended one, which is given by the system. Click on next again. Now we have to set a root password. Uh, so by the way, guys, the root is basically the a default user which will have who will have the access to all the files and programs. So enter a password of your own choice. And make sure you take a note of it because uh, we'll have to use it at a later stage. And also while logging into the MySQL server, you will use the same password. So click on check. So as you can see, there's a blue tick mark, which means it's verified. Uh, so you can go ahead, click on next. Now you'll find the Windows service, which is the standard system account. Choose that and click next. Now you have to apply all the uh, configuration for the system files. Uh, for that, just click on execute. And the system will uh, automatically con configure itself. So this might take a while, so we'll wait for it to complete. Uh, as you can see, uh, the all the files are successfully configured. Uh, click on finish. Click on next. So once you uh, click on finish, uh, MySQL Workbench and MySQL Shell will automatically launch. So Workbench and Shell are started in the background. Uh, as you can see, there's a local instant MySQL 80. Click on that. Now it will ask you to enter the password which you have set earlier. Click on that. So that's it guys. We have successfully installed MySQL Workbench on our system. But uh, before you get started, there's another little process that we are, with, that we are uh, left behind with. Uh, now you have to connect all the files and packages to the server before you start working on the tables. So for that, we need to locate where the, where the MySQL files are stored. For that, we'll go to file manager. Since we have saved the uh, files on local disk D, local disk C, uh, click on C drive, go to program files, click on MySQL, open MySQL server 8.0, click on bin. Now, these are all the files and packages that you have to connect to the server. For that, uh, double click on uh, location path, copy the whole address and open command prompt. On the command prompt, you will have to type cd that is the current directory and uh, paste the address that you have copied earlier and click enter. Now type mysql space my u root minus p. Here minus u is the user, which is the root user which we have taken. Minus p is the password. Click on enter. Now it will ask you to enter the password that you have set earlier. Type the same. So if you find uh, what you are seeing in my system, that is Oracle is registered trademark of Oracle Corporation and all this thing. That means you have uh, successfully downloaded and installed all the files and uh, packages into the MySQL server and you are good to go and start working on your tables right away. Learning a new programming language and its syntax can be quite difficult sometimes. Whereas SQL syntax is very simple to learn and easy to execute as well. More on that soon. So without any further delay, let's get started with today's topic. Firstly, let us discuss the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what SQL syntax is and why we use it. Next, we'll understand what are SQL expressions and SQL statements. Then we'll discuss about SQL data types, followed by SQL operators. Next, we'll go through SQL commands and its types. After that, we'll discuss the syntax of DDL commands, followed by DML commands. And finally, we'll have a look at the syntax of DCL commands as well. What is SQL syntax? Just like other programming languages, SQL follows a unique set of rules and guidelines called syntax. 
we use simple English words in the SQL syntax in order to execute various queries. SQL syntax is by default case insensitive. That means the system allows the user to write the queries in both uppercase as well as lowercase. But if you're working with MySQL server, then you need to give table names exactly as they exist in the database. We know that RDBMS is the basis for all modern database systems, including SQL, which manages and performs various operations on the tables like insert, update, modify, and delete. So in order to retrieve the data stored in the database, it is necessary to learn SQL syntax first. Before we move ahead with the topic, if you want to learn more about the basics of DBMS and SQL, make sure you check out our previous playlist videos on introduction to DBMS and SQL on our channel. We'll leave the link in the description below. SQL expressions. SQL expression is a combination of one or more keywords and values, operators, data types and other SQL functions. These SQL expressions are like a formula, which are similar to mathematical formulas, which we generally use to solve a problem. And in this case, they're written in a query language using a proper syntax. SQL statement. SQL statements are basically collection of SQL expressions. For example, let us consider an employee table to understand it in a better way. The table is having attributes like employee ID, name, age, city and salary. Now, if I want to fetch the record of all the employees and their IDs, I'll write a simple SQL query. That is select ID comma name from employee. Here select is the database object or the keyword that is used. ID and name are the columns from employee. Employee is the name of the table. When I execute this query, this will be the output. It will display the ID and name of the employee. Let us look at another query. Now I want to display uh, the salary of employees having uh, more than 30,000. For that, I'm using the query as select ID name from employee where salary is greater than 30,000. Here, where is the conditional statement that I'm using or it is a SQL clause. Also, we are using greater than symbol, which is an SQL operator. So with the help of SQL statements, we can fetch uh, the records of all the information from SQL tables. SQL data types. SQL data type specifies which type of values is stored in the database tables. SQL data types are mainly classified into three categories. The first one is numeric. Numerical data refers to the data that is in the form of numbers. In numerical data type, we have different uh, types as well. For example, int. Int holds values of integers and whole numbers without any decimal point. Further, they are again divided into small int and big int also. The difference between them is the size and range of the value they can store and operate. Bit. Bit data type is an integer data type that can only take values of 0, 1 or any null value. SQL optimizes storage of bit columns. If a table has 8 or fewer bit columns, SQL stores them as 1 byte. If a table has 9 or up to 16 bit columns, SQL stores them as 2 bytes and so on. Float. Float stores the numbers having decimal values. Depending upon the number of digits after the decimal point, SQL gives the size accordingly in its range. Boolean. It is used to specify Boolean values that is true and false. Zero is considered as false and non-zero values are considered as true. String data type. String data types allows us to store fixed or variable character values. They are again further divided into various types. The first one is char. Char is used to specify a fixed length string that can contain numbers, letters, and special characters. Its size can be 0 to 255 characters. Varchar. Varchar is similar to char, but it stores variable length strings and size of varchar is also more than the char data type with a range of 0 to almost 60,000 characters. So if you're storing strings with a widely variable length such as name, address, email ID, then we have to use varchar. Text. Text data type stores any kind of text data. It can hold string value that can contain maximum length of 255 characters. Date time. In SQL, date time data type is used for storing values that can contain both date as well as time. The first one is date. It is used to specify date format that is year, month, date. In this data type, 
we can store only the value of date and the next one is date time it is used to specify the combination of both date and time the format is year m- month date hours minutes and seconds for instance i have taken the example as 2022 3 that is the month 20 is the date 23 hours 59 is the minutes and 59 is the seconds time stamp it is also similar to date date time data type the format specification is also the same as well the only difference is it has less uh, range of values to store it is also used to convert current time into various time zones like utc gmt etc we also have xml and json data types which are not that significant and uh, we do not use as frequently as other data types in sql sql operators sql operators are used to specify certain conditions in an sql statement sql operators are broadly classified into five categories the first one is arithmetic arithmetic operators perform mathematical operation on numerical data on the sql tables these operation performs addition subtraction multiplication and division operations on the numerical operands the next one is logical the logical operators in sql perform boolean operations which gives two results either true or false these operators provide true value if both operands match the logical condition some logical operators are and not or between etc comparison the comparison operator is in sql compares two different data in the sql tables and checks whether they are same greater or lesser the sql comparison operator are used with a conditional clause where in the sql queries equal to is highly used a uh, comparison operator in sql bitwise bitwise operators perform bit manipulations between two expressions of any integer data type category bitwise operators convert two integer values to binary bits and perform and or or not operation on each bit which finally gives the required result final one is set the set operators in sql combine a similar type of data from two or more sql database tables basically it merges the result which is extracted from two or more sql queries into a single result sql union intersect and minus operators are some of the examples of set operations sql commands we know that sql commands are broadly classified into four types the first one is data definition language ddl ddl allows the user to define the table and make changes to its overall structure commands that are used in ddl are create it is used to create a new table alter it is used to modify the existing table by adding new attributes drop it is used to delete the whole table and the data stored in it truncate it is used to delete the rows in a table now that we have got the idea and understanding of various operators data types and commands uh, let us look at the syntax of all these commands the first one is sql create statement perhaps one of the most important and used sql statement because if you want to create a table you have to first name the table and then specify the columns and the columns data types so let us look at the syntax of uh, create statements the syntax is followed as a uh, create table which is the uh, keyword that is used followed by table name that you want to create and uh, within the uh, parenthesis you have to mention the column give space and add the data type so in this way you can add n number of columns and mention the data types but uh, make sure guys you have to give the appropriate data type for the columns that you have uh, taken because uh, there might be a chance uh, in, there might be an instance where you have you have given the column uh, such as age and you are mentioning data type as character char uh, which is basically a mismatch the computer doesn't accept it because uh, generally uh, age is basically a numerical value but uh, you are mentioning char but it should ideally be int to store the data so just keep an eye on it when you are creating new tables so let us now look at uh, an example of create statement so i want to create a table name employee for that i am writing as create table Uh, space employee and within the uh, parenthesis i am mentioning employee id as my first column space 
int which is the data type and I'm giving name varchar address varchar close the parenthesis and put a semicolon and if you execute this statement this will be the following result it will display uh, the table with different columns uh, with the first column as employee ID the second column as name and uh, the third column as address easy right the next one is SQL alter uh, table the SQL alter statement is basically is used to add uh, modify or even uh, delete you know certain columns from the existing table let us look at the syntax of SQL alter command so the SQL alter command is alter table space table name that you have to mention add and within the parenthesis you have to mention the column and the data type similarly you can add n number of uh, data types as per your requirement let us now look at one of the example now i wanted to uh, add the date of birth of the employee in a new column for that i'll write as alter table employee add and within the parenthesis date of birth and uh, i'll mention uh, the uh, data type as well which is the date and if you execute this it will show the result like this it will add another column date of birth in the already existing table now uh, due to certain reasons if you want to uh, drop or delete the uh, date of birth uh, column for that we have to write syntax as alter table give the employee uh, table name drop column which is the keyword we use and date of birth so this will be the final uh, output when you execute the uh, query it will uh, completely drop the date of birth from the table next we'll look at sql drop statement sql drop uh, statement basically uh, removes all the data and the, it changes the overall structure of the table by deleting the uh, records in the table so let us look at the uh, syntax the syntax followed is a drop table followed by the table name that uh, we want to create let us look one of the example uh, the syntax followed is a drop table employee and when I execute this it will show an error uh, stating that table employee uh, does not exist which means you have completely deleted all the records uh, from the employee table SQL truncate statement let us look at the SQL truncate statement syntax the syntax is truncate table which is the keyword that is used and we have to specify the table name for example if you want to truncate uh, the values in employee table we have to write truncate table employee so this will be the output where it shows null that is uh, there are no values in the employee table and uh, you can further add values of your own choice let us now look at data manipulation language data manipulation language or DML is used to access and manipulate data tables commands that are used in DML are insert it is used to insert new values into the table select it is used to extract data from the tables update it is used to update values in the already existing table delete unlike the drop command delete command is used to delete a specific row or all the rows in the table let us first look at the SQL insert statement. The syntax followed uh, in SQL insert statement is insert into which is the keyword that we use space table name that we have uh, created values and inside the par parenthesis you have to mention the values. There is also another method uh, to insert the values where we specify uh, the column name as well as the values. Now if you execute this so but before executing we'll take an example uh, we are creating a table student and we are inserting uh, values such as roll number name age and city so uh, the roll number uh, is given as one uh, the name is given as Rohan the age is given as 22 and the city is given as Hyderabad for the first row similarly uh, we'll do the same for the next two rows as well and if you execute this query this will be the final output where you'll have four different uh, columns having uh, the first column as roll number the next one having name age city with the ro roll numbers as one uh, Rohan 22 Hyderabad and the second row consists of uh, the roll number two Anjana uh, age being 20 and the city Bangalore and the third one is roll number three 
the name is Kaushal, age 21, and the city is Mumbai. SQL select statement. Let us now look at the uh, syntax of SQL uh, select statement. The SQL is followed, the syntax is followed as select column 1, column 2, and a number of columns from the table name. And if you want to uh, display all the names from uh, the table, you have to use asterisk that is select star from table name. Let us look at the example. So I want to display the roll number name age from the student table. For that, I'll write select roll number comma name comma age from the table that is student. And if I execute this, it will only display roll number name age of the uh, students and it will not display the city of the students. And if you want to uh, display uh, even the city uh, to which they belong, we have to write select star from student. Then it will display even the city in the uh, table. SQL select condition statement. Consider employee table uh, with having ID, name, age, city, and salary. And uh, if you want to specifically, uh, you know, display uh, the employee's name uh, who live in uh, city New Delhi, you have to write select star from employee where city is equals to New Delhi. Here we are applying a condition that is where, which is a SQL clause, and um, we are using an operator as well, which is equal to. And if you execute this statement, it will uh, show this as output where you will find the ID of Alok Singh uh, Ravi Patel who belong to the city New Delhi. SQL update statement. It is used to update already uh, existing values in the statement. For example, if you consider the syntax, it is followed as update space table name that you have created set column name equals to new value that is the updated value that you want to uh, keep into the new table and you have to uh, keep a condition as well that is where condition let us look at an example now if you want to update the student table and if i want to insert uh, if i want to change the uh, city of the roll number three that is kaushal's uh, city uh, i'll write as update student set city equals to Chennai where roll number is equals to 3 and when you execute this it will show like this. So the city uh, which is Mumbai has been changed into Chennai. SQL delete statement. SQL delete statement uh, is, is used to uh, delete a specific row or even all the rows from the table. The syntax is delete from table name. For example, if you want to delete all the records from the uh, student table, we'll write it as delete from student semicolon. So this will be the output. It will only display the uh, column names and the data inside it will be completely erased. And if you want to delete only a certain uh, number of rows, we have to uh, use query as delete from student where roll number is equals to one and when you execute this query it will show like this it will completely erase the uh, records of uh, the roll number one student and the final one is data control language or dcl dcl is responsible for maintaining the security which gives control access and permissions of the database commands that come under dcl are grant it is used to grant the permission to user to access the database Revoke. It is used to cancel or take back the permissions that were earlier granted. Let us now look at SQL grant statement. Sometimes user is restricted from creating or making any changes uh, within the table. But with the help of grant statement, we can give privilege to the user to create or modify uh, the records in the table. Let us now look at the syntax of SQL grant statement. It is followed as grant space privilege list that is basically the set of commands that you are giving access or permission to the user to perform uh, certain operations on the table that you have created to user we have to mention the username example grant insert select on employee to rahul that means rahul is able to access uh, the employee table and can perform uh, commands such as insert and select SQL revoke statement. SQL revoke statement is basically uh, the opposite of grant statement. It is used to take back the permissions that were earlier granted. 
the similar the syntax is also similar uh, to the grant statement instead of grant keyword you have to replace it by revoke let us look at the example revoke insert on employee from rahul that means rahul is no longer able to insert new values into the employee table hello let us dive straight into today's topic on sql operators firstly let us discuss the agenda for today's session we'll start the tutorial by understanding what sql operators are then we'll go through different types of sql operators and finally we'll look at the syntax of various operators and execute them in mysql workbench what are sql operators sql operators are basically reserved words or special characters that are used to query a database sql provides us with many such operators to ease the process of data manipulation SQL operators are used to perform various tasks including complex mathematical operations like arithmetic and binary. To query a database using operators, we use a WHERE clause. Operators are necessary to define a condition in SQL as they act as a connector between two or more SQL statements. Based on the operator functionality, it manipulates the data accordingly and gives the result. Types of SQL operators SQL operators are mainly classified into three types. The first one is arithmetic operators. The arithmetic operators perform the mathematical operation on numerical data of SQL tables. They are further classified as addition operator. The addition operator is used to perform addition on numerical data. Using this, we can add values of single or multiple columns in the table. Subtraction operator. Subtraction operator in SQL performs the subtraction on the numerical data of the database table. Multiplication operator. Multiplication operator in SQL performs multiplication on the data items. In SQL, we can easily multiply the numerical values of two or more columns of the same table by specifying both the column names as the first and second operand. And finally, division operator. Division operator in SQL divides the operand on the left side by the operand on the right side. We can also divide the numerical values of one column by another column of the same table by specifying both column names as the first and second operand. Let us now look at the execution part of the arithmetic operations on MySQL Workbench. As you can see, Workbench has started. But before we proceed to the syntax of SQL operators, we have to first create a database and then we have to create a table within the database. So for time being, I've already created a table named employee. So let us just briefly go through the syntax of uh, create table. So the syntax is followed as create table space. Now you can declare the employee that is the table name in two ways. That is you can directly mention the table name that is employee or else you can mention database dot table name that is employee. And after that, in the parenthesis, you have to mention the column names followed by its appropriate data types. So as far as this table employee is concerned, I have taken uh, column names as ID, name, age, city, and salary. And also I've chosen primary key as ID as it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table. Close the parenthesis and put a semicolon. Now that you have created a table, uh, you have to insert values into the table. And for that, we use insert command. So the syntax for insert command is insert into space table name that is employee. And within the parenthesis, you have to mention all the column names that you have taken uh, in the single quotes. After that, close the parenthesis and uh, you have to write values, which is the keyword and mention different values as per your choice accordingly that you have taken uh, into the columns. So in this way, you can uh, insert n number of records into the table using insert command. Uh, for this employee table, I have taken out values total of uh, 10 values. Now that you have created and inserted values into your table and if you want to display all the records of the employees, you have to uh, write, you have to select the query as select star from the table name that is employee. And when you execute this, it will show the records of all the employees that you have taken. 
that is their id the name age city and salary so we have taken total 10 uh, values and it will be displayed now that we have understood all these let us uh, proceed with the sql operators first let us look at uh, addition operator uh, let us understand this with the help of an example. Uh, suppose you want to add 10,000 to the salary of each employee specified in the table. Then we have to write the uh, query as select salary plus 10,000 as I am taking a new column that is employee new salary to specify all these values into the uh, column as employee new salary from the table name that is employee now when you execute this it will show the result like this that is uh, it will add 10,000 to each and everyone's uh, values that is 30,000 has been changed into 40,000 28,000 has been changed into 38,000 and so on now, if I want to display their ID, name, their previous salary and the final salary simultaneously, I'll write the query as select ID, comma, space, name, space, salary, space, salary plus 10,000 as employee, new salary from employee. Now, if I execute this, it will display like this that is it will uh, <clears throat> mention the id name the previous salary and employee new salary simultaneously so in this way you can add two or more columns in the same table using addition operator let us now look at subtraction operator subtraction operator is also similar to that of addition operator the only difference is you have to replace uh, the plus sign with the minus sign so again for this example, uh, let us say uh, if you want to subtract 2000 from salary of each employee given in the employee table, then we have to write the query as select id, comma space name, comma space salary, comma space salary minus 2000 as employee new salary. from the table that is employee. So let us execute this and it will show the new values that is 2000 has been deducted from the salaries of each and every employee. As you can see 30,000 has been reduced to 28,000, 28,000 has been reduced to 26,000, 35,000 has been reduced to 33,000 and so on. So next let us look at the multiplication operator. Again, let us take the same example. Uh, if you want to multiply the salary of each and every employee, uh, then you have to write the query as select ID name salary salary into two. We are using hash uh, asterisk operator as the uh, multiplication sign here as employee new salary from the table name that is employee now if you execute this it will show the values like uh, in this way that is the salary has been doubled if you, as you can see the uh, employee rahul salary 30000 has been multiplied uh, and has changed into 60000 that is doubled 28,000 has been doubled to 56,000 and so on. So in this way, you can uh, apply multiplication operator. And finally, let us look at a uh, division operator. Uh, let us take the same example. Uh, suppose, let's say if you want to divide the salary of each and every employee, then you have to write the query as select ID name salary salary divided by 2 as employee new salary 
from the table name that is employee and put a semicolon let us now execute this and as you can see uh, the salary has been divided uh, into half uh, Rahul's salary 30,000 has been changed to 15,000 Kiran's salary 28,000 has been changed to 14,000 and so on so in this way you can use automatic operations to perform various uh, operations on your table that is addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. The second type of SQL operators are comparison operators. The comparison operators in SQL compares two different data of SQL tables and check whether they are same, greater and lesser. The SQL comparison operators are used with the conditional clause where in the SQL queries. They are again further divided into various types. The first one is equal to. SQL equal to operator is one of the popular and most frequently used operators in SQL queries. It shows only that data which matches the specified value in the query. Less than. The less than operator in SQL shows only those data from the database tables which are less than the value of the right, right hand side operand. Greater than. The greater than operator in SQL shows only those data which are greater than the value of right hand operand. We also have less than equals to and greater than equals to operators as well which basically shows the data in the tables which are less than and equals to as well as greater than and equals to the value of the right hand operands. Let us look at the syntax and execute them in the workbench. Firstly let us look at the equal to operator. Let's say uh, if you want to access the records of all those employees who are having salary uh, equals to 40,000. So for that, we'll write the query as select star from the table that is employee. We have to use the conditional statement where salary is equals to 40,000 and put a semicolon. When you execute this, it will show the records of all those employees who are having salary equals to 40,000. As you can see, it is showing three IDs, uh, uh, Pranay, Anusha and Prem who are having salaries as 40,000. Next, let us look at uh, not equals to. Not equals to is basically the opposite of equal to and uh, to understand this, let us take an example. Suppose if you want to access the records of all those employees whose salary is not equals to uh, 35,000. So for that, we'll write the query as select star from the table that is employee where uh, let us put the keyword in the uh, uppercase where salary not equals to 35,000. Let us execute this and uh, let us see the output. So as you can see, uh, it will display the records of all those employees uh, who are not having the salary uh, 35,000. So it will display the records such as uh, Rahul's, uh, Kiran, Pranay, Anusha, Varsha who are having salaries 30,000, 28,000, 40,000, 23,000 and so on which are basically not equals to 35,000. Next, let us look at uh, greater than operator. Uh, for this, let us take an example. For instance, if you want to access the records of all those employees uh, from the employee table uh, whose ID is greater than 104. So for that, we'll write the following query as select star from the table that is employee where ID greater than 104 put a semicolon and let us execute this. So as you can see, it will display the records of all those employees uh, who are having ID greater than 104. That is, it will display from 105 and up until 110. Similarly, uh, we have the less than operator as well, which is basically the opposite of greater than operator. For that, uh, we'll take an example uh, such as if you want to display the records of all those employees uh, who are having ID less than 105. So for that we'll write the query as select star 
from the table that is employee where id is less than 105 let us execute this so as you can see it will display all those records of the employees who are having less than 105 that is it will display the records of the employees 101 102 103 and 104 ids next let us look at uh, greater than equals to Greater than equals to is also similar to that of greater than but the thing is we are uh, also mentioning the equal to operator as well. So for instance uh, let's say if you want to uh, access the records of all those employees in the uh, employee table who are having salary greater than or equals to 40,000. So for that we will write the query as select star from the table employee where salary greater than equals to 40,000 let us execute this and this is will this will be the output it will show the uh, records of all those employees who are having salary greater than or equals to 40,000 so in this case it will display a total of four records of the employee table Similarly, uh, let us look at the uh, less than equals to operator as well, which basically uses less than and equal to operator. So suppose if you want to access the records of all those employees from the employee table who's having salary, uh, let's say less than or equals to 30,000. So for that, uh, we'll have to write the following query as select star from employee where salary less than or equals to 30,000. So let us execute this and the output will be like this. That is it will display all the uh, employer records who are having salary less than or equals to 30,000. A total of three records that is uh, ID, employee IDs 101, 102, 106 are being displayed because they are having salary as 30,000, 28,000, 23,000 which are basically less than or equals to 30,000. So in this way you can uh, use comparison operator to perform various operations on your data. And finally we have logical operators. The logical operators in SQL perform boolean operations which give two results either true or false. These operators provide true value if both operands match the logical condition and vice versa. Various logical operators in SQL are AND, OR, NOT and BETWEEN. Let us understand their syntaxes and execute them in the workbench now. Firstly, let us discuss about the AND operator. AND operator in SQL will show the records from a database table if all the conditions separated by the AND operator is evaluated to be true. Let us understand with an example. Let's say if you want to access the records of all those employees from the employee table whose salary is greater than 25,000 and the city that they belong to is Hyderabad. So for that we'll write the following query as select star from table name that is employee where salary is greater than 25,000 and the city that they belong to is Hyderabad. So when you execute this statement, the following output will, uh, will be this. That is, it will display the uh, total three records of the employees that is Rahul, Kiran and Chinmay who are having salaries more than 25,000 and the city that they belong to is Hyderabad. So in this way, AND operator in SQL is used to compare data with more than one condition. If and only if all the conditions return true, then only it will display the records. Otherwise, it won't. Next, let us look at the OR operator. 
Or operator in SQL shows the records from the table if any of the conditions separated by the OR operator evaluates to be true. Let us understand with an example. For instance, if we want to display the records of employees from the employee table who are uh, whose salary is greater than 30,000 or the city that they belong to is Bangalore. So the following query would be select star from the table that is employee where salary is less than 30,000 or the city that they belong to is Bangalore. Let us execute this statement now. So this will be the following output where you can see uh, a total of four records of the employees uh, followed by Kiran, Pranay, Varsha and Rohit who are having salaries less than 30,000 or else they belong to the city Bangalore. So in this way uh, we can use OR operator which basically compares the data with more than one condition and unlike AND operator if either of the condition is true it will return the data otherwise it won't. Next let us look at the between operator. Between operator in SQL shows the record within a specified range mentioned in the SQL query. If there is no value in this given range then this operator shows null value. Suppose if we want to access the information of all the employees from the employee table whose salary is in between 25,000 and 35,000 then we'll write the following query as select star from table name that is employee where salary between 25,000 and 35,000. Let us execute this query now. So following is the output where it will display the records of all those employees uh, who are having salaries in between 25,000 and 35,000. And finally, let us look at the NOT operator. NOT operator in SQL uh, shows the records from the table if the condition evaluates to be false. That means the NOT operator is also called as a negation or a negate operator which shows data for the opposite of the conditions that we mention in the SQL statement. Let us understand this with the help of an example. Let's say if you want to access the uh, information of all those employees from the table who are not having salary as 40,000. So for that, we'll write uh, the syntax as select star from table name that is employee where not salary equals to 40,000. So let us execute this query now. So as you can see, it will display all the records of those employees who are not having the salary as 40,000. We'll start this tutorial by understanding what SQL expressions are. Then we'll go through different types of SQL expressions. And finally, we'll look at the syntax of various SQL expressions and execute them in MySQL Workbench with examples. So what are SQL expressions? SQL expressions are composed of one or more keywords or values such as operators, operands and various other functions that evaluate to a single value or a set of values for a given SQL statement. These SQL expressions are like a formula which are similar to that of mathematical formulas we use to solve a problem. And in this case, they are written in a query language using a proper syntax to perform operations on the data we have stored in our database table. For example, consider the basic syntax of the select statement. Here, expressions are used in many contexts, such as to retrieve any value from the table, we use select command. And for comparison, we use where clause. So in this case, all these are SQL expressions only. Types of SQL expressions. SQL expressions can be classified into following categories. The first one is Boolean expression. SQL Boolean expressions fetch data based on one-to-one -one matching. In other words, we can think of it as a query that fetches one result at a time. It will fetch the condition against uh, the single value when the query is executed. The second one is numeric expression. 
SQL numeric expression is used for performing mathematical operations in SQL query. Besides arithmetic operations, there are several built-in functions like average, sum, count as well. Date expression. SQL date expressions are used to compare and get date according to its various date and time related query and conditions. They give date time value as the output. It can also return current system date and time values also. Now that we have understood what exactly SQL expressions are, let's execute them in MySQL Workbench with the help of examples. As you can see, SQL Workbench has started and before we get to the execution part of various SQL expressions, we have to first create a table. So for that, I've already created a table named student within the database simply code. The student uh, table consists of various columns such as role number, name of the student, age, the city they belong to, date of birth, the stream that they have chosen and the total marks that they have scored in the final exam. And here the primary key is role number which basically uniquely identifies each and every record of the students in the table. So now that we have created the table, if you want to retrieve the information of all the students, we'll use select command. So the following query would be select star from the table name that is student and semicolon. Let us execute this. And as you can see, all the records of the students are being displayed. That is the name, their age, the city they belong to, the stream, and also the total marks that they have scored in the final exam. Now that we have created table and inserted values into the table, let us understand various SQL expressions. Firstly, let us discuss about Boolean expression. For that, we'll take a simple example from the table itself. Suppose, let's say you want to display the uh, records of those students from the student table who belong to the city Kochi. For that, we'll write the SQL query as select star from the table name that is student where city equals to Kochi. Now let us execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, there's a student named Divya whose age is 21 who belongs to the city Kochi. Similarly, you can uh, find for other cities as well. So let us take for Pune and execute this query. So the output would be, uh, it will show the records of two students uh, named Aman and Indra who's having age 22 and, and 25 who belong to the city Pune and having our streams is triple and MBA and the total marks is 922 and 972. So the Boolean expression not only executes the values against the character values, which is in this case is Pune, but it can also take the values of numerical values as well. For example, let's say uh, the university has got to know the highest marks scored by an individual in the final exam is 988 and it wants to uh, retrieve the details of that student. So for that, the following query would be select star from table name that is student where total marks is equals to 988. Let us execute this query now. So as you can see, a student named Pratik who belongs to the stream CSE has scored the highest marks. Uh, 988. So in this way, Boolean expressions are used to perform various operations, which basically evaluates a given condition uh, to a particular value, or you can say a single value. And if the condition is true, it will return the output and display all those records. Otherwise it won't. Up next, we have numeric expression, numeric expressions. So numeric expressions are basically used to perform various mathematical operations. So let us understand this with an example. For instance, let's say the university has decided to change the total marks weightage from 1000 to 500. And I'll specify a condition where I'll take the total marks and divide them into half and check all those students who have scored more than 480 out of 500. For that, the following query would be select star from the table 
that is student where total marks divided by 2 is greater than 480 put a semicolon and let us execute this so as you can see there are total four students who have uh, scored more than 480 when that when the total marks are divided into half for instance if you take uh, the record of rohan who has scored total marks 977 and if you divided it by 2 that is approximately 488.5 which is satisfying the condition which that is greater than 480 and if you look at this sql statement carefully there are a lot of sql expressions here firstly the student table name that is the student itself because uh, it is used to uh, retrieve the values from the columns that is uh, here the total marks is the column and we also have the operands that is total marks divided by 2 and the right hand operand that is 480 which can also be considered as an SQL expression here. Similarly we have other inbuilt functions as we discussed earlier like sum, average, count, minimum and maximum. Let's say if you want to calculate the average of total marks of each and every student scored in the final exam, the following query would be select average, which is the SQL function, and within the parenthesis, mention total marks total marks from the table that is M student. Let us execute this. As you can see, it is displaying the total average of total marks that is 954.375. Similarly, you can calculate uh, the sum of all the marks of the students as well. So the query would be select sum total marks total marks from the student table let us execute this and this will be the following output so there is a bit error in the code let me check it once So as you can see, it is displaying the sum of total marks that is 7635. So in this way, you can use numeric expressions to perform various operations on the SQL tables. And finally, we have date expression, which basically returns date and time values of the table. Say, let's say if you want to uh, display the records of those students who are born after 1995 January. So for that, the following query would be select star from the table name that is student where date of birth is greater than 1995 January 1st. So let us execute this query and see the output. As you can see, there are total uh, five records of the students who are born after January 1995. Similarly, you can also display the uh, current date and time as well using the uh, current timestamp function. That is, select current timestamp. Current timestamp. And let us execute this query. So, as you can see, it will uh, display the current year, uh, the date and the month format. Similarly, it is also displaying the uh, uh, time which is in the format of hours, minutes and seconds. So in this way, you can use various expressions to query the database for a specific set of data to retrieve the information from the SQL. Firstly, let us discuss the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what SQL databases are and look at some popular SQL databases. After that, we'll discuss how to create an SQL database in MySQL Workbench. Next, we'll see how to select the database in MySQL. And finally, we'll discuss how to delete the already created database as well. What is SQL database? 
A database in general is a collection of organized data for easier access so that it can be managed and stored effectively. As far as SQL databases are concerned, a relational database is used to store and manage all the data in the form of tables. Simple SQL queries are written to retrieve the data from these SQL database tables. In a nutshell, you can say that SQL is used to connect with the databases as it directly interacts and communicates with the database to retrieve the information stored in tables. Popular SQL Databases Some popular SQL databases are MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle Database, PostgreSQL, and MongoDB. These are some databases that are being widely used nowadays by many companies. Each of them function in their own way and also the syntax of queries that are written can also slightly vary from each other as well. Let us now discuss the first topic of today's session, that is SQL Create Database. In SQL, creating a new database is the first and foremost step to store the data in the tables. So in order to create a database, users must use create database as a keyword in the syntax. So the syntax is followed as create database, that is the keyword that we are using here, followed by the name of the database name. In the syntax, database name specifies the name of the database which you want to create in the system. Also, make sure that the database you are creating has a unique name and it does not match with other databases as well. For example, if you look at the following example, I am creating a database named student. So the syntax would be create database followed by the database name that is student. So let us now run this syntax on MySQL Workbench and see how it is executed in real time. As you can see, MySQL has opened and if you look carefully at the interface of MySQL Workbench, on the left hand side you will find schemas or the various databases that are available in the system. At the center, you will find the SQL editor where the queries are written and at the bottom, you will find the console where you can see the status or the output of the query that has been executed. So firstly, let's go ahead and discuss the first topic that is how to create a database. Let's say if you want to create a new database uh, project, so the create database statement would be as followed. Create database, that is the keyword that is used to create a new database, followed by that we have to specify the database name, that is project. Put a semicolon and let us execute this. As you can see, our database project has been successfully executed and if you refresh the schema, you will find the uh, database name as project. So in this way you can create a new project and just for confirmation if you uh, want to check the databases created or not, you can check it in the list of uh, databases by using show databases keyword. So let us see and execute this. So as you can see, these are the various databases that are available in the system, including our uh, database project that we have created earlier. Let us now discuss our next topic that is how to select a database. Now that you have created a database, now the user wants to perform some operations like creating a new table and inserting values onto the existing database in SQL. For that, firstly, they have to select the database on which they want to run the database queries. Without selecting the database, they cannot create a new table. For instance, if I want to create a new table that is student and when I execute this query, it will throw an error stating that no database selected. Select the default database to be used. So in this way, you won't be able to create a new table without selecting the database. Any database user can easily select the particular database from the current database server using the use keyword in the SQL statement. So the following syntax would be use followed by the database name that you want to select. For example, let us take, uh, for instance, if I want to work on the database project, so the following query would be use project, which is the database name here. Let us execute this. So as you can see, the query has been successfully executed and uh, 
also you can find the database name project is highlighted in a bold that means you have successfully selected uh, the database and you can start creating your new tables so in this way uh, when you have multiple databases in your sql schema before starting your operations you have to select a database where all your operations would be performed also keep in mind that the database that you are selecting should be unique Finally, let us look at how to drop the database. In other words, dropping a database is to delete a database. The SQL drop database statement deletes the existing database permanently from the database system. That means the statement deletes all the data and the tables that are stored in the database. So let us now look at the syntax of the drop database. The syntax is followed as drop database followed by the database name that is project. Here in this SQL syntax, we have specified the name of the database which we want to delete permanently from the database system after the drop database keyword. And let us execute this and see the output. As you can see, the database has been dropped and even at the uh, left hand side, if you look at the schemas, uh, database project has been deleted successfully. So in this way, you can delete a database using drop database statement, but be careful before using this operation because by deleting an existing database, it would result in complete loss of information stored in the database. We'll understand how data is stored in the form of tables in SQL and also discuss some basic SQL queries related to these tables. Firstly, let us discuss the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what is SQL table. And then we'll look at how to create a table. After that, we'll see how to drop a table. Followed by that, we'll see how to insert a new value into the table. And then we'll look how to delete a table. After that, we'll see how to truncate a particular table. And then we'll discuss how to alter an existing table. After that, we'll see how to rename an existing table. Finally, we'll look at how to copy a new table. What is SQL table? Tables are the essential elements of a database and in particular for relational databases as it is one of the most used data models to store and retrieve data from tables. Tables are basically an organized collection of data that consists of rows and columns. Another point to be noted is that a table has a specified number of columns but can have any number of rows. Let us understand this with an example. Here the name of the table is taken as an employee. And in SQL, naming a table is very important because before performing any operation, you have to specify the name. Also, the name of the table should be unique and it should not match with other tables in the database. The horizontal values represented in the tables are called as rows or tuples. And each row represents a unique record. Similarly, the vertical values represent columns or the attributes of that particular table and each column represents a unique field in the record. As we can see in the table, employee ID, employee name, job, department number, salary are the various fields or the column names. The data in these multiple columns such as the employee name Rohan who is having employee ID 1011 who is working as a data analyst uh, belong to the uh, department 3 and having salary 50,000 is stored in the form of rows. I hope you've understood what is an SQL table now. So let us now discuss some basic SQL queries that are performed on these tables and execute them in MySQL workbench as well. SQL create table. SQL create table is foremost thing to do in SQL. If you want to create a table, you should name the table and define its columns and each columns data type. Let us now look at the syntax of create table. The syntax is followed as create table which is the keyword used here followed by that we have to mention the table name and within the parenthesis you have to mention the column names followed by that you have to mention the data type in this way you can add a number of columns as per your choice now that we have understood the syntax let us jump into mysql workbench and execute this if getting your learning started is half the battle what if you could do that for free visit skill up by simply learn click on the link in the description to know more as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and on the left side, you can see that SimpliCode is the database which we are working on and in that database, we are going to create a new table. 
So let us now look at the syntax of create a uh, table. So the syntax is followed as create table, which is the keyword we are using. Followed by that, we have to specify the table name that is we have taken employee in this case and within the brackets or the parenthesis, you have to mention the column names followed by that you have to mention the data types. Here I have taken column names as ID, name, city, job and salary. And finally, I have chosen the primary key as ID because it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table. In the end, you have to close the brackets and mention semicolon. Let us now execute this query and see the output. As you can see, our table is successfully created. So in order to display the values or whether or not our table is created or not, we have, we have the query as select star from the table name that is employee. Let us execute this and see the output. As you can see, the table is created and it is showing the column names as ID, name, city, job and salary. So in this way, you can create a new table. Next, let us discuss about drop table. Drop table, in other words, is basically is to delete a table. The SQL drop table statement is used to remove the table definition and the overall structure of the existing table. Be careful that while using this command because once a table is deleted, then all the information available in the data will also be lost forever. The syntax for the drop table is drop table and then you have to mention the table name. So let us now look at the example. Now, for some reasons, if I want to uh, delete the employee table, so the syntax would be drop table followed by that the name of the table that is employee. Let us execute this. As you can see, our table is completely dropped and let us now see if it is actually deleted or not. For that, we'll use select statement, select star from the table name that is employee. Let me execute this query. As you can see, it is throwing an error stating that table simply employee does not exist. This means you've successfully deleted the existing table employee. Let us now discuss the next topic that is SQL insert table. SQL insert statement is used to add new rows of data into a table. This can be a single or multiple records into the database. The syntax for the insert table is insert into which is the keyword followed by that table name and within the parenthesis you have to mention the column names values and again within the parenthesis you have to mention the values so here the column one column two column three and n number of columns are the names of the columns in which the table you want to insert the data into you may not need to specify the column names in the sql query if you are adding values for all the columns of the table but make sure the order of the values is in the same order as the column in the table. Let us jump into the execution part now. I'm taking the same name that is employee table to insert the new values. So the syntax for inserting new values into the table is followed as insert into table name that is employee and within the brackets, we have to mention the columns that we have taken earlier. That is ID, name, city, job, and salary. After that, we have to mention the values using the values keyword. So within the uh, brackets, I'm mentioning the ID name as 101, name as Rohan, the city that he belongs to is Hyderabad, and the job that he does is DA, that is data analyst, and the salary that he earns is 40,000. So let me execute this query and see the output. So as you can see, our uh, query has been successfully implemented. Now let us display the results by using select query again. Let me select this whole query and execute this. As you can see, the details of employee name that is Rohan, whose ID is 101 and his, the city he belongs to Hyderabad, his job data analyst, his salary 40,000 is being successfully displayed. So in this way, you can insert new values into the table. Up next, let us discuss about delete table in SQL. Delete table in SQL is used to remove rows from a table. This can be a complete row from an existing table or a specific row. If you want to remove a specific row from a table, you should use where condition. But if you do not specify the where condition here, it will remove all the rows from the table. The syntax for delete statement is delete 
from the table name so let us take an example now suppose if i want to delete the records of the employee who is having employee id as 102 in the table employee so the following query would be delete from table name that is employee specify the where condition keyword that is where id is equals to 102 let us execute this statement now as you can see our statement has been successfully executed now i'll display the records by using select statement as you can see the employee id who is having uh, 102 has his employee id has been successfully deleted from the table so in this way you can use delete statement to delete a particular record from the table let us now discuss about truncate table in sql truncate table statement is used to remove all the rows from the table that means it deletes the complete data from an existing table it is similar to that of delete statement but here we do not use the where clause truncate table is faster and uses lesser resources than the delete table command as it deletes the records at a single time drop table command can also be used to delete the complete data but it also deletes the structure of the table as well truncate table does not delete the structure of the data so the syntax for truncate table is truncate table and after that you have to mention the table name so if i want to delete all the records uh, from the employee table the following query would be truncate table followed by that you have to mention the table name that is employee let us execute this and see the output so the query has been successfully uh, executed. So let me use the select statement to display the records. As you can see, uh, all the information of the employee has been successfully deleted from the table. But if you look at uh, the output closely, the structure hasn't been deleted here. The column names of the table that is ID, name, city, job and salary have been retained, but only the values in the table have been deleted. So in this way you can use truncate statement to delete all the records from the table at a single time. Make sure that uh, you use this statement carefully because the rollback process is not possible after using truncate table statement. That means if the data is once deleted, it is completely de deleted uh, permanently. Next, let us discuss about SQL alter table. The alter table in SQL is used to add, modify and delete columns of an existing table. In many situations, you may require to add columns in the existing table. So instead of creating a whole table again and again, you can easily add single or multiple columns using alter table statement with the help of a keyword add. Let us now look at the syntax of alter table. The syntax is followed as alter table, table name, add and within the parenthesis, you have to mention the new column and the data type. So let us now jump into the execution part. Consider the same table employee again. Suppose if you want to add a new column that is date of birth of the employee in the above table. For this, you have to type the following query as alter table. Mention the table name that is employee. After that, mention the keyword add. And within the brackets, mention the new column name that is date of birth and the data type of the data birth is date so i'll be mentioning the date data type close the brackets and put the semicolon let us execute this statement now as you can see our statement has been successfully implemented and i'll use the select statement to display the new records as you can see there's a new column named date of birth has been successfully added to our existing table employee in this way, you can use alter table to add or delete the columns from the table. Let us now discuss about SQL rename table. SQL rename table is used in SQL to change the name of the table. So in some situations, the database user might want to change the name of the table so that they want to give a more relevant name or the updated name to the table. Any database user can easily change the name of the table by using a rename table and alter table statement in SQL. Let us look at the syntax now. 
the syntax is followed as alter table current table name rename to new table name let us now execute this in mysql workbench consider the same table employee again and suppose if you want to change the name of the above table employee into let's say employee new for this you have to type the following query that is alter table old table name that is employee rename to is the keyword that you have to use here and mention the new table name we are taking employee new as our new table name so let us execute this and see the output as you can see our statement has been successfully executed so let let us update the schema here and see whether or not the name of the table is changed so as you can see our uh, table employee which we had previously has been changed into employee new in this way you can use rename statement to give a new name to your existing table finally let us now look at sql copy table statement if you want to copy the data of one sql table into another sql table in the same sql database then it is possible by using the select into statement in sql the select into statement in sql copies the content from an existing table into a new table sql creates the new table by using the structure of the existing table the syntax is followed as select star into new table name from the old table name let us now execute this in mysql workbench and see the output consider the same employee table again and suppose you want to copy the content of the employee table into a new table let's say employee details now as far as mysql workbench is concerned there is a slight change in the query now the syntax that we've discussed earlier is applicable to some other sql databases like microsoft sql server and oracle database but for mysql workbench there is a different syntax to copy a new table so the syntax is followed as create table mention the new table name that is employee details now select star from the old table name that is employee let us now execute this and see the output now it will throw an error stating that the employee table doesn't exist that's because we have renamed our previous employee name table into employee new so instead of employee change it to employee new and let us execute this statement now so to in order to display if the uh, employee table is created successfully or not in the database let us use select statement to display the records select star from the table name which is the new table name that is employee details let us execute this now as you can see uh, the details that we had earlier in our employee new table has been copied into another table that is employee details in this way you can copy the content from one table uh, existing table from another new table by using copy statement in sql and with that we have come to end of today's session these were some of the queries that were related to sql tables if you want to learn more about sql make sure to check out our previous playlist in our channel also we have a dedicated video sql full course 2022 for beginners wherein we have discussed sql and various concepts from the scratch firstly let us discuss the agenda for today's session we'll start the tutorial by understanding what is sql select statement and then we'll discuss the syntax of sql select statement and finally we'll go through some different functions in sql select statement what is sql select statement sql select statement is used to fetch the data from a database table which returns the data in a form of a resultant table in simple words we can say that it is used to access the information from one or more database tables within the database let us look at the syntax of sql select statement the syntax is followed as select column from table name 
In the select syntax, you can see column name 1, column name 2 and n number of columns are the name of those columns in the table whose data you wanted to read. And if you want to access all the rows from all the fields of the table, you can use the select star operator in the database by using select star from table name command. Let us look at an example. If you want to retrieve the information of the student who is having roll number, name and age, we can write a simple query as select roll number, name, age from student. In this way, we can display the details of the student. SQL select condition. Select statement is used with various clauses as well. That means it also retrieves the selected data that follows a particular condition with the help of a where clause. By using this command, we can access a particular record from a particular column of the table. Let's understand this with an example. Consider the employee table here, which is having ID, name, age, city and salary as its column in the table. Let's say if you want to access the information of those employees who is having age as 29. For that, we'll write a simple query as select star from employee where age is equals to 29. And if you execute this, this will be the following output, which shows the information of those employees whose age is 29. So in this way, you can use SQL select condition by specifying a where statement, which is used to filter the data in a particular table. Now that we have understood the basics of SQL select statement, let us now jump into MySQL workbench and execute this and understand it in a more better way. As you can see, MySQL workbench has started and for time being, I've already created a table employee, which is having column names as employee ID, employee name, age, designation, date of birth, city that they belong to and salary. And I've chosen primary key as employee ID because it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table. Now that uh, we've created a table in order to display all these records, we have to use this uh, select statement ultimately. So to display all the values from each column of the table, that is the employee table, we have to write the following query as select star from table name that is employee. Let us execute this and see the output. As you can see, it will display all the values of the employees, their employee ID, employee name, age, designation, date of birth, the city and their respective salaries. So if you want to display a particular column, so for that you have to write the query as, let's say if I want to select employee ID, employee name and the city uh, of the uh, employees, so for that, I'll write select employee ID, comma, employee name, comma. Let's say uh, I want to display the salary. So I'm taking a salary from table name. That is employee. Let us execute this now. So as you can see, only the employee ID, employee name and the salary of the employees in the table are being shown here because we have only specified a particular column in this case. Now, similarly, we can use a where clause also. The where clause is used with select statement to return only those rows from the table which satisfy the specified condition in the query. For example, uh, if I want to uh, show the salary of the employee who is having uh, more than 30,000. So for that, I'll write the query as select star from employee where salary is greater than 30,000. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, it will display the records of all those employees who is having salary more than 30,000. Similarly, you can see, uh, you can also check whether the city that they belong to is Mumbai. So for that, we have to take the SQL query as select star from employee where city is equals to, suppose I want to display the uh, employee who belongs to the city Mumbai. So for that, I'll take the city as Mumbai and execute this statement. Okay, uh, you have to uh, mention Mumbai in uh, single quotes. So that's the reason it is showing error here. So let us now execute this and see the output. So as you can see, there are only two employees who belong to the city 
uh, that is the employee Kavya and Pavan who is uh, having the employee ID 103 and 109. So in this way you can use select statement uh, to display a particular uh, record by using where clause. Now that we've got an idea on how SQL select statement works, let us now discuss some L uh, select statement functions. The first one is select distinct. The uh, select distinct in SQL is used to fetch identical or distinct column values from existing table without any duplicate values. Now suppose in a particular table, there might be a higher chance that there exists a duplicate value and if you want to retrieve only unique values in such scenario, you use a SQL select distinct statement. I know it might be a bit confusing, so let me make it clear to you guys. Uh, consider the same employee table again here. And uh, if you look at the table, the values in the column city, the Hyderabad has been repeated more than once here. And not just Hyderabad, Chennai has also been repeated twice. So in this case, in a broader sense, if I just wanted to know from which city the employee is from, I'll just use the distinct select statement. So using this, uh, instead of multiple uh, values that are being displayed, the SQL distinct statement makes sure that the value is retrieved only once and there is no room for any repeated or distinct value. So let us now understand this syntax with an example. The syntax is followed as select distinct now let's say if I want to fetch a distinct designation of all the employees of the company so for that I'm specifying the column name here as designation from the table that is employee let us now execute this uh, there is a bit error in the code let me just check it So let us execute the query now and see the output. So as you can see, this is the uh, output that is being displayed where the unique values uh, of the designation of all the employees are being displayed. That is business analyst, manager, HR, SD and so on. So in this way, by using SQL select distinct statement, we can fetch distinct values from the existing table. Let us now discuss about select count statement in SQL. The select count is used to get the total number of rows from a table. Basically, it returns the total number of records present in the database table. Let's take a simple example. Consider the same employee table. Now, if you have a record in the table and if you want to count the total number of uh, records in the table, for that, the following query would be select count star from the table name that is employee. Let us execute this and see the output now. So as you can see, there are total 15 records present in the employee table. Similarly, you can use the where condition as well. If you want to get the uh, total number of rows uh, of the employees who are having salary equals to 50,000 in the employee table. So for that, the following query would be select count asterisk from employee specify the condition here now where salary is equals to 50,000 let us execute this statement now so as you can see there are total three employees who are having salary equals to 50,000 Similarly, you can get the total number of rows in a table by using the distinct statement as well. Let's say if you want to retrieve a unique count of the city of the employees from the table, the following query would be select count, which is the keyword that we are using. And inside the bracket, mention distinct keyword followed by the column name that is city from the table that is employee. Now let us execute this statement and see the output.
So as you can see, there are total uh, eight employees who are belong to different cities. So in this way, you can use a uh, select count statement to retrieve various number of records in the particular table. Next, let us discuss about select top or limit statement in SQL. The select top statement in SQL shows the limited number of records or rows from the database table. The top clause in the statement specifies how many rows we want to display from our table. This clause is used when there are thousands of records stored in the database table. Now all database systems do not support top keyword. Now as far as MySQL is concerned, it supports the limit keyword. So let us now look at the uh, syntax of select limit statement. The syntax is followed as select star from employee table limit is the keyword that we have to use and I want to display the first three records of the employees so I am specifying three here. So let us execute the statement. So as you can see the first three records of the employees uh, who are having ID employee ID as 101, 102, 103 are being displayed. Let us consider another scenario here. If you want to fix the first three employees who got highest salaries from the employee table, then the following query would be select star from the table name that is employee order by is the condition that I am using to display the uh, employee details salary DESC that means descending now I want to display the records in the uh, descending order and I am limiting the value up to 2 limit 3 so let us execute the statement now so as you can see it will display uh, a total of three records who are having the salary uh, who got the highest salary in the descending order that is Kamal who got the salary as 60,000 Sindhu having 50,000 and Kiran who is having 50,000. So in this way you can use limit statement to display the specified rows that is the top rows in the table. Next let us discuss about select random statement in SQL. As the name suggests, SQL select random statement is used to return a random row from a table present in the database. It has many real life applications. For example, if a HR manager wants to send uh, 10 random mails to his employees, then he can use random function in SQL to send the email. It is also used uh, to display random questions during an online exams for students. So the syntax for select random is followed as select column name. Now I want to display uh, the records of all the employees. So I'm choosing star operator from the table that is employee. Order by is the conditional clause we have to use. Followed by that we have to mention rand which is the function. Let us execute the statement. So as you can see the uh, details of the employees are being displayed in a mixed manner uh, that is they are displayed in a random way as you can see the employee details of employee who is having ID 114 is being displayed here first and then 112 and then 103. So in this way you can uh, display the values randomly using random function in SQL. Similarly you can uh, limit the values as well if you want to uh, show the top three uh, random values of the employees you can use limit statement here so limit and if i want to display the first four uh, records of the employees so i am choosing four let us ex execute the statement now so it will show the details of the employees randomly up to uh, four that is the top four details of the employees so in this way you can use a random statement to display uh, random values within a database table. Next let us discuss about select in statement in SQL. The select in function is used to fetch specific rows or values from an existing table with multiple conditions. The conditions are specified with in clause. 
the operation of select in is same as or operation select in is used to reduce the multiple or operators in select statement let us understand this with an example so if i want to fetch the uh, details of employees who are having employee id as let's say 102 or 104 or 107 from the employee table then the following query would be select star from the table that is employee where employee id now we have to mention the in keyword here and within the brackets mention the ids so i am taking 102 104 and 107 so let us execute this statement and see the output so as you can see, it is displaying the values of the employees who are having ID either 102 or 104 or 107. Next, let us discuss about select date statement in SQL. SQL select date is used to retrieve the values of date from a database. If you want to find a particular date from a database, you can use this statement. So let us understand with an example. Let's say if you want to uh, display the records of all those employees who are born before 1995 Jan 1st. So the following query would be select star from the table that is employee where date of birth is less than 1995. Jan 1st. Make sure you incorporate the uh, date in the single quotes, otherwise it will throw an error. So let me execute this statement. So as you can see, it is displaying the records of all those employees who are born before 1995 Jan 1st. Similarly, you can use a uh, greater than operator as well to show the employees who are born after 1995. Similarly, uh, if you want to uh, fetch the employees who have born between a particular date let's say who are born between 1996 and 1998 then the following query would be select star from employee where date of birth between is the keyword we have to use between let's say uh, i'm using 1996 jan 1st and 1998 1998 Jan 1st. So let me execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, it is displaying the records of all those employees who are born in between uh, the particular date that we have given, that is in between 1996 and 1998. So in this way, you can use the uh, select date statement to retrieve the date values in the database. Next, let us discuss about select some statement in SQL. Select sum is used to return the sum of all the values in a specified column. Now, you have to make a note here that sum, sum function is applied only on numeric or uh, numeric related fields. Let us consider the same employee table again and if you want to get the sum of all the employee salaries in the employee table, then the following query would be select sum is the keyword and within the brackets mention the salary column from the table that is employee. Let us execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, it is showing the sum of uh, the salaries of all the employees here. That is 6,5,000 is the total uh, value of the uh, combined salary of all the employees. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you can use the where condition here as well uh, to get the sum of the uh, salaries of employee by specifying a condition. Let's say if I want to uh, get the total salary of all those employees who belong to the city uh, Mumbai. So for that, I am uh, writing the query as select some salary from employee where is the conditional clause city equals to Mumbai. Make sure Mumbai is in single quotes, otherwise it will throw an error. So let us execute this statement now and see the output. So as you can see, it is displaying the uh, sum of all the salaries of those employees belonging to Mumbai as 80,000. So in this way, you can use the uh, sum 
select some statement in SQL to display the sum of values in a particular column. And finally, let us now look at the select null statement in SQL. Null in a table represents that the field has no value. These null values are used to represent the missing data in a particular table. Now a null value is different from a zero value. That means a field with a null value is the one that has been left blank during the record creation. Now to verify the column value is null or not, we can use the keyword is null or is not null. Now we should make a note here that null value can't compare with operators like equals to greater than or less than. So let us take an example to understand the syntax. Now if you want to fetch the uh, details of the uh, students uh, whose marks are null, that means the marks that they have scored in the final exam are yet to be assigned to the students. So for that, the following query would be uh, select select star from the table that is student where is the condition marks is null, which is the keyword we are using. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, there are two students whose marks are yet to be updated and it also means that their marks are not equals to zero. It's simply that their marks have been left out and kept as null. Start the tutorial by understanding what SQL clause is. Next, we'll go through different types of SQL clauses. And finally, we'll discuss about SQL where clause and execute MySQL workbench. What is SQL clause? SQL clause are basically inbuilt SQL functions that use a certain conditional expression which helps to access a particular set of records from the database table. Clauses help us to restrict and manage the data using valid constraints on the data in our database. Now since we have large amounts of data stored in the database, we use clauses to query the table to get the desired data only. So the complexity is reduced when condition is applied to an SQL statement. SQL clauses use filters and analyzes the data quickly because it is used to extract only those records that fulfill the specified condition. Types of SQL clauses. SQL clauses are divided into three types. The first one is the basic clause which uses a condition. The second one is order by which is used to sort the data in tables in either ascending or descending order. And the last one is group by which is used for organizing similar data into groups. SQL where clause. SQL where clause is the most used and integral part of any query to specify a condition in the SQL statement which retrieves only those records which satisfy the given condition. The where clause is not only used in the select statement but it is also used in the update, delete statement, etc. using logical and comparison operators like greater than, less than and equal to operators. Let us now look at the syntax of where clause. The syntax is followed as select column 1, column 2 and up to n number of columns from table name where condition. Here column 1, column 2 represents the columns which we want to fetch the data from the table and the condition here represents uh, the required condition to fetch rows based on the requirement. It contains column name, operator, user defined value. Comparison and logical operators are also used in this condition. So in this way we can use where clause. Let us now execute some statement which uses where clause in MySQL Workbench. As you can see the MySQL Workbench has started and before we write queries using a where clause, we have to first create a table. So I have created a table here employee which has columns employee ID, employee name, age, destination, date of birth, the city they belong to and their salary. And I have taken primary key here as employee ID because it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table. Now that we've created the table, let us now look at uh, the simple and basic query using the where clause. Now let's say if I want to uh, display the details of all those employees who belong to the city Mumbai. So for that, the following query would be select star from the table that is employee. Now we have to mention the condition that is the where clause where city is equals to Mumbai. Mention Mumbai in single quotes, otherwise it will show an error. So 
let us now execute this statement and see the output now when we execute the statement it will show me the output of two employees who belong to this city so let us now take another example now we'll use the greater than operator using the where clause now let's say if i want to uh, display the details of all those employees whose salary is greater than 30000 so for that the following query would be select star from table that is employee where salary is greater than 30000 so let us execute the statement now when we execute the statement it will show me the records of all those employees who are having salary more than 30000 now i think here we have around uh, 15 since we have 15 uh, records in the table we have a total of 8 employees whose salary is more than 30000 so in this way you can use a uh, greater than operator similarly you can use the less than operator as well and let us see the output whose salary is less than 35000 we'll take 35000 here and now see the output so there are uh, total three employees who are having the salary less than 35000 that is uh, aryan preeti akil who are having salary as 30000 so in this way you can use less than operator as well now let us make another scenario now if i want to mention a range of salaries of how much they earn Let's say if I want to display the records of all those employees who are earning salary in between 35,000 and 50,000. So for that, the following query would be select star from the table that is employee where salary between is the keyword we have to use here. Thirty-five thousand and fifty thousand. Let us now execute this statement and see the output. So now these are all the uh, records of the employees who are having salary in between thirty-five thousand and fifteen thousand. So in this way, you can use uh, various comparison operators to perform uh, queries using where clause. Similarly, uh, you can also update the values in the table as well using the update command. Let's say if I want to update the salary of employee whose employee ID is uh, 104. So for that, the following query would be update table name that is employee set is the keyword we have to use here. Salary. Now I want to change the salary as uh, 25,000. So I'm choosing 25,000. Specify the condition where employee ID is equals to uh, 106. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, our query successfully implemented and the employee who ID 106 who is having salary, like before some, he used to have some salary, now his salary is changed into 25,000. So let us see whether it is changed or not. We'll uh, use the select command again to display the uh, details of all the employees. So for that, the query would be select star from the table that is employee. Let us now execute this statement. So 106 uh, employee name is Varsha who is working as a software developer and uh, salary has been changed to 25,000. So in this way, you can use where clause to perform various operations using certain conditions. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Now that we have understood how to write a query using the WHERE condition, let us now look at some other conditional statements which uses WHERE clause. First, let us discuss about SQL AND condition. SQL AND condition is used to specify multiple condition in WHERE clause. AND condition basically returns the rows or those values that satisfies both the conditions that are written after the WHERE clause. In simple terms, we can say that uh, it will only return those values when both the conditions are met. Let us now understand this with an example. Let's say if I want to access the records of all those employees whose designation is business analyst and their salary is 35,000. For that, the following query would be select star from the table that is employee where I'm specifying the condition here designation 
is equals to business analyst and is the keyword that we have to specify here salary is equals to 35000 and let us execute the statement now so as you can see it is displaying the uh, records of two employees whose designation is business analyst and their salary is 35000 but if you look at the uh, employee table carefully let me just display the values uh, there is the uh, employee ID 101 who belongs to the de designation business analyst and uh, similarly we have another employee whose employee ID is 109 and whose employee ID is 111. Here we have three records but instead it is displaying only three or uh, two records that's because there's an employee ID uh, 109 who's having who belongs to the designation business analyst but is having 40,000. So in this case, he is not meeting the other condition. That is why it is being displayed only two values. So in this way, you can use and statement to filter the records from the table. Let us now look at the next statement that is or. SQL or condition is used to specify again the same multiple conditions in where clause, which is used to fetch the uh, rows or values which satisfy any of the conditions. Now, unlike uh, and statement, if any of the condition that is provided is true, then it will return all those values. So let me just uh, execute this with an uh, example. Let's say if I want to access the records of all those employees whose designation is manager and the city that they belong to is Chennai. So for that, I'll write the query as select star from the table that is employee where designation is equals to manager or the city that they belong to is Chennai. So let me just execute this statement and see the output. So when you execute this statement, it will uh, show a total of three records of all those employees whose designation is either manager or the city that they belong to is Chennai. Now we have uh, the records of employee who belongs to city, Bangalore, Indore as well. But it is showing here because the designation is manager. That is here it is satisfying either one of the condition. That is either the designation that is manager or the city that they belong to is Chennai. So in this way you can use or statement to filter the records. Next let us discuss about the limit condition in SQL. The limit condition is used to fetch those records that have only limited number of, of values. Let's say if I want to access the records of first five employees from the table, then I'll write the following query as select star from the table that is employee. Now we have to mention the keyword limit. Now I want to access the records of first five employees. So I'm specifying five as the condition here. So let me execute this statement. So it will display the first five records of the employees from the employee table. Now this limit condition is used like when you have thousands of uh, records in a table and if you want to access the first hundred records of the employees, then you can use the limit condition here with the example. Next, let us discuss about SQL as condition statement. Now SQL as condition is used to rename a column temporarily in a given table. Now in simple words, we can say that SQL as keyword is used to give an alias name to the table or column name in the query. And in this way, we can increase the readability and uh, understandability of the query and call and also the column headings in the table. So let us understand with an example. Let's say if I want to change the column name of salary to the total salary, then I would write the following query as select salary as within the single quotes mention the new column name that is total salary from the table that is employee. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see salary has been changed into a total salary. In this way you can use the and condition statement to change the column of the table temporarily.
and finally let us discuss the like statement in sql the like condition statement is used to fetch matching rows or values from the table that satisfies the wildcard operator now the wildcard operator in sql uh, basically have two types the first one is percentage sign the percentage sign represents a single or multiple character and the second one is underscore underscore represents a single number or character now you might be a bit confused here so let me just explain with an example let's say if you want to access the records of all those employees whose name starts with k so for that i'll write the query as select star from the table that is employee now specify the condition where employee name like is the keyword we have to use here and within the single quotes now we are uh, displaying the records of employees whose name starts with k right so i am taking k and mention the percentage symbol so let us execute this statement and uh, see the output so it will display the uh, details of all those employees whose name starts with k so there are total uh, three employees in the table whose name starts with k here similarly if you uh, want to display the records of those employees whose name ends with a so for that we have to mention percentage a so let me just execute this statement and see the output so it will display the values of all those employees whose uh, name is ending with the letter a so there are total uh, five employees in the table whose name is ending with a so in this way you can use the like operator which also uses the where clause I'll start the tutorial by understanding what is SQL order by and then we'll discuss the syntax of SQL order by and finally we'll look at some order by statements and execute them in MySQL workbench. So what is order by clause? The SQL order by clause allows you to sort the results of a query based on a specific column or group of columns. That means it helps you to reorder the data that is present in the tables in one or more columns. Now this sorting can be either ascending or descending order. Let us now understand the syntax of SQL order by clause. The syntax is followed as SQL select column 1, column 2 up to n number of columns from table name where condition order by column AAC or DAC. So let me just explain the syntax. The column specified after the order by keyword specifies the name of the columns that are used to sort data. And after that, we use two keywords that is ASC to represent the data in ascending manner or DESC to represent the data in descending order. Now, the reason for using the order by clause is that the order that the data shows in a uh, database table is completely random. And sometimes this might not be the order in which we would like to see uh, when we run our queries in the database. So for that purpose, we use order by clause. Now that we've understood what the SQL order by clause is, let us jump into the execution part. As you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and on the left side, you can view the database simply code, which has two tables that is employee and student. We are going to work on the employee table now. So first let me display the uh, records of all the employee details present in the employee table. For that I am going to use this select statement. Select star from the table name that is employee. Let me just execute this statement. So it will show me the uh, results of details of all the employees with their employee ID, employee name, age, destination, date of birth, city they belong to and the salary they have. So let us just understand the basic query of order by clause now. So the syntax is followed as select star from the table that is employee order by salary. Now this is a basic statement related to order by and let us execute this. So it will display the output and uh, in a particular order of the salary and if you look at carefully it is displaying in the uh, ascending order now if no keyword is specified after the column based on which we have sorted the records in our table the sorting will be done by default in ascending order so with that uh, that brings us to the to our first order by statement that is order by ascending statement 
Now the order by ascending statement is used to sort the data in ascending order. So let us consider another example here. Now if I want to fetch the details of all the employees uh, and their employee names in ascending order, for that the following query would be select star from the table that is employee order by employee name and mention the keyword ASC. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So it will display the results, uh, the employee names in the ascending order that is in alphabetical order starting from Akash, Akhil, Bhavya, Ganesh and up until V. So in this way you can use the order by uh, ascending statement to display all your records in ascending manner. Similarly, you can specify the where condition here as well. Let's say if I want to fetch the uh, details of all the employees from the employee table in ascending order of their uh, employee name whose age is greater than 26. So for that, the following query would be select star from employee where age greater than 26 order by employee name as an ASC. So let me execute this statement. So it will display the records of all those employees whose age is more than 26 and it will dis, uh, it will uh, sort the data of employee names in ascending order. So in this way, you can use the order by ascending. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit Skill Up by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Now let us discuss about order by descending statement. The order by descending statement is used to sort the data in the descending order. Let us understand this with an example. Let's say if I want to display the details of all the employees from the uh, employee table in descending order of their salaries. For that, the following query would be select star from the table that is employee order by salary and mention the keyword DESC. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So this will be the following output wherein it will show the salaries of all the employees in the descending order that is from highest to lowest. Uh, in this case, the first employee who is having the highest salary is 65,000 and up until the lowest salary 25,000. Also similarly, you can specify the where condition here also. So if you want to display the uh, details of employees whose employee ID is greater than let's say 106 and want to sort their salaries in descending order. For that, I'll use the query as select star from employee, mention the keyword where employee ID greater than 106. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So it will display the records of all those employees uh, who's having employee ID more than 106 and it will sort the data of their salaries in descending order that is from highest to lowest again. So in this way you can use the order by descending statement to display all your records present in the table in an ascending manner. Let us now discuss the next order by statement that is SQL order by random and as well as limit statements. The order by random statement is used to display the records uh, present in the table randomly and the syntax for the order by random is select star from the table that is employee order by mention the keyword random is the function we are using here so we have to mention R A N D. And let us execute the statement now. So it will display the records uh, present in the table in, an, in a random order. Similarly, we also have a limit statement which is used to uh, display only a specific number of columns in the uh, database table. So let us now look at the syntax of order by limit. Now let's say if I want to fetch, fetch the first uh, six employee details from the table in descending order of their uh, salaries. So the following query would be select star from employee order by salary. I want to display the salaries in descending order. So I'm 
specifying the DESC keyword and uh, I'm limit I'm using the limit function here so let us display the uh, output of this query so it will show me the random uh, six details of the employees in uh, order of their uh, salaries from highest to lowest that is in a descending order so in this way you can also use order by random and limit statement in your SQL queries and finally let us now discuss about the order by multiple statement in SQL till now we have discussed only how to uh, fetch the records from only a single table and sort them out but you can fetch the rows by sorting multiple rows in either ascending or descending order using order by multiple statement so let us understand this one example let's say if you want to fetch the details of all the employees from the table in ascending order of their designation as well as descending order of their salary then the following query would be select star from employee order by uh, so we're taking the designation as ascending order so designation mention the keyword ASC comma and their salary in descending ma manner so let us display the uh, statement so as you can see it will display uh, the designation in uh, ascending order that is business analyst and then customer K data analyst HR and so on and their respective salaries in descending form so in this way you can uh, fetch the uh, data from multiple rows using the uh, multiple statement in SQL Firstly, we'll start the tutorial by understanding what is SQL insert and then we'll understand the syntax of SQL insert statement and finally we'll go through some of the SQL insert statements and execute them in MySQL workbench so what is SQL insert statement SQL insert statement is widely used command in SQL which is a part of data manipulation language DML used by various relational databases. The insert command is used for inserting one or more rows into a database table with specified table column values. Let us now understand the syntax for insert statement. Now we have two types of syntaxes. The first method is insert into table name values and within the brackets, you have to mention the values. In this first method, there is no need to specify the column names where the data will be inserted. You need to only insert their values. The second method specifies both the column name and the values which you want to insert. And the syntax is insert into, which is the keyword we are using. After that, we have to mention the table name and within the brackets, we have to mention the columns and then values values 1, values 2, values 3 and so on up to our requirement. So this was the syntax. Uh, let us take an example. Now let's say I've created a table students and I want to insert values into it. So the syntax for inserting the values is insert into table name. I'm taking here it as students and I'm mentioning the columns roll number, name, age, city and I'm inserting the values as roll number as 1, name as Rohan, age as 22 and city as Hyderabad. So in this way you can insert values up to n number of rows into your uh, table. So now that we've understood and got an idea of what SQL insert statement is, let us jump into MySQL workbench and do the execution part. Choose from over 300 in-demand skills and get access to 1000 plus hours of video content for free. Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. As you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and uh, in order to insert the values into the table, we have to first create a table. So let us first create a table and the syntax is followed as create table, which is the keyword that we use. And I'm creating a new table that is customer and which has column names as customer ID, customer name, their age, address, the product they have purchased and the purchase date of the product. And I'm taking primary key here as customer ID because it uniquely identifies each and every record. So let me just use the select statement to uh, display whether uh, the table is created or not. Select star 
from the table that is customer. So as you can see, our table is successfully created with the uh, column names that we have specified. Now that we have created a table, let us see how to insert the values into it. For that, first let us discuss the insert into value statement. The insert into value statement is used to insert either all the column values or a specified number of column values in the table. Inserting only specified column data in the row requires the column name should be specified in the insert statement. So let's say if I want to insert all the uh, columns uh, into the customer table, the following query would be insert into table name, which is the customer. Now within the uh, brackets, we have to mention the column names. So the columns that we have taken are customer ID, customer name, their age, address, product that they've purchased and the purchase date. Close the brackets. Now mention the values keyword and again within the brackets, specify the uh, values for each of the uh, columns. So I'm taking a uh, customer ID as uh, let's say 1011 comma customer name, uh, let's say Rahul. Now make sure you uh, mention the character values inside the single quotes. And for integer values, you need not mention the uh, single quotes. Next, their age, let's say 25, comma, address, uh, let's say uh, the city they belong to is the address. So I'm taking it uh, as Hyderabad, comma. Next, the product that they have purchased, let's say they have, uh, let's say Rahul has purchased the phone as the product. And finally, purchase date, uh, let's say 2022 uh, March and let's take date as uh, 25. So close the brackets and uh, put the semicolon. So let us execute this statement and see. So as you can see, our uh, query has been successfully executed. Now to display the values, I'll use the uh, set command again. So let us execute the statement. So as you can see, the values have been uh, successfully inserted into our table uh, with respect to their columns as customer ID, customer name, age, address, product, and the purchase date. So here we've inserted a row with all the column values using the insert statement. Similarly, you can insert a row with only specified column values as well. Uh, let's say if you want to insert data for only the columns, customer ID, customer name and the product they've purchased and leaving the rest of the columns as such, the following query would be insert into table name, mention the table name that is customer and within the brackets mention the columns that you want to enter the values. So I'm only entering the values for customer ID, customer name and the product that they've purchased and mention the uh, keyword values open the brackets and uh, specify the uh, values as accordingly so i'm taking uh, customer id as uh, 1012 customer name let's say kavya and the product that they've purchased is let's say uh, as ac Close the brackets, mention the uh, semicolon and let us execute the statement. So as you can see, our query is successfully executed. So let me display the values and I'll use the select statement to display the values. So as you can see, only the customer ID, customer name and the product that they've purchased is being displayed here and leaving the rest of the uh, columns that is age, address and the purchase date as null values. So in this way, you can also insert uh, values into only the specified uh, columns of the table. Next, let us discuss about insert multiple rows statement. We can insert multiple rows in a single insert statement at a time. We can insert multiple row values by grouping row values with open and close brackets and separating each row with a comma. 
Now, if you want to insert, uh, let's say, hundreds of records and insert values into it, uh, it will take a lot of time. And it in the at the same time, it will become hectic if you specify the column names each and every time. So, in order to uh, reduce that uh, and insert the values quickly, we use this multiple statement. So, let's say if I want to insert uh, new values, insert two rows of employee ID uh, 1013 and 1014. So, the following query would be insert into customer, uh, that is the table name, and within the brackets, uh, so before entering the values, you have to mention the keyword values. And you can directly enter the values now without mentioning the column names. So as you can see, I've inserted two rows and the data into, into the table. So let me just execute the statement and uh, let us see the output. So I said our query has been successfully executed. Uh, let me use the select statement to display the new values. So as you can see, uh, the customer ID uh, 1013 and 1014 details uh, has been displayed. So in this way, you can use the uh, insert multiple statement uh, to insert uh, multiple rows into the table. So just keep a note that make sure uh, you insert the values accordingly in the order of the columns that you have taken in the table. The tutorial by understanding what SQL delete statement is and then we'll understand the syntax of SQL delete statement and finally we'll look at some SQL delete statements and execute them in MySQL workbench. So what is SQL delete statement? SQL delete statement is one of the data manipulation command DML that is used to remove rows from a table. That means you will able to delete the existing records from the table. Now you can either delete a single row, multiple rows or values from the existing table depending on the condition that is specified. That means delete statement with where condition is used to delete the rows that satisfies the condition with where clause and the remaining rows are not changed. Also delete statement without where condition is used to delete all the rows from the table. Let us now understand the syntax of SQL delete statement. The syntax is followed as delete from table name where condition. Here where condition is optional. That means you can either use it or you cannot use it. So let us take an example. Let's say if I want to delete uh, the details of the employee from the employee table whose employee ID is 101. So for that the following syntax would be delete from employee where employee ID equals to 101. Now if you execute this query, it will delete the details of that employee who is having employee ID as 101. In this way, you can use delete statement to delete one or more rows from the existing table. Now that we've got an idea on what SQL delete is, let us jump directly into the MySQL workbench and uh, get into the execution part. As you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and on the left side, you can view the various tables that are present in our uh, database simply code. So let us consider uh, employee table first as an example table to frame SQL queries to perform various operations using the delete statement. Firstly, uh, so let me display the uh, values that are present in the uh, employee table. For that, I'm using the select statement, select star from the table that is employee. So let me just execute this statement. So it will display the records of all the employees, uh, their employee ID, employee name, age, destination, date of birth, city, and salary. So firstly, uh, let us see how to delete a single row from the given existing table. For that, let me take an example. Let's say if I want to delete one of the employee details uh, from the employee table whose uh, employee ID is, let's say, 108. For that, the following query would be delete from table name that is employee where specify the condition employee id equals to 107 so let us execute the statement and see the output so our query has been successfully uh, executed uh, let me use the select statement to display the records and see whether or not uh, our record is deleted or not so as you can clearly see uh, 107 uh, 
record of the employee is uh, missing from the table that means we have successfully deleted the record of that employee who is having employee id 107 let us now understand how to delete multiple rows from the existing table before that uh, let me uh, display the total number of records present in the table so that we will have a clear idea on how many uh, records have been deleted after executing the query for that i'm using a count statement select count use the star operator from the table that is employee so we have total 14 records in the table so let us now execute this statement uh, for that we will uh, take an example let's say if i want to delete multiple employee details from the uh, employee table whose designation is let's say business analyst so for that the following query would be delete from table that is employee where designation equals to business analyst so let us execute this statement and see the output so as you can see our query has been successfully uh, executed let us again use the uh, count statement to see the values that are deleted so as you can see the total uh, count of the employees in the table has been changed to 11 that means there are a total of three employees whose uh, designation is business analyst and since we have specified the condition where we want to delete only those uh, records from the table whose designation is business analyst so in this way you can uh, delete multiple rows by using the where condition statement now similarly you can delete multiple records from the table using multiple conditions as well this can be done using various operators like and or between etc so let us take an example for that uh, suppose let's say if i want to delete the employee details uh, from the employee table uh, whose designation is let's say data analyst and uh, their salary is less than 30,000 by using or operator for that the following query would be delete from table that is employee specify the condition where designation equals to data analyst or their salary is less than 30,000 so let us execute this statement now so our query has been successfully executed and uh, let us see the output for that I am using the select count statement as well again so as you can see only one record has been deleted from the table that means there is only a record uh, of the employee whose designation is either data analyst or their salary is less than 30,000. So in this way you can use uh, multiple conditions to delete the records from table as well. Let us now take another scenario. Let's say if I want to delete uh, multiple employee details from the employee table whose salary is in between uh, let's say 30,000 and 45,000. For that I'll use the between operator and the following query would be delete from the table employee where salary between is the operator that we have to use 30,000 and 45,000. So let us execute this statement and see the output. So our query has been successfully uh, executed. Uh, let me use the count statement to display the number of records now. So as you can see previously we had uh, 10 records in the table now it has been changed to 4 that means a total of 6 records has been deleted from the table wherein uh, the uh, salary of the employees uh, ranging between 30,000 and 45,000. So in this way you can use the uh, delete statement to delete multiple records from the table by specifying the multiple conditions. Now we have seen how to delete a single record or multiple uh, records or even multiple records using multiple conditions in the existing table. 
Sometimes uh, there might be a requirement to delete the entire table data uh, to free up the memory or to allocate new data into the table. For that, uh, we use the delete statement to delete the uh, whole record from the table as well. For that, executing delete statement without the where clause uh, deletes the entire table data. So make sure you're careful while using the delete statement because you'll end up uh, deleting the whole table if you're using a without where clause. Let's say if I want to delete the remaining records of the table from the employee table, I'll simply uh, write the query as delete from table that is employee. So let me execute this statement and see the output. Our query has been successfully uh, executed. So let me just uh, display the records uh, in the table. For that, I'll use the select statement. So as you can see, only the columns are being present, but the records that were present in these columns have been completely deleted uh, using the delete statement. So in this way, you can delete uh, all the records from the table without specifying the condition using the where clause. The column operations play an important role because for even for data analysis or even if you're performing queries on your database table, it is quite essential because let's say, for instance, you have uh, created a table as per your require with requirement with a set of uh, different columns. Now later at a different stage, you might need to add some additional requirements where the table might need to have some additional columns or even some columns might require to be deleted or some column names need to be changed into a new columns within that existing table. Now there are mainly two different ways to uh, satisfy this condition. First is you have to delete the table and recreate a new table as per your new requirement. Now this is possible and advised only when the table is empty, right? Now if the table is not empty, you have to copy the data and then delete the table, uh, create another table and then copy or load the data into the uh, new table. Now this is time consuming and also not advisable. The other way is to add, delete or modify the columns and the data present in it to the current table without touching the existing columns and its corresponding data. Now this is done by using the alter table statement, which fulfills the requirement of uh, adding uh, new data within the existing columns. Now the alter table statement is used to change the structure of the existing table by adding, deleting or modifying the columns without modifying the data in it. So let us discuss uh, what are the different operations that are performed in SQL. Firstly, let us discuss the add column uh, operation in uh, SQL. For, for that, let me consider the employee table. So let me just display the values in it. Select star from employee. So as you can see, uh, the employee table has various columns like employee ID, employee name, age, designation, city, salary, date of joining, department ID. Now let's say I have an additional requirement where I want to add another column. Let's say if I want to add the other number details of the employees. For that, I'll use the alter statement. And the query is alter table employee add column other number and mention the uh, column data type. I'm taking varchar and we'll specify not null as our constraint. That means uh, it must have uh, a other number for every employee in the table. So let me just execute the statement. So as you can see, our query has been successfully executed. So let me just display the values. So as you can see, uh, there is a new column other number uh, that has been created in our existing table without disrupting any columns and its values in the uh, employee table. Now, similarly, you can add multiple columns to your existing table as well. And the query is alter table employee add column and within the uh, brackets, mention the different column names. Now, let's say if I want to add the PAR number as well as the UN, that is the universal account number of the employees. So the query will be add column, PAR number, mention the column data type, I'm taking varchar again, comma, UAN number, 
mention the data type as varchar so let us execute this statement and see the output so our query has been executed successfully let us see the output now so as you can see uh, we have two other columns pan number and un number in our uh, employee table since we have not mentioned mention any constraints here as uh, null or not null uh, so it by default it is taking here as null values so in this way you can use the alter table command to add multiple columns in your uh, table as well now similarly you can even modify or update the column values as well uh, let's say if i want to update the uh, existing column name into a new name now for that i'll use the alter table statement again now consider the employee table again so let me just display the values now if i want to change the salary column name into total salary so for that the following query would be alter table employee change column is the keyword we use in mysql so mention the keyword change column so we want to change the salary column into total salary and also mention the uh, data type as well so let us execute the query and see the output so our query has been successfully executed so let me just display the records again so as you can see a uh, salary name of the column salary has been changed into the total salary here so in this way you can update the uh, column values as well now similarly you can also modify the existing uh, column type in the table as well for that the following query would be alter table employee modify is the keyword now let's say if i want to change the age uh, data type so let's see what the initial or the previous data type was in uh, for age so i'll use the describe employee uh, query here so we basically have varchar as our uh, data type for the age now if i want to change into int so i'll just basically uh, mention the int keyword here so let us execute this statement and see the output so there was a bit error uh, i forgot to mention the uh, column keyword here so that's why it is uh, showing an error so let me just again uh, describe the uh, table employee so as you can see the uh, data type of the age column has been changed from varchar to int so in this way you can use the uh, alter table to modify the column data type as well now similarly we can also uh, modify an, a new column or an existing column with a default value as well uh let's say i want to take a new column uh, bonus that is the bonus salary for all the employees so for that the following query would be alter table employee alter column is the keyword we use here bonus is the column that i am creating set default is the keyword and i am keeping the bonus salary default as uh, let's say 15000 so let us execute the query and see the output so i forgot to add the column of the bonus so let me just first add the column so alter table employ add column bonus varchar 20 so our uh, bonus uh, column has been successfully created here so now we can see our query will be successful here as well so let me just describe the table again now if you scroll down you can see the uh, bonus column uh, the field which it has uh, the default salary as 15000 so in this way you can add the uh, default value to your existing columns or uh, to your new columns as well and finally we can uh, also drop the columns uh, the drop column is basically is used to delete the unnecessary or unwanted columns in our database so let's say if i want to <clears throat> delete the uh, cre already created uh, columns such as aadhar pan un and bonus so i'll use the drop statement here to delete the columns that were created earlier so drop so the query would be alter table employee drop column now first let us uh, 
delete a single column here. So let's say if I want to delete the other number column. So I'll use the other number column here. So let us see the output. Our query has been successfully executed. Let me just select the uh, records. So as you can see, uh, other number column has been successfully deleted. And similarly, you can also delete multiple columns as well. All you have to do is just uh, write the same query and put a comma and write again the column drop column keyword here. And let's say if I want to delete the PAN number as well. So PAN number as well as the UN number here now. So I can use this query here. So let me just execute this and see the output. So our query has been executed. Let me just display the records. So as you can see, uh, the UN number as well as the PAN number has been successfully uh, deleted from the employee table as well. And similarly, the altered statement uh, table statement is also used to add and drop various constraints on an existing table like which we have discussed earlier. Uh, if you want your column uh, a null value, then you can mention the null as the constraint there. And if you don't want any null values for your columns, then you can use the not null keyword in your uh, alter table statements. So in this way, you can use the uh, alter table statement to perform various column operations in SQL. So that was all about the SQL uh, column operations guys, where we have discussed about how to add, how to delete and how to update or modify the existing columns in the database. Start the tutorial by understanding what is SQL join. And then we'll discuss why we use SQL join. And then we'll go through different types of SQL joins such as SQL inner join, SQL outer join, SQL left join and finally SQL right join. So without any further delay, let us dive straight into today's topic. So what is SQL join? In relational databases, the information you want to retrieve is often stored in various different tables. In such scenarios, you'll need to join these tables to view data in a much better way. This is where SQL join comes into picture. SQL joins is widely used clause in, in SQL essentially to combine and retrieve data from two or more tables based on related columns or you can say common fields between them. Now consider two tables here. Table 1 has three columns A, B, C and three records. Let's say for reference we will take them as 1, 2, 3. Similarly, table 2 also has three columns B, C, D and three records 3, 4, 5. Here, I have taken a different color combination to represent values that are present in various columns. Now, instead of querying each table every time to retrieve data, I'll simply join these two tables and this will be the following resultant table. Also, make sure when you're joining two tables, it should compulsorily have a common column. Here, C is the common field which forms the basis to join these two tables here. Why we use SQL join? Flexibility. SQL join allows the user to access and manage records from more than one table easily. Let us understand with an example. Consider Mercedes-Benz which is one of the leading car manufacturers in the world and let's say they want to access the records of their customers from the database. Now in the uh, database let us take they have various different kinds of tables such as customer table, order table, vehicle table. Now if they want to get the vehicle details of so and so customer XYZ for that they have to first query the customer table to get the customer ID. Now, if once if they get the customer ID, they have to query the order table to get the order ID. And finally, with the help of order ID, they can get the vehicle details. Now, as you can see, this is a time taking process and hectic at the same time. Now, instead of that, I'll just simply join these tables, which will allow the users to combine rows from two or more tables based on different types of conditions. In this way, you can access and manage your records easily. Data redundancy. SQL join allows uh, the user to maintain data redundancy as much as low as possible so that we can maintain the amount of data anomalies that is the duplicate values that are repeated in uh, various tables in the database. Finally, efficiency. SQL join executes the query faster and shows the result much more quickly because instead of using various subqueries for each and every table individually, we can just simply join uh, two tables using a, a simple single query. Types of SQL joins. SQL joins are broadly classified into four types. They are inner join, outer join, left join, right join 
and additionally we also have cross join which is not that significant uh, in its usage because most of the times we use the first four joints now that we have uh, gone through different types of sql joints let us discuss each of them in detail firstly let us discuss about sql inner join sql inner join uh, joins two tables based on a common column and selects records that have matching values in these columns now when the condition uh, is applied for these columns the query checks all the rows of table 1 and table 2 only the rows that satisfy the join predicate are included in the resultant table let us now understand the uh, syntax of the sql inner join the syntax is followed as select table 1 dot column 1 table 1 dot column 2 table 2 dot column 1 and so on from table 1 inner join table 2 on table 1 dot column equals to table 2 dot column now inner join syntax basically compares rows of table 1 with table 2 to check if any anything matches based on the condition provided in the on clause and when the condition is met it returns matched rows in both tables with the selected columns in the select clause let us now discuss about the sql outer join sql outer join or else it is called as sql full join or full outer join is used to get all the rows which are present in both the tables that means it will return all the records which are present in either left table that is the table 1 or the right table that is table 2 even if there are no matching records present in both the tables. Let us now understand the syntax. The syntax remains same that is select table 1 dot column 1, table 1 dot column 2 and so on up to table 2 dot column 2. From table 1 full outer join is the keyword that we use here table 2 on table 1 dot column equals to table 2 dot column. Now here you have to mention the uh, the same or the similar column name in the uh, after the on predicate statement. Next we have SQL left join. Left outer join also known as left join results in a table containing all the rows from the table on the left side of the join that is the first table and only the rows that satisfy the join condition from the table on the right side of the join that is the second table. Any missing values uh, for the rows from the right table in the result of the join tables are represented by null values. Let us look at the syntax. The syntax is followed as select column list that is the column that you want to uh, display in your table. Now make sure you maintain uh, the uh, syntax of the column list that is the table name dot column name otherwise it will throw an error. So let me just repeat the syntax. The syntax is select column list from table 1 the uh, keyword that we use here is left join table 2 on table 1 dot column equals to table 2 dot column. So in this way you can use the left join to display the records. Next finally we have the uh, SQL right join. Now right join or right outer join is uh, opposite to that of the left outer join. Now it follows the same rules as the left join and the only difference is that all the rows from the right table and only the conditions satisfying the rows from the left table are present in the resultant table. That means it will return all the rows from the right table and all the matching records that are present in the left table. The syntax remains the same that is select column list that you want to display in your table from table 1 right join is the keyword we use table 2 on table 1 dot column equals to table 2 dot column. Now to sum up all these different SQL joins and how they work, I've taken a graphical representation of two different tables here which will help us visualize the real-time working of SQL joins. Now consider table 1 here which is columns A and B and records uh, two different records, let's say record 0, record 1 and similarly we have table 2 which have uh, columns A and C and two records that is record 0 and record 2. Now if you apply left join and uh, by the definition of left join it will only uh, return those values which will which are present in the left table and the matching records that are present in the right table. Now here the uh, matching value that are present in both the tables is 0 and the values that are present in the left table is 1. And if you consider the right join it will match the records from both the tables and it will display the only the values from the right table. That is the reason it is being displayed uh, the record 0 and the record 2. And if you look at the inner join it will match the values from both the tables. Now the common value that is present in uh, both the tables is record 0. 
and if you finally look at the outer join it will return all the uh, values from both the tables irrespective if they are matching or not that is the reason uh, all the records that is record 0 record 1 and record 2 are being displayed and with that we have come to the end of today's session that was all about sql joins stay tuned uh, for more upcoming videos wherein we'll execute all these types of joins in mysql workbench using various examples so what is sql inner join Using the inner join, the tables are combined on the basis of a condition also known as the join predicate. This condition is applied on the columns of both the tables on either side of the join clause. The query checks all the rows of table 1 and table 2. Now it will display only those values that satisfy the join predicate in the resultant table. That means it finds the matching values or the uh, matching records that are found in both the tables. For example, I have a table A which has records 1, 2, 3, 4 and in table B I have records 3, 4, 5, 6. Now if you join these two tables, now the resultant output, output will be 3 and 4 because these are only two records that are present in both the tables. That is, the table is matching the common values that are present in both the tables. Let us now understand the syntax of SQL inner join. The syntax is followed as select table1.column1, table1.column2 table 2.column 2 and so on from table 1 inner join is the keyword we have to use table 2 on table 1.column equals to table 2.column here after the join uh, expression we are mentioning the columns uh, from which we want to match the both the tables now that we have understood uh, what is sql inner join let us jump into mysql workbench and uh, execute it with the help of an example as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and on the left side you can uh, see the database that is simply code and the various tables that are present in our database simply code. Like we have customer table, department table, employee table, orders table, etc. Now to perform the SQL inner join uh, operations, uh, we'll use the employee table, department table and the projects table. Now let us display the values that are present in the table. For that we have to use the select statement or you can directly click on this uh, table icon here. So first let us display the values present in the employee table. The employee table has the following fields such as employee ID, employee name, age, designation, the city they belong to, salary, date of joining and their department ID. Next let us display the values that are present in the department table. The department table has two fields that is department ID and department name. And finally let us display the values present in the projects table. The projects table has the project ID, employee ID, the project name and the project manager. Now let's say we have a query here which says to retrieve the employee details and the department they are working in. Now before we write a query we have to check uh, for all those tables in which these informations are present in. For example I can get the employee details from the employee table such as their employee ID, employee name, the designation, salary and so on and also I can get the department details from the department table. Now the expected uh, query or the resultant table is based on these two tables. Now in order to retrieve the records from these two different tables, I need to uh, connect them. In other words, we have to join these two tables. This is where the inner join comes into picture. With the help of inner join, we can connect these uh, two tables and uh, we can retrieve all those matching records from those tables. Now the following query uh, would be for the inner join is select mention the column names that you want to display. Now I want I'll display the employee ID. So employee dot employee ID. I'll also uh, display the employee name. So employee dot employee name. I'll also display the uh, employee designation. So I am taking employee dot designation. Now I'll uh, also uh, retrieve the information from the department. So I'll have to mention the department table here as well. So department dot department ID, <clears throat> right? Now the query is uh, continued as from the table, table one that is employee. I'll just uh, write in the next, sent, uh, next sentence from employee. Inner join is the keyword we have to use here and mention the second table that is department on which is the keyword and mention uh, the uh, condition 
on the basis of which you are connecting these two tables now i'm connecting the employee and the department table with the help uh, with the uh, help of the department id so i'll mention employee dot department id equals to department dot department id so let us now execute this statement and see the output so as you can clearly see it is displaying the values of employee id employee name the designation and the department id as well now as you clear clearly you can see that the join condition is specified in the inner join clause after the on keyword uh, as the expression now for each row in the prod, uh, in the employee table the query finds a corresponding row in the department table that has the same matching values based on which we have mentioned here that is the department id now if there is a match between two rows in both the tables it returns all those rows that contains columns that we have specified for example we have specified employee id uh, name designation and the department that they belong to so in this way you can use the inner join to get the records from both the tables also you can uh, get the department name as well by uh, mentioning the department uh, names in the uh, query the department name dot department dot department name now this will display uh, the records of the department name that are present in the department table as well so as you can see uh, there are total of uh, six records and the employee details and the department names that they are working in and also if you uh, notice there are only six records that are present in a resultant table when we have uh, a total of 20 records that are present in the employee table that's because uh, the inner join only matches those records from those columns that are having matching values from both the tables and and also the condition that we have specified uh, in our inner join statement similarly let us look at another query which says to retrieve the employee details project they are working on and the project manager assisting them now for this to get the employee details again i'll again use the employee table and to get the details of the uh, project uh, name and the project manager's name i'll use the project table so the following query would be select e dot employee id now here i have taken the alias name for the tables that is you can mention a temporary name for the uh, tables that you have chosen so for employee table i am taking as e and for projects i am taking as p in order to save time and, uh, and to save time we will write in this way so the query is followed as select e dot employee id e dot employee name p dot project name p dot project manager from the first table that is employee e inner join projects we have taken the name as p on e dot employee id is equals to p dot employee id which is the common column from which we get the matching values from both the tables let us now execute uh, this statement and see the output so as you can see we can uh, we are able to retrieve the employee id employee name project name that the employee is working on and the project manager that uh, have been assigned to these employees and if you notice uh, carefully here, like some of the employees who are having employee ID like 1012, 1013, 1018, 16, uh, they have no project names assigned to their uh, to their names. That this is because even though we have all the details of employees uh, in the employee table, we do not have the data that that is being stored in the projects table. That is the reason uh, only a limited number of records are being shown and as per the definition of inner join it will fetch only those records uh, which have matching values from both the tables so in this way you can join uh, two or more tables using the inner join statement and with that we have come to the end of today's session that was all about into the execution part let us just quickly discuss what is sql outer join the outer join statement returns all those records which are present in either the left table or the right table now for example if you consider uh, the table here a which has records 1 2 3 4 and the table b which has records 3 4 5 6 now if you apply the full outer join to these two tables it will display all the records that is 1 2 3 and up to 6 now let us discuss the syntax of sql outer join the syntax is followed as select table1.column1 table1.column2 table2.column1 and so on 
these are basically the columns that you want to display in your resultant table from table 1 full outer join table 2 on table 1 dot column equals to table 2 dot column now as far as mysql concerned this syntax is not applicable now if you're working on other uh, databases like postgresql and uh, microsoft sql server you can apply this uh, syntax but if you're working on mysql workbench there is a different syntax which i'll be uh, discussing in a while so now that we have understood what is sql outer join let us jump into mysql workbench for the execution part as you can see mysql workbench has started and on the home page uh, on the left side you can view the databases and tables now i've created a uh, certain tables uh, time for time being so let me just uh, display the values that are uh, present in these tables. Now, in order to execute the MySQL outer join, we'll consider the employee table as well as the project tables. So let me just display the uh, values present in the employee table. I'll use the select operator to display those values. Select star from employee. So it will display the records of all those employees having uh, employee ID, employee name, age, their designation, city, salary, date of joining and their department ID. Now similarly, I'll display the records of projects. Let me just take another tab. I'll use again the select statement to display the records. Start from projects. Now if you execute this statement, it will display the uh, project ID, employee ID project name and the project manager details. Now let's say if I want to fetch the details of all the employees from the employee table and the project details they're working on from the projects table, I'll have to use the full join to retrieve information from both the tables. Now as discussed earlier, the full outer join keyword is not applicable to MySQL database. So I'll have to implement a new logic here, which is quite simple. As you know, the full outer join is the result of combining the left and right table so we'll first use the left join, then we'll use the right join, and finally we'll use the union operator, which is used to combine the resultant set of two or more select statements and uh, and execute it in a single statement. By the way, uh, we haven't executed left and right join yet, so stay tuned for the upcoming videos on both these joins as well. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So the following query would be, let me just take another tab again. So the following query would be select. Uh, now I mention all those column details that you want to uh, display in your resultant table. So I want to display the employee ID, employee name, project name and the project manager's name as well. So you have to mention the column names in the format of table name dot column name. So I'm taking the uh, alias name for the employee table as E. So e dot employee ID comma e dot employee name. Now for the projects table, I'm taking the alias name as P. So P dot project name comma P dot project managers name. from the table that is uh, project tables. Sorry, the first table is employee, right? So we'll mention the employee. Now use the left join keyword, left join on projects on. Now you have to mention the condition uh, on the basis of which you're uh, connecting these two tables. Now, if you look at the two tables, we have the employee ID that is present in both the tables. So that will be the uh, common attribute to specify this condition here. So e dot employee ID equals to p dot employee ID. Now I'll just copy paste this uh, same statement. And uh, instead of using the left join, I'll use the right join keyword. So let's just replace the left join uh, keyword with the right join and I'll mention the union operator keyword to join these two tables. So that's it guys. Uh, this is how you can uh, use the full outer join in uh, MySQL workbench. Now let us just execute this statement and see the output. Uh, so there's a bit of error 
Uh, let me just check it once. So I forgot to mention the alias name here for both the tables. So that is why it is throwing an error. So as you can see, this is our output and you can clearly see that the record from both the tables that is the left table, which is employee and the right table, which is projects are being displayed here. Now, unlike the inner join, which only fetches those records, which have matching values in both the tables, full outer join retrieves all the values irrespective of whether they are matching or not. For instance, if you look at the employees having employee IDs, here 1012, 1013, 1016 and as well as 1018, we have uh, their information present in table 1, that is the employee table here. But we do not have their information in the projects table here. And similarly, employees having employee IDs like 1022, 1023 and 1024, their information is present in the projects table, but it is not in, present in the first table that is employee. You can see only the uh, employee details uh, having their employees ID up to 1020 are being displayed in the employee table. Also, if you notice the resultant table here, guys, uh, some of the employees like Kirti, Varun and uh, Nitya have no uh, projects assigned to their name. That's why we have null values in the project name column. That's because though their records are present in the uh, employees table, but their employees IDs are not present in the project table. That means all these employees are yet to be assigned a new project. So if the values present in both the tables that does not match, it will simply just return null values. Similarly, we can see the other three projects that are present uh, in the table, but there is no sign of employee details here, be it their employee ID or employee name. And it will just simply return the null values again here because we do not have the employee information in the first table employee, even though their IDs are mentioned in the project table and hence it will only re uh, return null values. Now, Suppose this is just a demo table having around 20 or 25 records. But if you consider a company's database in real life, it will have thousands of records. In order to access and manage various database tables and fetch information from those tables altogether, it becomes quite difficult, right? So this is why we use full join to connect the tables and retrieve each and every information from them. And in, if any column has null values, they can just simply update those rows or even delete them as per the required. Let's just have a quick recap on what is SQL left join. So SQL left outer join also known as left join results in a table containing all the rows from the table on the left side of the join that is the first table and only the rows that satisfy the join condition from the table on the right side of the join that is the second table. The missing values for the rows from the right table in the resultant uh, table of the join are represented by null values. For example, if you consider here two tables that is table A and table B which is values 1, 2, 3, 4 in table A and 3, 4, 5, 6 in table B. Now if you apply left join for both these tables, oh, it will display only the values from the left table that is 1, 2 and the matching values from the right table that is 3, 4. So the resultant uh, table will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Let us now understand the syntax of the SQL left join statement. The syntax is followed as select column lists. These, these are basically the list, the columns that you want to uh, display in your resultant table from table one, left join, which is the keyword we are using here, table two on table one dot column equals to table two dot column. Now here, here you have to mention the uh, a common attribute on the basis of which you're joining these two tables. So now that we've understood about SQL left join, let us now jump into MySQL workbench to execute this using various examples. As you can see, MySQL workbench has started and on the home page, on the left side in the schema section, you can view the databases and the tables that are present. So in this case, we have the database simply code and various tables in that such as customer, department table, employee orders, and etc. Now in order to execute this uh, left join statement, We'll, we'll be going to use customer and the orders table statement tables. So let me just display the uh, values from both these tables. For that, I'll use the select clause, select star from customer, which is the table name. So let us just execute. So as you can see, the customer table has various fields such as customer ID, customer name, age, address, and their phone numbers. Similarly, let us go to another tab and uh, display the values that are present in orders table. 
select star from the table that is orders. So let us execute this statement. So as you can see in the output, uh, the orders table has various fields such as product ID, customer ID, product name, that is the product they have purchased, quantity, the price of the product and the purchase date. Now let's say if I want to fetch the details of all the customers and the product details that they have purchased, I'll have to connect these two tables that is customer and the orders table to get the resultant table. Now for that, I'll use the left join statement. So let me just take another tab and execute the statement. So the following query would be select, mention the uh, column names that you want to fetch in your resultant table. So I'm going to take here uh, Alea's name for both the customer and the orders table as C and O. That's because uh, instead of writing the full name of the tables each and every time, you can just simply uh, use an alias name, which is a temporary name, which will save time as well. So for customer uh, table, I'm taking as C. So I want to display the customer ID. So C dot customer ID. I want to display the customer name, customer's address. So C dot address. Now from the orders table, I want to uh, mention the product's name that they've purchased, the quantity, price and purchase date. So we have taken O as the alias name for our table. So O dot purchase name. Sorry, product name that they've purchased. I also want to display the quantity. So O dot quantity. It's price as well, O dot price and the purchase date, O dot purchase date from the table, first table that is customer, mention the alias name C, left join which is the keyword on the second table that is orders O on mention the condition on which you are joining these two tables. So as you can see, we can find the customer ID and the customer ID in both the uh, customer and the orders table. So we'll mention the customer ID as the column common attribute here. So C dot customer ID equals to O dot customer ID. So let us just execute the statement and see the output. So as you can see, it will display the customer ID, customer name, address, product name, quantity, price and purchase date of the uh, customers in our resultant table. Now let us understand what exactly uh, the left join statement is doing here. Firstly, the database checks each and every row of the table and looks for a match in the right table based on the related columns. Now if a match is found, the data from the right table is added to the corresponding row of the left table. Now you can see uh, customers having customer ID 10110, 10120, 10130 and 101340. We have the details present in the first table as well as the second table that is orders. So it will uh, display all those records. And then if there are multiple matches, now in this case we can see a customer name Ajay is having two different uh, records who has bought sofa set and a TV. So the rows in the left table are duplicated here. That is the records are repeated in the resultant table in order uh, to include all the records from the right table. So now uh, for all the columns that you have fetched from the right table, that is orders, which is not satisfying the join conditions, then the values present in the columns will be resultant as null. That means if there is no matching value found from the right table, it will simply retain the row from the left table and inserts null into the corresponding columns of the right table. Now let me just explain this. Now if you see here the customer, uh, customers like Adarsh and Pranay who are having details in the first table, that is a uh, customer table, but they do not have their details in the orders table. So there is no sign of uh, any uh, their customer ID in the order table. That's why uh, we do not have their uh, details present in the uh, resultant table. So it will just show the null values here. So basically left join is a combination of inner join we can say because it just checks the matching values from both the tables first and then it will check for any additional or extra values that are left out from the left table that is the table one. 
Now you might have a question that when to use and why to use the left join. Like there are times when you want to keep rows from the first table that don't have any corresponding records in the second table. Now if you, in this case, if you consider our example, we might want to see information about all the customers in our resultant table, even if they didn't place any orders. So in that case, we'll use the left join, which will be used to combine data from two tables so that all the rows from the left table are included in the resultant set, even if there is no matching value from the right table. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Now, before getting into the execution part, let us just have a quick recap on what is SQL Write Join. SQL Write Outer Join, also known as the Write Join, works the opposite way to that of Left Outer Join. It follows the same rule as the left join and the only difference is that all the rows from the right table and only the condition satisfying rows from the left table are present in the resultant table. So basically the right join returns all the records from the right table and only the matching records from the left table uh, satisfying the condition. For example, let's say we have two tables, table A and table B and when the left right join is applied to the two tables, it would give all the records from the table B and only the matching records from the table A, that is table 1. Let us now look at the syntax of SQL right join. The syntax is same and uh, it is followed as select table 1 dot column 1, table 1 dot column 2, table 2 dot column 1 and so on. These are basically the columns that you want to display in your resultant table. From table 1, right join is the keyword we use here, table 2 on table 1 dot column equals to table 2 dot column. Now that we have understood what is SQL right join, let us jump into MySQL workbench for the execution part. Choose from over 300 in-demand skills and get access to 1,000 plus hours of video content for free. Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So MySQL Workbench has started and on the left side you can view the database Simply Code which has various tables such as Customer, Department, Employee, Orders. Now for time being I've already created and inserted values into all these tables and to in order to execute the SQL right join we are going to use the customer table and the orders table. So let me just display the values uh, that are present in these tables. For that I'm going to use this select statement. Select star from the customer table. So as you can see the customer table has uh, various fields such as customer ID, customer name, their age, their address and the phone number. Similarly, let us just uh, retrieve the records from the orders table as well. Select star from orders table. So the orders table has of various columns such as product ID, customer ID, product name that they have purchased, quantity, price of the product and the purchase date. Now if I want to join these two tables, I am going to use the uh, right join statement. So the following query would be select now i'm going to use a alias name uh, for both these tables for customer table i'm going to take as c and for orders table i'm going to take as o now i'm now i want to display uh, the columns from the customer table uh, only so the uh, tables are the columns are customer name i want to display their address as well so mention the column names customer name c dot address now from orders table, I am going to display the product name that they have purchased, quantity, price and purchase date. So o dot product name, comma o dot quantity, comma o dot price and finally o dot purchase date. From the table one that is customer, mention the keyword right join, mention the second table name that is orders on, mention the condition on which you are joining these two tables now. Now as you can see we have customer id as well as uh, the customer id present in both the tables customers and orders. So we will be taking the uh, customer id here as the common column on c dot customer id equals to o dot customer id 
let us now execute the statement and see the output so there is just an error uh, let me check oh, okay i didn't uh, mention the alias name here so mention the alias name for both the tables i guess it will display now name okay so as you can see this is our resultant table which uh, basically displays the uh, various columns customer name their address product name quantity price and purchase date let us now understand what exactly uh, the right join is performing here now basically the right join clause starts selecting the data from the right table and matches it with the rows from the left table the right join returns a resultant table that includes all the rows in the right table whether or not they are having matching rows from the left table now if a row in the right table does not have any matching rows from the left table the columns of the left table in the resultant set will have null values now clearly the sql statement would return all the rows from the orders table here as you can see we have all the details like uh, ac tv phone cooker car sofa set and phone bike etc in our orders table so it it is basically retrieving all the data from the right table and only those rows from the customer table where the join condition is being satisfied now it will only display the matching values here because can you as you can see we have customer id 10110 10120 10130 10130 so basically we have one total six records and we have them in the resultant table as well now if you uh, consider the resultant table here it is showing null values for some of the customer names and address because though we have the product names mentioned in the uh, orders table here for example the product name car sofa set bike and uh, the customer ids are 10140 10160 and 10190 but we do not have their uh, details present in the customer table and that is the reason we that it is showing us null here so in this way you can use the uh, sql right join statement now you might have a doubt that when to use and why to use the right join statement again it will depend on your own requirement for instance if you want to keep the records from the second table that do not have any corresponding records from the first table in that case we will use the a uh, right join also another point to be noted here that the table that you have mentioned to the right side of the right join keyword that is we have taken here orders right so it will give the highest priority to this table and it will uh, display all the records from the orders table here even if they do not have any matching values similarly just take another scenario here i am just interchanging the tables here like the first table i am taking as orders and the second table i am taking as customers so when we execute this statement it will display the records from all the records from the customer table that is the first table and even if they do not have the matching values it will just display the null values here that's because now if you consider adarsh and pranay we have their details uh, in the employee in the customer table but we do not have their information present in the orders table and that's the reason we can see that only their uh, details are present but they do not have the orders details that we have present here so in this way you can use the right sql join statement as well so with that we have come to the end of session guys that was all about the sql right understanding what exactly are sql keys and then we'll understand why we use sql keys and finally we'll go through some different types of keys that are used in sql so without any further ado let's dive straight into today's topic on sql keys so what are keys in sql sql keys plays an important role in relational databases it is used for identifying unique rows from table a key is a subset of columns in a table that allows a row to be uniquely identified so a key can be more than just a column and every row in the table will have a unique value for the key or a unique combination of values if the key consists of more than just one column now as you know databases are used to store massive amounts of information which is stored across multiple tables now each table might be uh, having more than thousands of records or rows now needless to say there will be many duplicate rows with redundant information so how do we deal with that now how do we manage these records that are storing only unique data now for that we might need a combination of one or more columns in the database table to uniquely identify a row in a database so in that case we use the sql keys now sql keys creates constraints that can be used to enforce data integrity in sql 
Now, as you know, a database must adhere to certain properties to maintain integrity and quality of the data that is storing. Keys and constraints are rules that define what data values are allowed in certain data columns. They are an important database concept as well as for SQL and are part of database schema definition. Defining keys and constraints is part of database design process and ensures that data within a database is reliable and maintains its integrity. Let us now understand why we use SQL keys. SQL keys identify each record separately and uniquely. Now a key is used in the definition of various kinds of integrity constraints and a table in a database represents a collection of records or events for a particular relation. Now since there are thousands and thousands of such records, some of which may be duplicated. Now in order to uh, identify these records uniquely and separately, we need SQL keys. SQL keys allows user to establish and identify a relationship between the tables as well. And finally, SQL keys access or manages the stored data quickly and smoothly. Now that we've understood what SQL keys are and why we use them, let us now discuss some of the various types of keys in SQL. SQL keys are broadly classified into various types such as primary key, super key, candidate key, alternate key, composite key, foreign key. Now let us discuss each and every type of key in detail with an example. Firstly, let us look at what exactly is primary key. The primary key is one of the most important and commonly used SQL keys in the databases. The primary key is in SQL is a single or a group of fields or columns that can uniquely identify a row in a table. Putting it simply, it is a column that accepts unique values for each row. Therefore, whenever you use the insert into command to insert new values in a table, the value for a primary key column or columns need to be unique. Now, primary key advantages is mainly it uniquely identifies each row of a table. Also, it gets a unique index for each primary key column that helps with faster access. Now, there are properties uh, which are helpful of SQL primary key. They are, it enforces uniqueness by not accepting any duplicate values and a primary key also uniquely identifies each field and can take only one primary key for a table. Now a primary key column cannot accept null values as well. Let us consider an example here. Consider a student table which is having uh, various fields such as student ID, roll number, name, class section, age and address. Now, if you look at uh, the table clearly, student ID can be taken as a primary key here. Also, you can take the roll number, but since we are taking the records of all the students in a school, that's why we are taking the student ID as the primary key. Now, if you take the records of the students for a particular class, then you can take the roll number as a primary key as well. Let us now understand the syntax of primary key. Now to create a new table with a column defined as a primary key, you can use the keyword primary key at the end of the definition of that column. And the syntax is create table, table name, and within the parentheses mention the column names and its column types. And finally mention the primary key inside the brackets. So for example, if I want to create a table which is having ID, last name, first name, and age, in that I'm going to use the primary key here as ID. So in this way, you can use the primary key in SQL. Next, let us discuss about the candidate key. A candidate key is defined as set of one or more columns that can identify a record uniquely in a table. So basically, candidate key is a super key with no repeated attributes. By the way, uh, we'll discuss about the super key in a while. Uh, the primary key should be selected from all the candidate keys and every table must have at least a single candidate key and a table can have multiple candidate keys but only a single primary key. Now candidate key shouldn't have redundant attributes that means it should not have any duplicate values in the table. Now unlike primary key the attributes of candidate key can contain null values and as discussed a table can have more than one candidate keys. And it is also called as the minimal super key guys. Uh, that's because uh, we select a candidate key from a set of super keys such that the selected candidate key is the minimum attribute required to uniquely identify the rows in a table. So let us understand this with an example. Consider the students table here, which is having various columns such as student ID, roll number, name, age, address, and contact. 
now as you know uh, we can take the student id as the primary key and with that we can take the roll number as well as the contact of the students as the candidate key here because all these three columns alone can uniquely satisfy the condition of the candidate key here so in this way we can use the candidate keys in s next let us discuss about alternate key in sql alternate key are subset of candidate keys that can also uniquely identify tuples in a table which are not chosen as primary key for example consider the employee table here which has columns employee id employee name job department number pan number aadhar number and uan now if you look at the table uh, the columns that can uniquely identify each and every record are basically employee id pan number aadhar number and uan number now since we have taken the employee id as a primary key and the rest of all the columns that are not chosen as a primary key are considered to be alternate keys so in this case we can take the pan number aadhar number uan number as our alternate keys next let us discuss about the super key in sql super key is another important key that is used day to day usage in sql databases a super key or a simple key is a combination of all possible attributes which can use uniquely identify the row or tuples in a table that means that a super key may have some extra attributes which is not necessary for uniquely identifying the rows in the table a super key is a in sql is a superset of primary key candidate key and alternate key that means basically it is a combination of all the keys such as primary candidate and alternate keys as discussed super key will have additional attributes that are not needed for any unique identification and finally super keys with the least number of attributes form the candidate keys so let us take an example again consider the employee table here and if you look at the possible keys that will be for super keys are employee id pan number employee id aadhar number employee id uan pan number aadhar number pan number uan aadhar number uan employee id pan number as well as uan and finally pan number aadhar number and uan now all the above keys are able to uniquely identify each row so each of these keys is a super key now again in this example we have like more than 6 uh, super, uh, super keys but all of them cannot become a candidate key here only those super keys would become a candidate key which have no redundant attribute for example uh, if you take employee id pan number this key cannot be considered as a candidate key because uh, when we take the subset of this key we get two attributes that is employee id as well as the pan number now each of these attributes is basically a candidate key so it is a minimal super key but hence this key is not a candidate key and finally let us discuss about the foreign key in sql a foreign key is a column or combination of columns that is used to establish and force a link between the data in two tables to control the data that can be stored in the foreign key table in a foreign key reference a link is created between two tables when the column or columns hold the primary key value for one table and are referenced by the column or columns in other table now this column becomes a foreign key in the second table the table with the foreign key is known as the child table and the table with the primary key is known as the referenced or parent table now as foreign key has bought the referential integrity in sql uh, which means that it requires that a foreign key must have a matching primary key or it must be null this constraint is specified between two tables that is parent and child and it maintains the correspondence between the rows in these tables it means that the reference from a row in one table to another table must be valid now the foreign key uh helps in maintaining the data integrity of the table and allows easy navigation between two instances or attributes it is also used in sql to make the database data consistent and it is also used for the prevention of any action that may result in destruction of relation between these two tables let us understand this with an example now consider two tables here employee and department the employee table has employee id employee name job department number pan number aadhar number and un number and the department table has employee id and the department name now clearly the employee id which is the primary key in the first table employee is acting as a cross reference for the department table that is uh, the employee id acts as the foreign key here for the department table 
so in this way you can use the foreign key in sql and similarly we have some other types of uh, keys in sql which are not that significant in its usage the first one being is unique key a unique key is same as a primary key with the difference being the existence of one null value in a table field or a row for example consider a student table having student id roll number and its name now for some reasons if the student is leaving the school then his roll number might be deleted although his student id will be preserved for further assistance so since there is a null value in roll number it can be considered as a unique key and student id can be considered as a primary key similarly we have composite key a composite key is a combination of two or more attributes that can together uh, can uniquely identify a tuple in a table and that brings us to the end of today's session uh, that was all about uh, the sql keys so let us just quickly recap what we have discussed uh, the different types of keys so to summarize this i have created a table here employee id employee name aadhar passport department id which is uh, the table one that is employee table and we have department id and department columns in the second table that is department table now here clearly employee id is the primary key since it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table and employee id aadhar number passport can be taken as candidate keys because they are set of more than one primary keys since the, so they can be considered as the candidate key here now alternate keys which are other than the primary key that is employee id so i am taking aadhar card and passport as the alternate keys here now the combination of all these keys that such as primary key candidate key alternate key forms a super key now i am taking the passport as the unique key since a not everyone has a passport to their name so i am taking the passport attribute here as the unique key and finally the foreign key is the department id as it points uh, to the reference to the second table that is department table so in this way you can use the sql keys accordingly and if further delay let's get started with today's topic firstly let us understand the agenda for today's session we'll start the tutorial by understanding what exactly are sql keys and then we'll understand why we use sql keys and finally we'll go through some different types of keys that are used in sql so without any further ado let's dive straight into today's topic on sql keys so what are keys in sql sql keys plays an important role in relational databases it is used for identifying unique rows from table a key is a subset of columns in a table that allows a row to be uniquely identified so a key can be more than just a column and every row in the table will have a unique value for the key or a unique combination of values if the key consists of more than just one column now as you know databases are used to store massive amounts of information which is stored across multiple tables now each table might be uh, having more than thousands of records or rows now needless to say there will be many duplicate rows with redundant information so how do we deal with that now how do we manage these records that are storing only unique data now for that we might need a combination of one or more columns in the database table to uniquely identify a row in a database so in that case we use the sql keys now sql keys creates constraints that can be used to enforce data integrity in sql now as you know a database must adhere to certain properties to maintain integrity and quality of the data that is storing keys and constraints are rules that define what data values are allowed in certain data columns they are an important database concept as well as for sql and are part of database schema definition Defining keys and constraints is part of database design process and ensures that data within a database is reliable and maintains its integrity. Let us now understand why we use SQL keys. SQL keys identify each record separately and uniquely. Now a key is used in the definition of various kinds of integrity constraints and a table in a database represents a collection of records or events for a particular relation. Now since there are thousands and thousands of such records some of which may be duplicated now in order to uh, identify these records uniquely and separately we need sql keys sql keys allows user to establish and identify a relationship between the tables as well and finally sql keys access or manages the stored data quickly and smoothly now that we have understood what 
SQL keys are and why we use them. Let us now discuss some of the various types of keys in SQL. SQL keys are broadly classified into various types such as primary key, super key, candidate key, alternate key, composite key, foreign key. Now let us discuss each and every type of key in detail with an example. Firstly, let us look at what exactly is primary key. The primary key is one of the most important and commonly used SQL keys in the databases. The primary key is in SQL is a single or a group of fields or columns that can uniquely identify a row in a tuple. Putting it simply, it is a column that accepts unique values for each row. Therefore, whenever you use the insert into command to insert new values in a table, the value for a primary key column or columns need to be unique. Now, primary key advantages is mainly it uniquely identifies each row of a table. Also, it gets a unique index for each primary key column that helps with faster access. Now, there are properties uh, which are helpful of SQL primary key. They are, it enforces uniqueness by not accepting any duplicate values and a primary key also uniquely identifies each field and can take only one primary key for a table. Now, a primary key column cannot accept null values as well. Let us consider an example here. Consider a student table which is having uh, various fields such as student ID, roll number, name, class section, age and address. Now if you look at uh, the table clearly, student ID can be taken as a primary key here. Also you can take the roll number but since we are taking the records of all the students in a school, that's why we are taking the student ID as the primary key. Now if you take the records of the students for a particular class, then you can take the roll number as a primary key as well. Let us now understand the syntax of primary key. Now to create a new table with a column defined as a primary key, you can use the keyword primary key at the end of the definition of that column. And the syntax is create table, table name, and within the parentheses mention the column names and its column types. And finally mention the primary key inside the brackets. So for example, if I want to create a table which is having ID, last name, first name, and age, in that I'm going to use the primary key here as ID. So in this way, you can use the primary key in SQL. Next, let us discuss about the candidate key. A candidate key is defined as set of one or more columns that can identify a record uniquely in a table. So basically, candidate key is a super key with no repeated attributes. By the way, uh, we'll discuss about the super key in a while. Uh, the primary key should be selected from all the candidate keys and every table must have at least a single candidate key and a table can have multiple candidate keys but only a single primary key. A candidate key shouldn't have redundant attributes that means it should not have any duplicate values in the table. Now unlike primary key the attributes of candidate key can contain null values and as discussed a table can have more than one candidate keys. And it is also called as the minimal super key guys. Uh, that's because uh, we select a candidate key from a set of super keys such that the selected candidate key is the minimum attribute required to uniquely identify the rows in a table. So let us understand this with an example. Consider the students table here which is having various columns such as student ID, roll number, name, age, address and contact. Now as you know uh, we can take the student ID as the primary key and with that, we can take the roll number as well as the contact of the students as the candidate key here because all these three columns alone can uniquely satisfy the condition of the candidate key here. So in this way, we can use the candidate keys in S. Next, let us discuss about alternate key in SQL. Alternate key are subset of candidate keys that can also uniquely identify tuples in a table which are not chosen as primary key. For example, consider the employee table here, which has columns employee ID, employee name, job, department number, PAN number, Aadhaar number and UAN. Now if you look at the table, uh, the columns that can uniquely identify each and every record are basically employee ID, PAN number, Aadhaar number and UAN number. Now since we have taken the employee ID as a primary key and the rest of all the columns that are not chosen as a primary key are considered to be alternate keys. So in this case, we can take the PAN number, other number, UAN number as our alternate keys. 
Next, let us discuss about the super key in SQL. Super key is another important key that is used day to day usage in SQL databases. A super key or a simple key is a combination of all possible attributes which can use uniquely identify the row or tuples in a table. That means that a super key may have some extra attributes which isn't necessary for uniquely identifying the rows in the table. A super key is a in SQL is a superset of primary key, candidate key and alternate key. That means basically it is a combination of all the keys such as primary, candidate and alternate keys. As discussed, super key will have additional attributes that are not needed for any unique identification. And finally, super keys with the least number of attributes form the candidate keys. So let us take an example again. Consider the employee table here. And if you look at the possible keys that will be for super keys are employee ID PAN number, employee ID other number, employee ID UAN, PAN number other number, PAN number UAN, other number UAN, employee ID PAN number as well as UAN and finally PAN number other number and UAN. Now all the above keys are able to uniquely identify each row. So each of these keys is a super key. Now again in this example we have like more than uh, 6 super, uh, super keys but all of them cannot become a candidate key here. Only those super keys would become a candidate key which have no redundant attribute. For example uh, if you take employee ID PAN number this key cannot be considered as a candidate key because uh, when we take this subset of this key we get two attributes that is employee ID as well as the PAN number. Now each of these attributes is basically a candidate key. So it is a minimal super key but hence this key is not a candidate key. And finally, let us discuss about the foreign key in SQL. A foreign key is a column or combination of columns that is used to establish and force a link between the data in two tables to control the data that can be stored in the foreign key table. In a foreign key reference, a link is created between two tables when the column or columns hold the primary key value for one table and are referenced by the column or columns in other table. Now this column becomes a foreign key in the second table. The table with the foreign key is known as the child table and the table with the primary key is known as the referenced or parent table. Now as foreign key has bought the referential integrity in SQL uh, which means that it requires that a foreign key must have a matching primary key or it must be null. This constraint is specified between two tables that is parent and child and it maintains the correspondence between the rows in these tables. It means that the reference from a row in one table to another table must be valid. Now the foreign key uh, helps in maintaining the data integrity of the table and allows easy navigation between two instances or attributes. It is also used in SQL to make the database data consistent. And it is also used for the prevention of any action that may result in destruction of relation between these two tables. Let us understand this with an example. Now consider two tables here, employee and department. The employee table has employee ID, employee name, job, department number, PAN number, other number and UN number. And the department table has employee ID and the department name. Now clearly the employee ID which is the primary key in the first table employee is acting as a cross reference for the department table that is uh, the employee ID acts as the foreign key here for the department table. So in this way you can use the foreign key in SQL. And similarly we have some other types of uh, keys in SQL which are not that significant in its usage. The first one being is unique key. A unique key is same as a primary key with the difference being the existence of one null value in a table field or a row. For example, consider a student table having student ID, roll number and its name. Now for some reasons if the student is leaving the school then his roll number might be deleted although his student ID will be preserved for further assistance. So since there is a null value in roll number it can be considered as a unique key and student ID can be considered as a primary key. Similarly, we have composite key. A composite key is a combination of two or more attributes that can together uh, can uniquely identify a tuple in a table. And that brings us to the end of today's session. Uh, that was all about uh, the SQL keys. So let us just quickly recap what we have discussed uh, the different types of keys. So to summarize this, I've created a table here, employee ID, employee name, other, passport, department ID, which is uh, the table one. 
that is employee table and we have department id and department columns in the second table that is department table now here clearly employee id is the primary key since it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table and employee id other number password can be taken as candidate keys because they are set of more than one primary keys since the, so they can be considered as the candidate key here now alternate keys which are other than the primary key that is employee id so i am taking other card and passport as the alternate keys here now the combination of all these keys that such as primary key candidate key alternate key forms a super key now i am taking the passport as the unique key since and not everyone has a passport to their name so i am taking the passport attribute here as the unique key and finally the foreign key is the department id as it points uh to the reference to the second table that is department table so in this way you can use the sql keys apple by understanding what is sql group by statement and see why we use group by clause and then we'll understand what is sql order by statement and why we use order by clause and next we'll see some key differences between these two statements and finally we'll understand the syntax and uh, look into the execution part in mysql workbench So what is SQL group by? Now SQL allows the user to store more than one type and up to almost thirty types of data types in as many columns as required. So sometimes it becomes difficult to find similar data in these columns. Now group by in SQL helps us club together all these identical rows present in the columns of a data. Group by statement is used to group together any rows of a column with the same value stored in them on a function specified in this statement. Basically group by clause is used to group the rows which matching values using the specified condition now generally we use this group by clause with aggregate functions such as count max minimum maximum and average by the way guys uh, if you want to know more about the aggregate functions make sure to check out our previous video on introduction to aggregate functions where we have discussed about these in detail now uh, the sql group by statement uses the split apply combine technique here now the different groups are split with their values and then an aggregate function is applied to these values of these groups and finally the values are combined into a single row now if you consider this example here we have two columns and we have three different items uh, a b c having different values now you can see a has uh, two values 4 7 13 and c has 9 4 now when we split this and apply the sum aggregate function which results in the arithmetic sum of all these row values as you can see now a has values 4 and 7 now when i apply the sum it becomes 11 and b 1 3 it becomes 4 and c 9 4 it becomes 13 so it will display all these identical rows having matching values and into a resultant set so in this way you can use the sql group by Let us now understand the syntax of SQL group by statement. The syntax is followed as select column one, column two, up to n number of columns from table name where condition group by column name. Now the group by statement lets the database uh, system user know that we wish to group the same value rows of the column specified in the statement's column names parameter. And you can also use there is an optional where clause which can be used to specify any condition according to which the row are to be selected. Next let us understand what is SQL order by statement. The order by clause in SQL sorts the data of a column in the SQL database. It helps us sort the column in both ascending as well as the descending order. The ASC keyword helps us sort in ascending order while the DESC keyword sorts in descending order. And if no keyword is specified in which we have to sort the records in the column, it will take the default value. The order by clause sorts the record in ascending order by default if we do not mention any specific uh, keyword that is ASC or DSC. Now the order by clause can only be for select statements, and the order by keyword is used to sort the resulting table in either ascending order, be or descending order based on the columns specified in the statement's column name. Now another important thing to be noted here is that the order by statement always appear after the group by statement and is applied to the group of rows form. Now let us look at the syntax. The syntax is followed as select column one, column two from table name where condition which is optional as per your requirement, group by column list, order by column name, and you can mention the ASC or DESC keyword as per your need.
Now that we have understood about both of these statements, let us now understand the differences between group by and order by. Now group by statement is used to group the rows that have the same value whereas the order by is used to arrange the data obtained in the resultant table of a query in sorted form. Now the group by is always used before the order by clause in the select statement whereas uh, the all order by statement is used after the group by clause in the select statement. Now in group by statement the attribute under the aggregate function cannot be in group by clause whereas in order by the attribute under aggregate function can be in order by clause. That means if the group by clause contains an attribute that is not under select clause or if it is under select clause but under uh, aggregate function then the query becomes uh, invalid and it throws an exception. Hence we can say the group by clause is always used in collaboration with the select clause. Now in group by it is mandatory to use one of the aggregate functions like count, sum, average, minimum, maximum etc. Whereas in order by statement uh, it is not compulsory and mandatory to use the uh, aggregate functions. And finally the group by clause controls the presentation of rows or tuples whereas the order by statement controls the presentation of columns. That means the group by is only concerned uh, with the values of identical rows in the resultant set whereas the order by statement uh, basically arranges the data in the columns in either ascending or descending form. Now that we have understood about both these uh, SQL statements, let us jump into MySQL Workbench for execution part. Choose from over 300 in-demand skills and get access to 1000 plus hours of video content for free. Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So as you can see MySQL Workbench has started. Now in order to execute the group by and order by statement, we'll consider the data set of an employee which I have already downloaded from Google. So let me just import the data set uh, into the MySQL Workbench. For that all you have to do is just uh, go to the tables tab and right click on it and you will find table data import wizard click on that. Now it will ask to import the location from where you have saved. So I have saved my file in desktop so I am just selecting the uh, file. Now once you have selected the file click the next button here. Now it will ask if uh, to name the table whether to use the existing table or to create a new table. So I am just taking a new table here employees1 and click on next it will display all the columns that are present uh, in that csv file so just click on next click on next and it will start to prepare the import now depending upon the number of records present in the data set uh, it will take bit of time so don't worry now as you can see our uh, data set has been successfully imported so we'll click on next again so uh, it is showing that 49 records have been uh, imported successfully so let me just refresh the schema here and as you can see employees one uh, has been shown in the uh, table section. So let me just display the records that are present in these uh, tables. For that I am using the select statement select star from employees one. So as you can see our employees one table has employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hiring date, job ID salary manager id and finally department id now firstly let us discuss about the group by clause uh, now let's say if i want to fetch the total employees in all the departments from the employees one table then the following query would be select now i can take the employee id to display the total number of employees because each and every every employee has a different employee id to their name so select count employee id as total comma i want to display their uh, department id as well so i'm taking department id from employees table employee one group by Uh, now we want to group all their department ID right so I'm taking department ID so let me just execute the statement and see the out okay the table name is uh, wrong here so let me just correct it 
So as you can see, it will display the total employees that are present in each and every department. Now, if you look at the department ID column, uh, we have the values in a random way. Now, in order to display in a systematic and a proper way, this is where we use the order by statement. So we can uh, sort the department ID values in the ascending or dis uh, descending manner as per your, as per a requirement. So I want to display an ascending uh, order. So order by department ID. Let us execute the statement and see the output. So as you can now see that the department ID are being displayed in the, in the ascending manner that is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and so on up to 110. So in this way you can use the group by and order by statements. So that was all about the group by and order by uh, statement. So this is just to give a quick uh, review on how these two statements works. Now if you want to learn more about the order by statement make sure to check out our SQL order by video on our channel uh, where we have discussed about it more in depth and with more examples as well. And also you might have a doubt that when to use group by and when to use the order by statement. Now if you want to form the group of uh, the set of uh, records or the identical columns having values in them then you must use group by clause. And in case you want to arrange the data of a single or a multiple column uh, with variable different conditions or in that case you have to use the order by to sort the data in ascending or descending order. In this session we are going to learn about between operator in SQL. Now SQL provides us with many such tools that help in retrieving useful information from all kinds of data. Sometimes we need to retrieve only a particular range of values from all the values of a tables column. For example, to retrieve the information about all the employees of a company born in a particular decade or year or let's say to find the salaries of all those employees in a particular range, you need a tool for that. Now SQL between operator helps in performing these activities and is an integral part of this query language. So in today's session we are going to discuss about the between operator in detail with its syntax and execution in MySQL Workbench. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's topic. So as you can see MySQL Workbench has started and before getting into the execution but let us just quickly understand what is between operator in SQL. Now the SQL between operator is used to test whether an expression is within a range of values or not. This operator is inclusive so it includes only the start and end values of the range and the values can be textual, numerical type or date type. Now between operator can be used with select, insert, update as well as the delete command. So to get a clear picture of how this operator works, let us get into the syntax of it. Now the syntax is followed as select column names from table name where column name between range start and range ends. So the columns to be retrieved are specified after the select statement and the, and the table the columns are being retrieved from the specified is, the, in, the, is in the from statement and then we have the between operator which is used in the where clause. The column we want to apply the range condition on is specified with the column name parameter and the starting value of the range of values is specified in the range start parameter and the ending value in the range end parameter. So now that we have understood how exactly the between operator works, let us get into some examples and understand its execution part. So let us take an example to understand the SQL between operator. So I'm taking the new employees uh, as the example here. So let me just display the values for that. I'm using the select operator select star from new employees. Let us execute the statement. So the new employees uh, table has various columns such as employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hiring date, job ID, salary, manager ID, department ID. That's it. So right. Now we'll take a simple example uh, to understand the between operator. So let's say if you want to retrieve the ID and name of the employees with IDs in the range, let's say now we have IDs up to range like 198, 200, 201. So let us take uh, the range between 110 and let's say 170. Then we'll use the following query as select employee ID, comma first name, from table that is new employees use the where condition where employee id between is the keyword 110 and 170 so let us execute this and we'll see the output 
So as you can see, it will display the records of all those employees whose employee ID lies between the range that is 110 and 170. Now, if any employee who is having their employee ID as 110, even their values are also included in the resultant set. And similarly, if any employee has 170 in their as their employee ID, even their data will be in the resultant set. Now, in the table, we do not have any employee who is having the employee ID as 170. So we do not have their information now. So in this case, it will only display only the details of all those employees who is having the employee ID range in 110 and 170 and 170. Well, moving ahead, uh, let us take next another example. Now we can use the order by statement also to sort the result based on some columns. Now let's say if you uh, want to retrieve the details of all those employees with salary ranging from 35,000 to let's say 75,000. And in order to sort this result based on the salary, we'll use the following query as select. I want to display all the details. So I'm using the star operator, select star from new employee where salary between 35,000 and let us take, uh, let's say 55,000, right? And I'll use the order by salary so that it will display the values of all their salaries in the ascending order. So let us execute and we'll see the output. So as you can see, there are only uh, five employees in our new employees table. Uh, for example, Renske Ladwig, who's working as a clerk, is having salary 36,000, which is in the bracket of 35,000 and 55,000. Similarly, we have Diana Lawrence, whose salary is 42,000. Similarly, we have Jennifer Wallen, whose salary is 44,000 and so on. So in general, we use the between operator to find the range of values. Like for example, we are finding the salary range, right? So in a similar way, we can use the between operator to find uh, the range between two given values of a particular column. Now, similarly, we can use the not operator with between uh, as well. Now we can also use the not operator with the between operator to select the values that do not belong to that specified range. Now, instead of using between, if I mention the not between keyword here, it will basically display all those records of employees whose salary is not in the range of 35,000 and 55,000. Now it will display the records of all those employees like if you take Herman Bear whose salary is 10,000 which is not in the bracket or in the range of 35,000 and 55,000. Similarly, it will display the records of all those employees whose salary is not in between that range which is 35,000 and 55,000. In this way, you can use the not between keyword as well which will exclude uh, the results that are not in the given range. Now you can use the uh, between operator with the date values as well. Now when using the between with dates or the date time values, we need to remember to enclose the date in single inverted commas as otherwise the query will return a syntax error. So let us take an example here. Let's say if I want to retrieve the details of all those employees whose hiring date is in between let's say 2000 and 2007. Now as you can see our hiring date is between like 2005, 2004, 2002 and similarly etc right so in that in that case i want to display all those employee details whose hiring date was in between 2000 and 2007 so in that case the following query would be select star from new employees again which will display all the records where higher date between mention the inverted commas so i'll take from 1st january 2000 and 31st December 2007, right? So let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. So it will display uh, me the records of all those employees who have their hiring date in between this range, which is January 1st, 2000 and 31st December 2007. So in this way, you can use the between operator with the date values as well. Right, moving ahead, uh, now we can use the between operator with the text values as well. Uh, between operator can also be used with the character data types. Uh, like for example, while using any text values, we need to remember to again enclose the data in single inverted commas. Otherwise, it, it will uh, return a syntax error. So let us take an example here. Let's say uh, we want to retrieve all the employee details and along with their names belonging to a range from let's say alphabets A and J. 
that means we want the details of all those employees whose name is in between the first letter that is a and the letter j in that case the following query would be select star from new employees where i'm taking first name right first name between letter a and letter j enclose them in the inverted commas and we'll see the output now so let us also uh, order we'll use the order by statement so that we'll have in ascending order i think there is a no need for that so we'll just directly uh, execute this so as you can see it will display the records of all those employees uh, whose name is in the range uh, with starting letter a and the starting letter j now you can see donald o'connell whose first name starts with d right so it is in the range of a and j it will it lies between a and j and similarly we have herman we have alexander and david guy himuro etc so in this way you can use uh, the between operator to find the values in a particular range which have only text uh, data types and that brings us to the end of today's session guys that was a quick tutorial on how to use the between operator in sql if you remember all the sql between operator rules and syntaxes you can easily customize your queries to retrieve the type of information that you want this tool along with other sql tools enables us to write different kinds of essential queries now this between operator is generally used to find uh, the values within a certain range for example you can find the salaries of the employees within a certain brackets you can also find the marks of the students in a particular range and similarly you can find the details of the products uh, which lie in a certain range so in all these cases you can use the between operator as per your requirement so now that you know about the between operator it is time for you to start using the between operator along with other sql commands clauses and operators to query your our database tables in today's session we'll have a detailed comparison between the where and having clause now let's say you are navigating through a huge database and you wish to display only certain records that satisfy a particular condition now carrying this uh, search process is extremely difficult and is also time taking now in order to save time and uh, make your search easier we use the where and having clause which is used to explicitly filter out only those records that meet the condition specified by the user more on that soon firstly let us discuss the agenda for today's session we'll start the tutorial by understanding what is sql where clause and then we'll discuss what is sql having clause and then we'll have a detailed in comparison between where and having clause and finally we we'll look at the syntax and implement the execution part in mysql workbench so let us now dive into today's topic so firstly we'll discuss what is where clause the sql where clause is used to specify a condition while fetching the data from more than one table or by joining with multiple tables if the given condition is satisfied then only it returns a specific value from the table now we can use the where clause to filter the records and fetch only the necessary records from our database the where clause is not only used in the select statement but it is also used in the update delete etc let us now understand the syntax the syntax is simple and is followed as select column 1 column 2 so on from table name where condition let us understand with an example consider the employee table here which is having various columns such as id name age city and salary now let's say if i want to uh, find the uh, employee who is having the maximum salary in this table and for that i'll a uh, write a query stating select star from employee where salary is greater than 50000 now if you implement this query it will basically show those records which is having salary more than 50000 now if you look into the table abhay kumar whose id is uh, 1175 is having 52600 uh, which is greater than 50000 so in this way where basically uh, meets the condition that is set by the user Let us now understand what is having clause in SQL. The having clause is generally used along with the group by clause, and having clause is used to filter the results obtained by the group by clause based on some specific condition. Having clause is quite similar to that of where clause as both are used to filter records in SQL, but where clause cannot be used with the aggregate functions like count, max, sum, and etc., which is why having clause is needed. and that is the reason we use the having clause 
let us not understand the syntax the syntax is also similar you have to mention the having keyword here instead of where and the syntax is followed as select column one column two from table name group by column one column two so on having and mention the condition now group by clause is used to arrange the data into groups and having clause is used in the column operations and it basically uh, group all the identical data and gives you the condition that is specified by the u let us understand this with an example again consider the same employee table here which is having id name age city and salary now as we know we have to use a uh, aggregate function so i'm using the aver average function here and since the having clause also uses a group by um, so that is the reason i'm also using the group by now let's say if i want to find the average salary of all the employees from different cities then the following query would be select city average salary from employee group by city now when i perform this query the this will be the following output where it will show the resultant set of all the cities and their average salary now we have new delhi that is being repeated twice which is two records and we have ghaziabad which is two records now new delhi has uh, two records which is having salary as 36000 and 38000 now if you consider the average it is basically 37000 and similarly for ghaziabad we have three records which have salaries 46500 for 2600 52600 now when you calculate the average it is showing as 47233 now, now that you have applied this, now let us have the having condition here. Now, let's say if I want to uh, find the average salary of all those employees from different cities, who is having average salary greater than 40,000. Now, in this case, if I implement this query, this will be the following output. As you can see, both Ghaziabad and Noida has the average salary more than 40,000, that is 47,233 and 48,000. So, in this way, you can use the SQL having clause as well. Let us now look at the differences between these uh, two clauses that is SQL where and having clause. Now SQL where clause basically filters the individual rows in the table based on the specific condition. Whereas the having clause uh, filters groups instead of one row at a time. Now as discussed earlier where clauses can be used with select update delete statement whereas the having uh, clause can be used only with the select statement. Now, where comes before group by, which means that where clause filters rows uh, performing aggregate calculations and having comes after group by, which means the having clause filters rows after performing aggregate uh, calculations. So consequently, having is a slower than where in terms of uh, complexity and efficiency as well. Now, as discussed earlier, where clause uh, cannot contain aggregate functions and having clause can contain aggregate functions such as count, sum, average, etc. Now SQL where is considered as a pre-filter because it performs the row operations first and having clause is considered as a post-filter because it performs the column operations after grouping the data. So now that we have understood about these both types of SQL clauses, let us jump into MySQL Workbench for the execution part. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and on the left side, you can view the Simply Code database, which is having different tables such as customer, department, employee, employees one, and etc. Now to perform the where and having clause statements, we'll use the employees once uh, table. So let me just display the records present in that table. So I'll use the select operator, select star from employee, employee one table. Click on the execute button. As you can see, the employees one table has various columns such as employee ID, first name, last name of the employee, their email ID, phone numbers, hiring date, job ID, salary manager ID and department ID. So firstly, let us discuss about the where uh, clause or basically where condition. So let's say if we want to fix the records of all those employees from these employees one table whose salary is uh, let's say less than 5000 and they belong to department 30. So in that case the following query would be select star from employees table 1 where salary 
is less than 5000. Now I'm using the AND operator, which is basically a logical operator. So whenever you're performing the WHERE condition, you can use the logical operators and comparison operators, of, uh, logical operators such as AND, OR, BETWEEN, etc. And the comparison operators like less than, equal to, less than, greater than, equals to, etc. So I'm using the AND operator here and department ID is equals to 30. So let me execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, there are a total of four employees uh, whose salary is less than 50,000 and they belong to the department 30. Now you can also, as discussed earlier, you can also perform the update operations uh, using the where uh, clause as well. Now let's say if I want to update the salary of uh, employee who is having employee ID 116 as let's say 10,000 then the query would be update table name that is employee 1 set salary equals to 10,000 where employee ID is equals to uh, let's say 116 and the employee name is Shelly Baida so I'm just uh, taking that example so let me just execute this query so as you can see our query has been successfully executed so let me just verify whether it is executed or not so I'll use the select statement select star from employee 1 where employee ID equals to 160 so let me run this query and we'll see the output so as you can see the employee uh shelly baida who's having employee id 116 uh, and their salary has been changed into 10,000 here successfully so in this way you can use the uh, where clause as well you can also use uh, the where clause for delete also now let's say if i want to delete uh the details of the employees who's having employee ID as 120 let's say then I'll use the delete statement delete from employee 1 where employee ID is equals to 127 so let me just execute this query So as you can see, our query has been successfully uh, executed here and the details of the employee who's having employed as 127 has been deleted successfully. So in this way, you can use the where uh, clause to perform various operations such as select, update, delete, etc. using comparison and logical operators. Let us now understand about the having clause. For that, let me take an example. Let's say if you want to display the records of all those employees present in different departments, and whose average salary is uh, greater than let's say 5000 so in that case the following query would be select now i want to display the department id so i'm taking the department id column average salary from employees 1 now as you know while using the uh, having clause, we have to use the group by uh, statement as well. So I'll group by all the department IDs since we have multiple department IDs present in the table. Department ID having average salary greater than 5000. $5,000 okay uh, let me just display the output so our query has been successfully executed and as you can see here uh, it is displaying all the different departments uh, and their average salaries as well here now I can use different aggregate functions here as well if I want to count uh, the number of employees in each department I can take the count function so let me just use it count employee ID which will uh, basically count all the total employees in the uh, different departments so let me just execute this statement so as you can see it will display the count of all the employees that are present in different departments and having 
average salary more than 50,000. So in this way, you can use the having uh, clause as well. Now we can also combine both the where condition as well as the uh, having condition as well. Now we can combine the where and having clause together in a select query. In this case, the where clause is used first to filter individual rows and then the rows are then grouped to perform the aggregate calculations and finally the having clause is used to filter the grouped data that is the identical groups that are having the same values. Now as discussed earlier, uh, we have to use the where condition before the group by. So I am just taking the where clause before the group by and let's say if I want to display only those uh, <coughs> departments that are having more than 80 as the department ID. So department ID greater than 80. So let me just display. So as you can see, it will display only those records where the department ID is more than 80, that is 90, 100 and 110 and the details of all the employees whose average salary is more than 500. Now I can also use the order by uh, statement here in order to uh, mention all these records in a uh, systematic manner that is an ascending or descending order. So order by department ID. So let us execute this query. So as you can see, it will uh, showcase the department ID values in the ascending order that is 90, 100 and 110. So in this way, you can use the having uh, clause as well in SQL. So what is a subquery? An SQL subquery is a query which is written inside another query. A subquery is usually added within the where clause of another SQL select statement. In a subquery, the outer query's result is dependent on the result set of the inner query and that is the reason why subqueries are also called as the nested queries. A subquery is also called as an inner query or inner select while the statement containing the main query or the parent query is called as the outer query or outer select query statement. Now the inner query executes first before its uh, parent query or the outer query so that the results of an inner query can be passed to the outer query. Let us understand this uh, with an example here. Now consider this syntax over here which is followed as select employee name department from employee where salary equals to select maximum salary from employee. Now select employee name department from employee is the outer query and the rest part is the inner query. Now when the above query is applied to the given employee table, here the subquery is executed first which select the maximum salary from the employee table. Then the resultant is the passed onto the where clause of the outer query. Now this outer query is executed which selects the rows, in this case the employee name and the department from the employee table where the salary is equals to the resultant of the subquery which is the, it selects the maximum salary from the employee table returns the final result. So let us now look at the types of subqueries uh, that are used in SQL. Now subqueries in SQL are majorly used with insert, delete, select, update statement along with the comparison operators like less than equals to greater than or equals to between in and etc. Uh, subqueries are used to execute a query dependent on the outcome of another query and it allows the user to uh, fetch the results without writing two distinct queries and it is time saving as well. So now that we have understood what is subqueries and its different types, let us jump into MySQL workbench uh, to execute the various subqueries that are used in SQL. So as you can see MySQL Workbench has started and we have various tables in our database simply code such as customer, department, employee, employee1 and so on. Firstly let us discuss the subqueries using the select statement. Now in SQL in most of the cases we use the select statement to perform the subqueries. So for that let us consider the table employees1 here. So let me just display the records that are present in the table. For that I am using the select statement. Select star from employee. One. So let us run the query and see the uh, records. So as you can see the employees one table has various columns such as employee ID, first name, last name, email, their phone number, hiring date, job ID, salary, manager ID and department ID. Now let us understand this concept with the help of an example uh, for executing the select statement using the subqueries. Now let's say if I want to find all those employees whose salary is less than the average salary of all the employees that is present in the employees1 table. 
So in this scenario, we'll use a subquery to get those employees whose salary is less than the average salary from the employee table. And the following query would be select. Now, since I want to display all their records, I'm using the star operator from employees one where salary is less than and within the parenthesis we have to mention the subquery that is select average salary from employees one table so let us execute the statement and see the output Uh, there is a render in the code. Just let me check. So yeah, I forgot to mention the parenthesis here. Uh, make sure you uh, write the subqueries always within the parenthesis. Otherwise, it will show an error here. So now let us understand this query and let us break this query statement to understand in a better way. Now here the query to find out the uh, average salary is the subquery here. That is the select average salary from the employee one table. So let me just execute this statement. So we have the average salary that is 6708.66. So now the outer query takes the result of this inner query, which is basically the sub query and executes the remaining SQL command based on the result. So the sub query first returns the average salary that is 6708. And this result is passed on to the outer query, which fetches the details of all those employees who's having salary less than the average salary that is 6708. So when I execute this statement, it will display the employees of all those uh, records who's having salary less than 6,708, that is uh, 2,600, 4,400 and so on in this way. So in this way, you can use the select statement to perform the subqueries in SQL. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Now, other than uh, the SQL select statement, SQL subqueries can also be used with the insert statement. In the insert statement, the data returned from the subquery is used to insert the data from one table, that is the existing table into another new table. Now, let us consider the employee table here. So let me just display the records. Select star from employee. Uh, let me just display the records now. So the employee table has various fields such as employee ID, employee name, age, designation, city, total salary, date of joining, department ID and bonus. Now if I want to copy this uh, data from the employee table into a new table, let's say employee new table. So I'll I can use the subqueries with the insert statement here. So let me just create a new table here and the query is followed as create table employee new. Uh, the employee new table has the employee ID, employee name, designation, total salary, that's it. So I'm taking primary key as employee ID as it uniquely identifies the each record in the table. So let me just execute the statement. Now I'll use the select statement. Employee new. Now, as you can see, the employee new table has various fields, employee ID, employee name, designation, and total salary but we do not have any values that are present in the employee new table. So we'll use the subquery using the insert statement to into va insert values into it. Now let's say if I want to insert the values from the employee table, that is the existing table whose salary is uh, greater than 30,000. So I want to fetch only those records from the employee table into the employee new table whose salary is greater than 40,000. So the following query would be, insert into the new table that is employee new select now since we are uh, only concerned with the employee id employee name designation and total salary we'll mention only those columns employee employee id employee name designation total salary from the previous existing table that is our employee table where total salary 
I'm using the uh, in operator here and within the parenthesis I'll write this subquery that is select total salary from employee where total salary is greater than 40,000. Close the parenthesis and let us execute this statement now. So our statement has been successfully executed. So let me just display the records again. Select star from the table employee new. So as you can see, it will uh, insert only those records for all those employees, total salary is greater than 40,000. So we have only two employees, Kiran and Ajay, who's having salary as 50,000 and 60,000. Now the insert statement basically specifies that new data is added to this table, that is the employee new table. And as we are copying all the data from the employee table, which is our existing table to the new employee new table, there is no need to specify the column name in the insert statement. Otherwise you would need to mention the column name in which you want to add the data. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that the table structure has to remain the same. Even if the column names are a bit different, the column data types have, must remain the same in order to insert the data using subqueries from one table to another table. So in this way you can write subqueries using the uh, insert statement as well. Also in a similar way, you can use the update as well as the delete statement to modify the existing data that is present in the table. To know more about it, make sure to check out our SQL full course for beginners 2022 on our channel. So that brings us to the end of today's session guys. That was all about subqueries in SQL. To create and for the execution part of the functions, let us jump into MySQL Workbench. So as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and before uh, understanding the syntax of how to create a function, let us just understand what a function is actually is. Now a function in SQL is basically a set of SQL statements that performs a specific task. Now, if you have to repeatedly write a uh, larger SQL queries to perform a task, you can simply create a function for that. Now, next time, instead of rewriting the whole SQL query, you can just simply call that function to get the desired result. Now, these SQL functions are basically programs either developed by the user or already provided by the SQL system. Now, we have several inbuilt functions or the system defined functions like aggregate functions, string functions, date functions, etc. Now, other than that, we can create a user defined function as well. So firstly, let us go through the syntax uh, on how to create a function. So the syntax is followed as delimiter, which I'm explaining in a while when we are creating the actual functions. So let us keep it aside for a while. Create function, function name and inside the parenthesis mention the parameters. Now you can create a number of parameters as per your choice. Uh, the thing is you have to mention the parameter name as well as its data type returns data type deterministic begin and inside that we have to write the code that is the actual code for the function and use the end so let me just explain how this syntax works firstly we are specifying the name of the stored function that we want to create after the create function keyword next we have to list all the parameters of the stored function inside the parenthesis followed by the function name and then we are specifying the data type of the return value in the return statement which can be valid using any data type here as well, like int, char, var, char, etc. And then we are specifying if a function is deterministic or not. Now, a deterministic function always results, returns the same uh, value for the same input parameters, whereas a non-deterministic function returns different results for the same input parameters. So let me just explain this in an example. Now, if I take a function xyz and I am uh, specifying a parameter, let's say p function, so it will always result the same answer as long as its input that is P is the same. And finally, we'll write the code in the body section after the begin uh, keyword. So this code will be written uh, in the body of the stored function in the begin end block. Now inside the body section, you need to specify at least one return statement. This return statement basically returns a value to the calling program. Now, whenever the return statement is reached, this execution of this function is terminated automatically. So let us now understand this with an example. 
uh, we have a query here which says like a uh, create a function bonus status which has one parameter salary of type car and returns var car of size 20. Now we have to use the following operations in the statement to create this function. The first one is return eligible for bonus as the statement if salary is greater than 35,000 else return not eligible. So let us now write the syntax for this. So let me just switch to another tab and we'll write the query here. First write the keyword that is create function. Now the function is bonus status. Inside the parenthesis mention the parameter. Now I'm taking parameter as salary here, which is of character. I'm giving size as 20. Close the parenthesis. Now mention the return a return statement that is it returns var car of size 20 deterministic is the keyword that we are using here begin and inside this we have to write our uh, main query now the query that we have earlier discussed is that if salary is greater than 35,000 then return eligible for bonus eligible for bonus and close the parenthesis else return else or uh, return inside the uh, parenthesis not eligible mention the double quotes and close the parenthesis and put a semicolon now that's it that is the end of our body so now i'll use the end if statement which will basically close the uh, body of our function and then i'll use the end uh, operator here with the dollar sign and that is it this is basically our uh, code for it to create a function so let us now execute the statement and see the output now when i execute the statement it will throw an error and this is where we'll use the uh, sql delimiter now as you know when we write an sql statement you use the semicolon after the sql statement uh, like if you write a two separate statement for example uh, if i say select star from i'm taking an example as employee and i'm taking another example as select star from orders now when i execute this query it will throw an output because i haven't selected which query i want to execute now for that we'll place an individual semicolon for at the end of our statement right so in a similar way uh, mysql uh, uses the delimiter function to separate statement and executes each statement separately now however a function consists of a multiple statement separated by a semicolon so if you used to define a function that contains semicolon characters then it will not treat the whole function as a single statement but many statements therefore you must redefine the delimiter temporarily so that you can pass the whole function as a single statement so for that we'll use the delimiter here so let me just incorporate the delimiter here you have to use delimiter with the help of a uh, double slash or double dollar sign here we have to specify at the beginning as well as the end delimiter and i'll mention two double so that's it now our code is complete and let us execute the statement now so our query has been successfully executed now to see whether our function is created or not let us just refresh the schema here and I, as you can see in function section you can see bonus status which is the function we have created earlier has been created successfully so let us now just verify whether our function is working or not so i'll just uh, write a simple query as select bonus status uh, let us take 40000 as our example so let me just execute this statement and we'll see the output 
So as you can see, uh, the condition which I have specified is if the salary is greater than thirty-five thousand, then the employee is eligible for bonus. Now, since we have taken uh, the salary as forty thousand, it is showing as eligible for bonus. Now, similarly, let's say if I take uh, twenty thousand, and if I execute the statement, it will definitely show me not eligible. So, as you can see, it will show not eligible for bonus. So in this way you can create and use a different function by passing certain parameters to get the desired result of your choice. So now that you've created a function you can query an already existing table by calling that function in an SQL statement by passing certain parameters into that function. Let us understand this with an example. Consider the employee table here. So let me just display the records in that employee table. So as you can see the employee table has various columns such as employee id employee name age designation city total salary date of joining and department id now using this already created functions let's say if i want to know whether the employee is eligible for the bonus or not using their total salary i'll use the function and to achieve that i'll simply use the select statement to display the records so let me just write the query here select I want to fetch the employee ID, employee name, their total salary. So I'm mentioning the columns employee ID, employee name, their total salary, now I'll call the function here that is our uh, bonus status and inside the function I'm going to pass the uh, parameter which is the total salary on which we'll know whether the employee is eligible for bonus or not. So I'm taking as total salary from the table that is employee. So let us execute the statement and see the output. So there was a mistake in the function name. So let us execute the statement now and we'll see the output. So as you can see, based on the total salary and the function that we have created earlier, it will result whether or not the employee is eligible for bonus or not. Now you can see the employee Rahul who's having salary 40,000, which is above 35,000. So in this case, it is showing as eligible for bonus. Now, if you consider another employee Varun, whose salary is 30,000, which is less than 35,000. So that is why it is showing as not eligible. In this way and for the rest of the employees also it will show the uh, same as per the condition that we have specified in our function that is the salary should be greater than 35,000. So in this way you can simply call a function using its name and provide the parameter and get the uh, required output. Now the other important thing to notice here is that we have used a function as a column as a parameter in our select query. Now we have passed the parameter that is total salary into our function to, that is bonus status and the function returned a result of this calculation. Now in this way SQL function can be very useful as we have avoided writing complex calculations in a select query and also we can reuse this function later in any other queries as well. And that brings us to the end of today's session guys. I hope you understood how to create a user defined function and in today's session we are going to talk about another important function that is conversion functions in SQL. In this tutorial we are going to cover about the cache and conversion which are most commonly used conversion functions in SQL. More on that soon but before we get started if you are new to the channel and haven't subscribed already consider getting subscribed to our channel simply code to stay updated with all the latest tech content and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further ado let's get started with today's topic. Firstly, let us discuss the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what is cast function and then we'll discuss what is convert function and next we'll have a detailed comparison between the cast and convert function and see how they are different from each other. And finally, we'll execute these two functions in MySQL Workbench using various examples. So let us get started with today's topic. So firstly, what is cast function? The cast function in SQL is one of the most commonly used conversion function which allows the user to convert from one data type to another. It is very useful for concatenating results from various data types. Now this conversion can 
be either a single expression or the values from the columns in the SQL tables. It also allows the user to perform calculations on two different data types as well. Now using cast, it does not change the data completely in the database. This conversion of data from one data type to another is only valid while the query is running and is not permanent. That is the changes to the query is only done on a temporary basis. However, it is possible to convert and insert into a new column or table as well. Let us now understand the syntax of cast function. The syntax is followed as cast expression as data type length. Expression here represents the data which we want to convert and the data type specifies uh, the data type which we want to convert the value. And finally, the length of the data which is optional, you can give it as per your requirement uh, for only certain uh, data types such as ncar or varchar. Now let us consider an example here which says select cast 76.87 as end. Here I am taking a string value which is 76.87 and I am converting this data type into the int value. Now the output is as expected that is 76 which is an integer value. In this way you can use the cast function to change one data type to another data type in real time. Next, let us discuss about what is convert function. The convert function converts an expression in one data type to corresponding value in other data type. Now, you might be confused that the convert is different from the cast function. Convert is similar to that of cast function as well. While the functionality of both these conversion functions is same, the only main difference is the syntax and the usage. So you can Specify the format to convert as well as the data type in the convert function and it is a very useful function especially for converting the strings to date formats and the syntax is followed as convert expression comma data type. Now again the data type parameter defines the target data which is to be converted now and the data type parameter can take data types as an input such as big int, small int, decimal, numeric values float values, character values, variable characters, in char, etc. And the length is optional parameter which specifies the target data type length and the default of this parameter is around 10 or 20. Now we also have the expression this parameter specifies the value in which we want to convert to another data type. So let us consider an example here which is select convert 2022.06.07 as date. Now this is basically a string value or you can say a part of a decimal value and I'm changing this string or character into date format which is 2022-06-07 which is converted into date format. So in this way you can use the convert function as well. Let us now understand the difference between the cast and convert function in SQL. Now both these SQL conversion functions are row functions which are capable of typecasting column values or an expression from one data type to another and the functionality of both of the functions are almost similar but there are some major differences in them as well. Now both the cast, function, cast and convert function are obviously are used to convert one data type to another data type and one of the main difference is the syntax. Now the syntax of cast is very simple. It includes the value to convert and the type of resulting data type. It has as as a keyword to separate the data type from the value and there is an option to express the length which is the integer that specifies the length of the target data type. And on the other hand the convert syntax mentions the resulting data type first along with the optional length. There is another expression and another optional parameter called style in the convert function which is only specific to the SQL server database. Now this style allows formatting the data type and specifies how the convert function should translate or format the data type. Now apart from these there are some certain differences as well. The cast is an ANSI standard function that is cast is uh, considered as the American National Standard Institute's standard function. That means it is applicable to most of the SQL databases out there like PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariaDB, MongoDB, etc. On the other hand, conversion function is a specific function 
that is only restricted to mainly Microsoft SQL Server. Cache function is also a more portable function of these two. It means that the cache function can be used by many databases out there. And also cache is considered less powerful and less flexible than the convert function. And on the other hand, the convert function is generally considered as a flexible function, which allows more flexibility and is mostly preferred to use for date time values, etc. Convert is also useful in formatting the data's format as well. And finally, cache function is used to convert a data type without a specific format, whereas the convert function does converting and formatting data types simultaneously. Now, for example, cast cannot convert a date time to specific format, whereas the convert function can do that. So these were some major differences between the cast and convert function. I know you might be confusing at first because there isn't much difference between uh, these two functions. And also there is no difference in the performance of these two functions as well. So it's just a matter of preference to choose which function to use. You can choose to use cast when you work with multiple relational databases and the syntaxes are pretty standardized, easy to remember. And since it is an ANSI standard function, you can use it in any database as well. On the other hand, if you need to specify the output styling, we can use the convert function for that. And even though the style is optional and is limited to certain uh, databases like SQL Server. The cast function is often is used to preserve decimal values and places while converting between decimal numeric values, whereas the convert function cannot do this. So it is a matter of requirement when to use both these functions and it is up to the user to choose between these both conversion functions. So now that we have understood about these Two functions, let us jump into MySQL Workbench for execution part. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. As you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and we can now work on our conversion functions. Firstly, let us discuss about the cast function in SQL. So let us take an example for this. Let's say if I want to convert a string value into an integer data type, then the following query would be select cast and within the parenthesis, let's say I have a string value which is 45.68 and I want to change this into int data type. So I'll mention int as int which is the keyword we use in the cast function. So let us now execute the statement and see the output. Now it will show me an error that's because the in data type is not supported in MySQL workbench if you're working on cast function. So instead of int, you can take the signed function, which is basically a sister group of the int data type. So you can take the signed integer as well. So let us now display this value. So as you can see, it will return me the 46, which will round off the decimal value, which is 45.68 to 46. Now let us take another example. Let's say I have a string value. I want to change it into date format. So then the following query would be select cast. So let me just uh, take some uh, string values like 22 comma 9 comma 24 as date. So let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. So as you can see, the string value that we have taken here that such as 22924 has been changed into date format, which is 2022, which is the year nine is the month and 24 is the date, which is in the format of year, month and date. Now, if you pass the uh, values here, which is not in the range of the function that of the data type that you have specified in this function, for example, instead of nine, if I take 14 and let's say if I want to pass this function, then it will show me a null value. That's because the value 14 is not in the range of the date value. That is 14. There are only uh, like 12 months, right? From so the values it can take is from only from one to 12. Now, if you pass other than this range, then it will show an error. Now, similarly, if I want to uh, specify this value into date time function, then I can simply mention the date time function data type as well. So let us see the output. 
So it will show me the output in the form of a uh, date as well as the time format here. So let us now understand another example. Now as discussed earlier, a cast function not only changes the data type of an expression, it can also change the data type of the column values in the table as well. So for that, let us take an example for this. Let me consider the restaurant orders table here. Now I have this price column which is in decimal values. Now let's say if I want to round off these values into integer values, then the following query would be select cast, mention the parameter which is price as sign from the table name that is restaurant orders. So let us execute and see the output. So as you can see, the prices are being changed into the integer values now and the decimal values have been rounded off. So similarly, if I want to mention the columns, uh, I can mention them as well. So I'll take the item name, the previous price and the change price. So I'm giving this change price as the new price as a new column. So let us now execute this statement and see the output. So as you can see, it will display uh, the item name, the price and the new price of these items. Now, as you can see, the price of the Tandoori Mix Grill, which is 11.95 has been rounded off to an integer value that is 12. And similarly, all the other values as well. Now, if you scroll down a bit, as you can see, we have a price which is 0 0.5 and the new price is changed into 0, which is not acceptable, right? Now, the price has should be of a value. Now, instead of sign, if you can take the decimal data type uh, wherein you can mention this and it will change the value into the nearest value of the decimal value. Now, as you can see here, the 0 0.5 has been rounded off to 1 here and similarly 0 0.8, which is more than 0 0.5 is also rounded to 1. So in this way, you can use the cast function to change the uh, data type according. So now that we have covered the cast functions, let us now see a few data type conversions here, which will help you understand the usage of the conversion convert function as well. Now, firstly, let us start with the decimal data type. Now, as the date, as the name suggests, decimal produces a decimal value and has two optional parameters, which is basically M and D, where M is the maximum number of digits that you want to show in the resultant table, or which is also known as precision. And D is the number of digits after the decimal points from the scale. Are you understand with an example here? So the following query would be select convert. And inside the convert, uh, mention the expression. So I'm taking the value as let's say 21.345. And I want to change this value into decimal data type. And inside the decimal, uh, I'm mentioning the parameters. So I'm taking as let's say, seven as the total number of digits that I, I will display and I'm taking only two decimal values that I want to display after the decimal point. All right. So let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output. So as you can see, it will uh, show me only the uh, two values that is three, five after the decimal point. So the output is 21.35. Now the value that you've taken is 21.345, which is converted into decimal uh, data type format, which is 21.35. Basically, it will round off the value of 345 into 35. Now, similarly, you can convert the values into date uh, and time data types as well in using the convert function. So let us consider the example for that as well. So select convert. Uh, let's say now I have a value 10 comma 25. as date time data type. So we'll convert this into date time uh, data type. So let us see the output. So as you can see the value, the string value, which was specified here as 11, 10, 25, it will be changed into the date time data type that is 2011, 10, 25 and the uh, time as well. And similarly, you can use the convert function to change a number or a string value into year type as well. So let's say I'm taking a value 22 and I want to change this uh, string value into year data type. So the following query would be select convert 22 as year. 
So as you can see, the output, the value, the string value that we have taken as 22 has been now converted into 2022, which is in the format of year data type. Now, similarly, you can convert a string value into the time as well. So let's say I'm taking a value like let's say 0,9,17,26 and I'm specifying the data type as time. So let us see the output for this as well. So as you can see, the string value that we have taken as uh, 091726, which is basically a number and we want to convert that number into time data type. So it will display the value as 91726, which is in the format of hours, minutes and seconds. And that brings us to the end of today's session, guys. That was all about the MySQL conversion functions. We have studied and understood what convert and cast function does, how exactly it works its parameters with some examples. Now you can try converting the value in every valid data type using these two functions that is convert and cast. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and informative. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what is commit in SQL and discuss why we use commit. And then we'll understand what is rollback in SQL and discuss why we use the rollback command in SQL. And then we'll have a detailed comparison between commit and rollback and see how they are different from each other. And finally, we'll execute both these commands in MySQL Workbench. So what is commit and rollback in SQL? Commit and rollback are the commonly used transaction control language commands or TCL commands used in SQL. These TCL commands or transaction control language commands are basically used for managing and controlling the transactions in a database to maintain consistency. And it also helps a user manage all the changes made by the DML commands for maintaining its transactions. TCL lets the statements get grouped into a logical transactions. Now to understand more about commit and rollback, it is important to understand what exactly are transactions. Now a transaction is basically a block of SQL query or set of SQL statements executed on the information and data stored in the database management system. So any transaction when made happens temporarily or permanently in database. Now a user needs TCL commands to make these changes permanent or temporary. For example, if you're creating a record or updating a record or even deleting a record from the table, then you're performing a transaction on that table. So it is important to control these transaction to ensure that the data integrity is maintained and it also handles the database errors effectively. So generally you will incorporate many SQL queries into a group and you will execute all of them together as a part of a transaction. Next, let us discuss about the commit command in SQL. The commit command in SQL is a transaction command that is used to save all the changes made by a particular transaction in RDBMS since the last commit or rollback command is used. It signifies the end of a successful transaction in an SQL database. Now generally the commit command is used after a data manipulation language or DML operations like insert, delete and update transactions. Now, when you perform a DML operation without a commit statement, the changes are only visible to you. Now you can use a select statement and check the updated records from this modified data. But once you use a commit command after a transaction, the changes in the table or database are visible to other database users as well. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that the database cannot be restored to its previous state once the commit command is executed. All the transaction commands obeys the basic principles of asset properties in SQL and the syntax for commit in SQL is followed as you the syntax is basically the is uses just one keyword that is commit and you can use this commit uh, using various DML operators like insert update delete statements as well. Now let us say for example I have an employee table and from that I want to delete an employee a record whose ID is 110. Now when I perform this query, it will delete the employee ID 110. And then if I perform a commit operation, then it will permanently save that transaction. That is, it will completely delete the record from the table. Next, let us discuss about the rollback in SQL. The rollback in SQL is a command that is used to revert changes performed by a transaction. 
Now, whenever a rollback command is used, it reverts all the changes since the last commit or rollback that we have made in our SQL table. The syntax is similar to that. It is includes just one keyword that is rollback and it is similarly used with the insert update delete statement. And let's say, for example, I am deleting a record whose ID is 105. And for some reasons, if I want that record back in my table, then I'll use the rollback command here, which will restore the uh, deleted record. That is the, the ID of the employee who's having as 105. So it will revert back the changes that were made in the database by bringing back the original state. Let us now understand some differences between commit and rollback. The commit is used to save the changes permanently in the database, whereas the rollback is used to undo the changes and restore its previous states. The commit statement is basically used after an intended transaction, which has been successfully completed. That is if you're performing any SQL operations or transaction in SQL. And if you're sure that if there is no changes to be made for that transaction, only then you have to use the commit statement. Whereas a rollback statement is used after a transaction is unsuccessful due to uh, any circumstances like system failure, etc. After executing commit command, any transaction can't be used for rollback, which we've discussed earlier. And on the other hand, after executing the rollback command, a transaction can be still modified and sent for commit again. So now that we've understood what commit and rollback are, let us jump into MySQL workbench for execution part. As you can see, MySQL workbench has started and now by default, MySQL automatically commits the changes permanently to the database. So in order to force MySQL not to commit changes automatically, we use a following statement here, which is followed as set auto commit to zero. So let me just display this. Uh, okay. It is successfully executed. Now what this basically does is it will not commit any changes permanently that were done prior to the database earlier or else you can click on edit option here and choose preferences and in preferences you'll find SQL execution under the SQL editor section. So you'll find an option which says new connections use auto commit mode. So if you find a tick here in this checkbox, make sure you untick before you proceed to uh, commit and rollback commands. So click on OK so that you are good to go now. So let me just consider uh, an, a table here to perform the commit and rollback commands here. So for that, I'm taking the employee one table as a reference. So let me just display the records from that table and I'll use the select statement for that. Select star from employee one. So let me execute this statement. So in our employee one, we have various columns such as employee ID, employee name, age, designation, city, total salary, date of joining and department ID. Now to commit the current transaction and make its changes permanent, we use the commit statement, right? So I'll use the commit command here and I'll execute this. So now basically what this does is uh, it will permanently or uh, save the changes that were done prior to this database that is database table that is the employee one table. So let me just display the values now. So now let us perform some transactions on this table. So as we discussed earlier, we can use any DML operators like insert, update or delete to perform operations using the commit and rollback command. So I'm going to use the update uh, command here. So I'm basically updating the salary of an employee. Uh, let's say Sanjana whose employee ID is 1013 whose total salary is 30,000. Now I want to update that salary as 35,000. So for that, I'm using the update statement, update the table name that is employee one set total salary as 35,000 where employee ID equals to 1030. Right. So let us execute this statement. So as you can see, one row has been affected and our query has been executed successfully. Let me just display the records again. So as you can see, uh, employee Sanjana whose employee ID is 1013, her sal a total salary has been changed to 35,000, which was earlier 30,000. Now let's say in future, I have this requirement where I want to have the original salary salary or the previous salary. Now for that, I can use the rollback here. 
So when I execute the rollback statement here and select this table again, the total salary has been changed to 30,000 again. So basically we have done a transaction where we have updated the total salary of the employee Sanjana to 35,000. And after that, we are again rolling back to its previous state that is again to 30,000. Now, similarly, you can perform uh, another transaction, let's say using the delete operation. Now, I want to delete all the records from this employee one table whose designation is, let's say, business analyst. Now, we have a total of business analyst uh, one, two, three, right? We have total three records. So, we'll be deleting all these records from the table. So, delete from employee one where designation equals to business analyst right so let me just execute this statement okay sorry the column name has been written wrong so that is why it is showing me as error so as you can see, our query has been successfully executed and it shows three rows are affected. That means all the records of the employees whose designation is business analyst have been deleted. See, as you can clearly see, there are no records of business analyst records, right? So again, I have this requirement where I want to get back the results or the records of the employees who are working as business analyst from this employee one table. So for that, I can simply use the rollback here. So we'll simultaneously perform two uh, transaction here. Firstly, we'll update this table again, and then we'll delete, which was already done. So now let me just roll back this statement again. So when I roll back this statement and uh, display the records from the table, as you can clearly see, the employee Sanjana, whose employee ID is 1013, her salary, which we have uh, set as 35,000 has been reverted back to 30,000 to its previous or original state. And uh, similarly, we have deleted uh, the records of employees whose designation is business analyst. And similarly, their records also have been reverted back. So in this way, you can use the uh, rollback command to get back to the current transaction and cancel it changes. Now let us take another scenario here. Now what if I perform a transaction before the commit command? So for that I'll take another another example where I'll update the age of an employee. Uh, let's say Rahul is employed is 1013 and his age is 26. I want to change it to 27. So I'll use another update statement here. Update employee one table set age equals to 27 so his previous age was 26 now i'm changing it to 27 where employee id is uh, 1011 all right so let me just execute the statement so it is successfully executed and we'll select the records so as you can see rahul's age has been changed to 27 from 26 now let's say if i commit this uh transaction all right so i'll just commit this transaction so basically you cannot make any further changes uh, to this record since we have committed uh, the transaction already so i'll perform the uh, two transactions again here which is basically updating the employee's total salary to 35000 and deleting all the records of employees whose designation is business analyst so let me just uh, execute this so as you can clearly see, all our uh, SQL queries has been successfully executed. So let me just display the table here now. So as you can clearly see that we, uh, the employee Sanjana who's having one uh, employee ideas 1013, her salary has been changed to 35,000. And we also have uh, no records of those employees whose designation is business analyst. And similarly, the first transaction which you have done, which is updating the salary of uh, employee Rahul, whose ID is 1011 to 27. Now, let's say if I want to roll back this trans, all these transactions. So let me just roll back here and we'll see what happens. So our rollback has been successfully executed. And let me just display the records again. 
Now all the changes done past the last commit will be reverted if we roll back a transaction. Since we have uh, performed two operations or transactions after commit statement, which is basically updating uh, the employee salary to thirty-five thousand and delete the records of employees whose designation is business analyst. Now clearly we can see that their records have been reverted back to their original state. So so like we have this employee name Sanjana whose salary was thirty thousand, which is we have changed to thirty five thousand, and since we have rolled back again to its previous state, it is thirty thousand. And similarly, we we have all the records of the business analyst as well. But if you look at here, we have changed the uh, employee's age here. Like we have taken Rahul's age as twenty seven, which was earlier twenty six, and we have changed that to twenty seven. But even after rolling back this, we haven't uh, got the original record that is. His age is twenty six. That's because we have already committed this transaction, so it will basically uh, not revert back to its previous state. So once the commit statement has executed the modification made by the transaction, it cannot be rolled back again. However, once the rollback statement is executed, the database reaches its previous state. So that brings us to the end of today's session, guys. now that was all about the commit and rollback uh, commands in sql so basically to ensure that the changes made by the transactions are permanently saved in the database we use the commit after the transaction successful completion in case the transaction faces any error while execution then to undo or revert the changes done by the transaction a rollback command is used now you might uh, get a doubt that where we have to use this and where this is applicable now if you are an sql developer or even a beginner who is working on a database let's say you are working on a database which has thousands of records and you are modifying let's say a uh, 100 records in that now due to some errors you want to revert back all the changes that you have made right so for that you will basically use the rollback function for that so in this way it will be helpful uh, for getting the records again back to its original state choose from over 300 in demand skills and get access to 1000 plus hours of video content for free visit skill up by simply learn click on the link in the description to know more skill developers who frequently work with large data sets and analyze enormous amounts of data find that they often need to query specific types now sql provides us with many such tools to accomplish this and one such operator is sql like which helps us to look at specific data types instead of the entire database this reduces the time and effort spent on any given task and gives people the opportunity to work more efficiently so in this tutorial on sql like operator we'll be learning how to query data to find specific patterns using the like operator in sql firstly let us understand what is sql like clause the like operator is used to find specific characters in a tables column It is also used to compare columns with the specified values. Together with the WHERE clause, it determines if a pattern matches specific values in a table. It uses wildcard characters, which are characters used to replace one or more characters in a string, to fulfill this purpose. You can also use LIKE when only a portion of the value in that table is known. Let us now understand the syntax. The syntax is simple. It is usually used with the SELECT command, and the syntax of this is followed as SELECT. column one column two so on up to column n from table name where column name like and pattern now basically the columns to be shown in the result table are specified after the select statement the column that is designed for pattern matching is specified in the where clause and the pattern forms from the specific row selection which is defined in the pattern parameter of the like operator now the like operator is case insensitive that means you can either give capital or small letters as well now multiple patterns can be specified with this operator using the and or or keywords as well and wild card characters are the most vital tools of this operator so let's go over what these are and how they are used with the like operator so what is wild card character now wild card characters are special symbols and characters used to represent one or more than one character in a string these are imperative to the like operator as this enable patterns to be specified that is it filters the data using certain patterns to identify a value of a string in the database now the two wildcards used with the like operator are generally 
percent and the underscore now the percent sign is used to represent zero or one or more characters whereas the underscore is used to represent exactly one character now to get a clear picture of both these characters let us look at an example uh, in a sql statement and see how they are used now consider this following example which is select employee id employee name from employees where name like a percent now from this table employee if you want to know the employee id of all the employees whose name start with a letter or character a you should use this following query which is the uh, character or the pattern we are using here is a percentage now as we discussed earlier you can also use a small letter a instead of capital letter a because the like operator is not case sensitive now there are many operations that can you, that you can perform using by specifying different patterns using the like operators now for example if you have to find a value that starts with a then the following query would be where column name like a pattern so basically we are mentioning the pattern here as a percentage which will retrieve all those uh, string values which starts with the character a now similarly if you want to find values that end with let's say sh then you have to use percentage sh now similarly if you want to find values that can have a character a in any position then you have to mention the pattern as where column name like percentage a percentage which basically returns any values that contain the letter a in any position and similarly you can use the underscore operator as well let's say if you want to return only exact return exactly one character then you have to mention a single underscore sign now let's say if you want to find values that have uh, a character a in third position then the following query would be where column name like and within the single quotes you have to mention three underscores that is uh, three times you have to specify the underscore that would be present before the character a and then you have to mention the percentage and similarly you have these different types of operations which you can uh, take a screenshot of this by pausing this video now so now that we have understood how exactly sql like works let us jump into mysql workbench to understand in depth on how these exactly work by using their different examples if getting your learning started is half the battle what if you could do that for free visit skill up by simply learn click on the link in the description to know more as you can see my skill workbench just started and in order to execute the sql like operator let us consider a following table in our database let's say new employees on which we'll apply various operations using the like operator so let me first display the records that are present in the new employees table and for that i'm using the select operator and the query is select star from new employees so let me just execute this and a new employees table has various columns such as employee id first name last name email phone number hiring date job id salary manager id and department so firstly let us discuss some examples using the percent wild card which basically uses the percentage sign right so let's say if i want to fetch the details of all those employees whose first name starts with a or let's say s then the following query would be select star from the table name that is new employees where is the conditional clause first name like is the keyword and within the single quotes mention s percentage now it is important to enclose all the patterns that you have specified in a single inverted comma otherwise the query will return a syntax error so let me just display this and execute this so when you execute this query it has returned me seven rows uh, as you can see in the output which basically uh, returns all those employees name whose uh, first name starts with the character that is s so we have like different employees like susan mavris shelly higgins shelly baida sigal tobias and etc now similarly let's say if we want to fetch the details of all those employees whose uh, last name or like first name ends with uh, let us take a character let's say uh, n so let me just display and uh, execute the query 
So when you execute this query, it basically returns all those employees uh, details whose first name ends with M. Like for example, if you consider here Susan Mavris, whose first name has uh, N in the last position. And similarly, we have Herman Bayer, John Chen, Dan Raffley, and etc. Next, let us take another example. Let's say if I want to select all the employees whose first name starts with, uh, let's say, S and uh, ends with, let's say, N. So then the following query would be select star from new employee where first name like. Now the first character would be S and you have to mention the percentage symbol and the next last character would be N. So let me just display, execute this statement. So as you can see, we have a records of three employees whose uh, first name have the letter or the character S in the first place and the character N in the last place. For example, Susan Mavris in the first name, we have S in the first place and N in the last place. Similarly, we have Stephen Markle and Stephen Stiles. Now let us take another example. Let's say uh, I want to find the details of the particular employee. Now the thing is I don't know the exact name of that employee, but I know that uh, his salary is somewhere between 30,000 and 50,000. So for that I can use the AND or operator here. So the following query would be select star from new employee where first name like let's say if I know the employee name starts with uh, K okay then we'll mention a percentage symbol and we'll mention uh, the and operator here and salary between 30,000 50,000 so let us execute this statement and we'll see the output so when you execute this, we can see that there are no records in the table. That means there is no employee whose name starts with K and his salary is between 30,000 and 50,000. So let us take another example. Let's say the employee's name starts with J. So and his salary is somewhere between 30,000 and 15,000. So let me just execute this statement. Now, as you can see in our result set, we have three different employees, uh, Jennifer Wallen, Julia Nair and Jason Malin whose salary is between 30,000 and 50,000 respectively. Like we have 44,000, 32,000 and 33,000. So in this way, you can find the details of employee, even if you do not know the complete details, but just by specifying the pattern uh, of their name or the character that uh, we have in their name, you can fetch their details. Now, if you want to, f uh, if you further know their department ID, let's say uh, Jennifer Wallen department ID is 10 and she belongs to that department and I want to get the details of that employee only, then I can retrieve their details in this way. So I hope you've understood how to use the percentage sign to find the different patterns uh, in order to find the complete uh, string value from the table. Let us now discuss uh, some examples using the underscore while character using the under underscore symbol. So let me take an example here. Let's say if we want to fetch the details of all those employees who have exactly three characters in their first name. So in that case, the following query would be select star from new employees where first name like and within the quotes. Now we we've discussed there should be only three exactly three characters in their name, right? So we'll mention the underscore three times one, two, three, close the single brackets and let us execute this statement. So as you can see, it has fetched a total of four records. Uh, for example, Pat Fay, uh, we have only three characters that is P A T in his first name. And similarly, we have Lex, Dehan, Den, Rafidly, Guy, Himro. All these employees have only exactly three characters in their first name. Let us start, take another example. Let's say if we want to select all the employees with the first name that starts with S and are at least five characters in length. Then in that case, the following query would be select star from new employees where first name 
like single quotes. Now the first character would be S. So I'm mentioning S and after S we have to mention the underscore four times. That basically means it will return an exactly of at least five characters in our uh, employees table who is having the first name uh, having five characters. So let me just execute this statement and we'll see the output. So as you can see, we have two uh, records of employees, Susan Mavris and Seagal Tobias. Now, if you look uh, carefully, Susan, whose first name has a total of five characters, that is S-U-S-A, and that is five. And similarly, we have Seagal. Now, if you want at least, uh, let's say, five characters in length, then you have to mention the percentage sign. So it basically means uh, the employee's name will start with S and it will have at least five characters in length. So let me just execute the statement. So it will display all those records uh, whose first name is starts with the character S and have at least five characters in their first name. So we have Susan Mavres, like we have also Shelly who's, uh, who's having, uh, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters in total in, the, in her first name. So in this way, we'll retrieve all those values whose First name starts with S and basically have at least five characters in length. We are going to discuss one of the most commonly asked SQL query during job interviews as well as campus placements. That is how to find the nth highest salary in SQL. Now there are many ways to find the answer to this query, but in today's session, we are going to discuss the easiest and the most simplest way to find the nth highest salary in SQL. Let us jump into MySQL Workbench for execution and understand how to find the nth highest salary in SQL. As you can see, MySQL Workbench has started. Now, in order to find the nth highest salary, we need an employee table. And for that, I'm going to consider the new employees table here. So let me just display the records that are present in the table. And for that, I'll use the select statement and the query is followed as select star from new employees. So let me just display the results. So as you can see, the new employees table has various columns such as employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hiring date, salary, manager ID, and department. So firstly, before discussing how to find the highest salary, let us see how to find the maximum salary. Now to find the maximum salary in SQL, you can simply use the uh, aggregate function max to find the highest salary in SQL. So the following query would be select max salary from the table that is new employees. So let me just display the results. So as you can see, it is showing as 93,000, which is the highest salary in our table. Now, next to find the second highest salary in the above table, we'll use the concept of subquery, which means that firstly we'll find the highest salary in the table and then we'll nest that query to a subquery to find the second highest salary in SQL. So the query would basically be as, now I'll put this as a subquery here and I'll write the outermost query now. That is select salary from the table that is new employees where salary is less than this inner query or the sub query. So let us just execute this query and see the output. Now it will display all the salaries that are greater, that is less than the uh, sub query that we have written here. That is the maximum salary, which is 93,000. Now that is not the answer that we want or the results that we want. Now we want the maximum salary, which is less than the 93,000. So I'm going to take the max function again here. So basically how this query works is the firstly the inner query gets executed which is the maximum salary that is 93,000. Next the outer query executes that is it will select the maximum salary from the new employee table which is less than the 93,000. So let me just display the results. So as you can see it is showing as 90,000 as the second highest salary. So let us just verify whether it is correct or not. Uh, I'll use the select statement again select star from new employees. We'll use the order by order by function, order by salary, and I'll display the values in descending order. That means from highest to lowest. So in this way, we can find the uh, highest salary. 
and the corresponding salaries that are less than the highest salary. So as you can clearly see that we have 93,000 as our highest salary and the next salary as 90,000 as our next second highest salary. Now till now it is fine. Now let's say if you are asked to find the fifth highest salary or let's say 20th highest salary or basically nth highest salary from this table. Now you can't keep on adding sub queries to this already uh, written query, right? It will become time consuming and it becomes complex as well. Now in general, there are two ways to find the nth highest salary. The first one is using the limit clause and the second one is using uh, the dense rank function, which is an inbuilt function provided by SQL, which we are going to discuss about in a while. So firstly, let us discuss about the uh, limit clause and how we'll use the limit clause to find the nth highest salary here. So firstly, let us understand the syntax here. Now the syntax is followed as select column list from table name order by expression limit n minus one comma one. So let me just explain the syntax here. Now after the select statement, you will have to mention all the columns that you want to fetch in your resultant table from the table name order by expression, which is this basically the column name you have to specify here and you're using the limit keyword. And after that, we have two parameters here that is n minus one comma one. Now in the syntax, the limit n minus one comma one clause returns one row that starts after the row n. Now in other words, if I have to define this, the first parameter that is n minus one defines after how many rows it will start fetching the records in our resultant set. And the second parameter will uh, basically return the number of rows in that table. So let me just explain this with an example. So select. Now I'll use the distinct keyword here, which will basically remove all the uh, anomalies or the repeated values in our table. So distinct salary from table name that is new employees order by salary limit. Now let's say if I want to find the 10th highest salary in our table. So now our n becomes 10. So the value here, it will be n minus one. So 10 minus one is basically nine comma one. Now what this query basically does is it will return one record after the first nine rows. That is basically the 10th row, which is the query that we want. That is to find the 10th highest salary. So let me just execute this statement. Okay. There is an error. So yes, uh, the query is returning me as 24,000, which is the 10th highest salary here. Now, similarly, if you want to find the, let's say uh, 24th highest salary, I'll just change the value into 24. So, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, so basically if you wanted to find the 24th highest salary, you'll have to mention 23 here. That is N minus one, right? So let us find the output. So the next highest salary is 48,000. Uh, so I forgot to mention the descending keyword here. That is why it is showing me the uh, highest value. So if I run this query again, so the 24th highest salary here is 29,900. So in this way, you can basically use the limit clause to find the nth highest salary. Now, let's say if I want to fetch the complete details of that employee who's having the 24th highest salary, I'll simply use a sub query here. So I'll put this query as a sub query and I'll write another outer query using the select statement. Select star from new employees where salary is equals to the inner query. So let me just execute this query and we'll see the output. So now it will display the complete uh, details of the employee, uh, their employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, their salary, manager ID, department, and etc. So in this way, if you want to fetch the complete details as well, you can use this sub query here. Now let's say if you are asked to find the first five highest salaries in the table, then the parameter here will be changed. Now here our n value becomes one. So the n minus one becomes zero. Now, and we want to fetch the first five records from the table. So we'll mention five as our second parameter, which will, which will basically display the first five records. So let me just display and uh, execute this statement. So as you can see, it will display the first five highest salaries starting from 93,000, 90,000, next 88,000, 83,000 and next 82,000. 
Now, if you observe this query carefully, it is somewhat similar to that of the top function we use. Now, since top function is not applicable in MySQL, we are using the limit clause here. Now, if you're working on different other databases like SQL Server or MongoDB or Oracle, you can use the top function. Now, the format uh, will remain the same, only the syntax will uh, change with the use of top keyword. So, in this way, you can use the limit uh, clause to find the nth highest salary. Let us now discuss the second way that is using the dense rank function. Now, MySQL dense rank function is an ill-bin function which is used to return sequential numbers starting from 1 based on the ordering of rows imposed by the order by clause. Now, when you have two records with the same data set, then it will give the same rank to the both rows. So, firstly, let us understand the syntax here. The syntax is followed as select column list. These are basically the, all the columns that you want to fetch in your resultant table. Comma dense rank is the keyword we use here over and inside the parenthesis, we are writing the order by uh, clause and we'll mention the expression as and we'll give a alias name to this uh, <coughs> dense rank function from the table name. So now basically uh, the function is always used with over clause here which will always assign rank on basis of the order by clause and the rank is also assigned to the rows in a sequential manner that is the rank the assignment of rank to these rows will always start from one and the next value will be one greater than the previous rank aside. So let us understand with this with an example. Now let's say I'm, uh, I'll use the select clause here and I want to display the employee ID, the first name of the employee, last name, comma salary. And next I'll mention the dense, dense rank keyword over and inside the brackets use the order by clause and mention the uh, expression. Now we want to uh, specify the condition here which is basically on the salary right. We want to find the nth highest salary here. So we'll specify the salary here as uh, let's give an alias name let's say rank salary from the table that is new employee. So let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. So as you can see, it will display the employee ID, the first name, last name, salary and the rank of the salary. Now, since we haven't given any uh, a keyword here for descending and ascending, it is showing in the ascending order by default. So let me just uh, write the descending keyword by using the DESC. So let us now display this. As you can clearly see, it will display the records from highest to the lowest value and the rank is aside accordingly. Now for the salary 93,000, it is giving rank as one and for 90,002, for 88,003 and so on. Now, if you look here, like the uh, employee Adam Fripp, who's having 82,000 as salary and similarly, John Chen, who's also having 82,000 salary and the rank is assigned as five, which is same. Now, if you Carefully look here, it will assign rank based on the value and not on the number. So even if the uh, values are repeated, it will assign the same rank to that value. So I hope you understood how to use the dense rank function here. Now let's say to find the nth highest salary, we'll have to use a subquery here. Now basically I'll keep this as a subquery here and I'll use another select statement. So basically I want to again display uh, the uh, employee ID, first name, last name and salary in a resultant table. So I'll just copy this and keep it as an outer query from this uh, table, right? So, and I'll mention a where condition where rank salary is equals to now you can mention the entire salary now whatever you want to display you can mention this here now let's say if i want to find the uh, 32nd highest salary i'll just mention the rank salary equals to 32 so let us now execute this statement and we'll see the output now it will show me an error basically here which says every derived table must have its own alias name so we have not given uh, any a specific alias name to our table here so let us just give uh, alias name let's say as e 
or you can take EMP or anything as per your choice, right? So let me just display this and we'll see the output. So as you can see, the 30, what is that? 30 second highest salary uh, has been assigned to the employee Hazel fill tanker whose salary is 22,000. So let's just check whether it is correct or not. I'll just copy this dense rank uh, select statement again. So let's just scroll down and as you can see, uh, 32, which is the rank here has been assigned to the employee hazard fill tanker who salary is 22,000. So which is correct and you have successfully executed query in this case. Now similarly, if you want to find another uh, employee salary, let's say if you want to find 18, 16th highest salary, we'll take this and we'll, employ, we'll execute the statement and it is showing me as the 48,000, which is the 16th highest salary and the employee ID is 105. The employee name is David Austin. And in today's session, we are going to learn about views in SQL. SQL views are very powerful in its usage when used properly. They allow the user to store SQL queries into virtualized containers or in other words, virtual tables in our database. So in today's tutorial, we are going to learn how to create a view in SQL and understand how exactly they work. What is view in SQL? A database view in SQL is like having virtual tables containing a single query and its result. The result is usually a virtual table with rows and columns just like the actual table in a database. We can either pass a query to store all the rows and columns of a table or only a part of it. Now the most significant advantage of a view in SQL is that it stores the query and hence we don't have to write it again and again from scratch. Now, but then, then a question arises, why not use the stored procedure instead? Even the stored procedure can hold a query and execute whenever called. However, the advantage with view is that they are easier and more straightforward compared to procedures. While procedures can have multiple statements with them, views can have only one. Also, views do not accept any parameters as in case with the stored procedure. Now, SQL views can be considered as one of the database objects which is created over an SQL query. It simply represents the data returned by an SQL query. So a view does not actually store the data in the tables, but every time we call a view in the database, it, ret it returns the result set of the query in which it is defined. So in a nutshell, we can say that a view is similar to that of a relational database table which can be treated as a virtual table and it is just a mere representative of an underlying SQL query. It always fetches the data from base table that are used to create the view using the view creation query. Let us now understand this syntax. The views in SQL are created with the create view syntax and creating views in SQL is very simple. Following is the basic syntax to create a view in SQL and it is followed as create view view name as select column one, column two, up to so on, column n, from table one, table two, table n, where condition. Now to see the data in the view, we can query the view using the following select statement. Now create view is used at the start of the code to initiate the view and then select is used to decide which columns to pick from the tables. Now table one, table up to so on, table n denotes the names of the table. However, you can work on a single table as well. Now where is used to define the condition which is used to select only a particular number of rows. Now another significant advantage of views is that it allow certain operations like insert, update, delete, just like uh, you perform in a normal SQL table. Now other than this, we have other operations which can be performed using the view. Now view is used to filter records using where clause. Now we know that there is a lot of chunks of data in our database and if we want only a part of it, we can filter the data using the where clause. Similarly, we can select columns from a single table as per our need. And in the same way, we can use the group by clause to select only a particular or a summarized result of a resultant set. And finally, we can also select columns from multiple tables using the join condition as well. So now that we've understood what exactly views are, let us jump into MySQL Workbench for execution part. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit Skillup by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. 
So as you can see, MySQL Workbench just started and before we proceed into the execution part and see how to create a view in SQL using various examples, let us first quickly understand why we use views in SQL so that we'll have a clear picture uh, before we get into the execution part. Now there are various reasons for using views in SQL. The first one is majorly because of security reasons, right? Now views provide security to the data acting as a security mechanism and views can actually enhance security by restricting data access to users. For instance, we can limit a user from accessing the actual table that contains sensitive data, but provide access to the view that has only insensitive data. Let's take an example to understand this. Now in a company, there is an employee HR and a manager who might be working on a same database table to fetch some information. Now, because they are from different departments, there must be some data that might be irrelevant to HR, but it might be relevant to the manager. And in other case, that data might be relevant to manager, but it might be irrelevant to the employee. So in that case, there should be a security mechanism that would hide irrelevant information of the table from certain usage. Now views allows us to hide or show some data of table depending on the requirement and security. With the help of conditions, we can hide some data for a particular person. Now, the second reason is because of to reduce the complexity. Now, views are introduced or they were actually introduced to reduce the complexity of the multiple tables and deliver data in a simple manner. Views hide the complexity of the data in the database as they join and simplify multiple tables into a single virtual table, which is easier for a user to understand. And finally, because of consistency reasons. Now views also maintain the data integrity as it presents a consistent and accurate data from the database. You can easily make changes to the views according to the user requirement and the effect of the same will be seen quickly in a quick manner. So now that we've understood why we use views in SQL, let us just quickly uh, go get into the execution part now. Now we can easily create a view in SQL from a single table or even multiple tables using the create view statement. Now, but before we create a view, we'll create a table named customers that we will use throughout this session now. So let us just create a table first, which is a customer table and the syntax is create table customer and in the customer table, I'm going to create various columns or fields such as customer ID, customer name, age, address, and I'm giving customer ID as a primary key because it uniquely identifies each and every record in the table. So let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output. So our query has been successfully executed. So let me just use the select statement to display the result. Select star from customer. Right, so our table has been created and the fields uh, customer ID, customer name, age and address are being displayed. Now let us quickly insert uh, some values into the in this table. Now I'll use the insert statement for that. Insert into table name which is customer values and within the brackets. Now customer ID let us take as 101, name let us take as Kiran and age I'm taking as 25 and address I'm taking as Hyderabad. Right, so let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. So our query has been successfully executed and the uh, information has been inserted into our table. So as you can see, the details of Kiran has been successfully executed and displayed in our table. Now, similarly, I'll insert some more records into the table. So let me just copy this insert statement. So let us change the values here. 102, 103, 104 and 105. And name also let us change. I'm taking another customer name as Priya. Kushal, Vaibhav, and let's say Gayatri. And let us change the, their age as well. I'm taking as 26, 24, 28, and 23. 
now you can change their address as well so i am taking the address of priya as bangalore for kushal i am taking as mumbai let us just uh, remain hyderabad for uh, vibhav itself and let us take as chennai for gayatri so let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output so our query has been successfully executed let me just uh, display the values now so as you can see a total of five records have been inserted into our table now we can proceed uh, into creating a view for our table customer now to begin with i uh, will create a simple view from our customer uh, table which is an existing table which we have created just now so the following syntax would be create view which is the keyword we use uh, you can give any name to your view let's say uh, customer view as select the columns that you want to display in your resultant view table which is a virtual table right so i want to display all the fields in my resultant view table so i'll use the select star operator select star from customer so let us execute this statement and we'll see the output so our query has been successfully executed and now when you refresh the uh, schema section you can see in views you can find a new uh, one which is created as a customer view so let me just uh, display the results in the view for that i'll use the select query again select star from customer view so I, as you can see the exact details of the customers that we have already inserted in our uh, previous table customers has been inserted in the uh, customer view as well so that means in this way this view will store all the columns that were uh, in the customer table and it will simply copy paste all the records from customer table into the customer view which we have created now now similarly you can also uh, create a view from the existing table as well so for that let us take an example let's say if i want to create a view of projects table here so let me just display the records from the projects table and we'll see the output so as you can see the project table has various fields such as project id employee id project name project manager now let's say i have i've had a new requirement wherein uh, there is a new employee who is joining as a fresher into the company and as a manager i want to uh, show the details of all the project names uh, that the company is currently working on now i want to hide the employee id details because i don't want the uh, fresher to uh, have exact idea on which project the current employees are working so for that i'll create a view a simple view here which will basically uh, give all access to the uh, fresher or the the employee who have recently joined he can only view the project name and project uh, manager's name that's it so let me just create a view here create view let us take the view name as project view again as select the columns now i'll just select the project id the project name and the project manager's name here check managers from the table that is projects so let us execute this statement and we'll see the output so our query has been successfully executed now when you refresh this again you can see another view is formed in the view section which is the project view so let me just display the records that are uh, present in this view i'll use the select statement again select star from projects view so as you can see now only the project id the project name and the name of the project manager are being displayed without uh, displaying the employee ids in this view table so it will basically encapsulate or hide the unwanted details for the new employee so that he can only view the project name and the project manager's name itself that's it right so that brings us to the next segment wherein we'll understand how to perform various operations in a view in sql that is how to insert update and delete records in a view now just like actual tables we can easily insert update and delete rows in a view that is not allowed in stored procedures 
Now, firstly, let us discuss how to insert a row in a view. For an inserting a row in a, a view, we'll use the project view uh, as an example that we have created earlier. Now, the view already had, let's say, I think, a 10 rows. Uh, and we'll insert another row using the insert into command. So the following syntax is insert into name of the view that is project views project view values and inside that uh, let's say I'm taking a project ID as one one two zero comma project name let us say artificial neural network comma and let us say the project manager name is Akash so let us execute this statement and we'll see the output So our query has been successfully executed. So let me just use the select statement again to display the records. So as you can see, uh, there's a new record with the project ID 1120 and the project name is artificial neural networks and the project manager name is Akash. So as you can see in the output in this way, we can uh, create another row by inserting in the view, which confirms that the insert statement has been successfully executed, right? So next let us discuss how to update a record in a view. Now, like just like inserting, we can also update a row in a view. If you notice the previous example, uh, we have inserted a new row that is uh, with the project ID as one one two zero. Let us update uh, one of the record in this. Let's say if I want to update uh, the project details uh, of blockchain technology as something else, I'll use the update statement here. So the syntax uh, for the update would be update. Mention the view name that is project view set uh, now since we are changing the project name i'll mention the field project name set project name equals to now let's say if i want to change the uh, project id uh, 110 as let's say seo optimization or let's say seo analytics where project id equals to 1110 right so let us execute this statement and we'll see the output so our query has been successfully executed so let me run the select statement again to display the records so as you can clearly see that the project id which was 1110 which was earlier blockchain technology has been changed into seo analytics so the updated uh, the version of the column name which was blockchain technology uh, has been changed into SEO analytics successfully. Thus, it is confirmed that the uh, update statement has been executed successfully as well. Now, finally, let us see how to delete a record in a view. Now, just like how we inserted and updated a row, we can also delete uh, a row using the delete statement. For example, we will delete the uh, row which is having project ID, let's say 810, uh, which is project name as diabetic retinopathy and the project manager name is Harsh. So let me uh, just delete this record. So I'll use the delete statement here. Delete from project view where is the condition we use here where project ID equals to 810. Right. So let me just execute this again. So our query has been executed successfully. Let me just display the records. So as you can see the record, the project ID, which is having a 10, which is one of the record in this table has been successfully uh, deleted. So in this way you can perform various such operations, which we actually generally perform in uh, the normal SQL tables. You can similarly perform them in SQL views as well. Now for, for some reasons, if you want to delete the whole view, that is the view that we have already created. Now for some reasons, if you want to delete it, you can simply use the drop command here, which will completely delete the view that you have created. So the query would be drop mention the view name, which is project view, right? So let us just execute this. 
So our query has been successfully executed. So let me just uh, use the select statement to display the record select star from which is project view. Right, so let us execute this. Now when you execute this, it will simply uh, say that uh, project view does not exist, which means that our uh, view which we have created has been successfully deleted from the database and the schema as well. And that brings us to the end of today's session guys. I hope you understood how to create a view in SQL. Now you might have a doubt that when to use uh, views in SQL. Now since views have both advantages and disadvantages, the question arises when to use them, right? Now for instance, if you remove an attribute or if you actually delete a table, it can impact the functionality of a view as well. Just like in a related table, for instance, if a view is using the email column of a table and you drop that column or even a single data of it that is in use by the view, the output of the view will be impacted. Now the short answer to when to use uh, views in SQL is when you want to write complex select queries that require gathering data from multiple tables. In that case, you can use SQL views. Try to understand how to delete these duplicate records in SQL. Uh, let us jump straight into MySQL Workbench for execution part. So I hope you are able to see the MySQL Workbench uh, window. And as you can see, the MySQL Workbench has started. And uh, on the left side, you can see the Simply Code database where we have different tables such as Crypto 2022, Customer, Department, Employee 4, Employee 3 and so on. Right now, before we get into the execution part wherein uh, we'll discuss how to delete the duplicates in SQL, let us understand uh, why there are actually duplicate records in SQL. Now, as you know, uh, sometimes you might see more than one copy of the same record appearing in your MySQL database table. Now, this usually happens after importing data from external sources such as spreadsheet applications like Excel or from external websites like Kaggle and etc., which do not have the features of relational databases right so having this identical copies of the same record may negatively affect your application and your business logic so to overcome these challenges you must need to delete the uh, duplicate records from your table now only rarely you will find uh, to remove duplicate entries from a table because the tables in these databases generally have this constraints such as primary key or unique constraints to prevent these duplicate entries occurring in the first place but due to some mistakes or the duplicates can get into properly uh, designed table wherein this is due to changes in the business side where after merging of two or more different systems or uh, data from two or more different tables will have this duplicate data in our tables so in this session uh, we will look at some of the ways to remove duplicate records from the table in sql right so i've already created a uh, tables and inserted some values in it as well as some duplicate values also. So let us consider uh, firstly the employee 4 table here. Let me just display the records. So use the select statement uh, which is select star from employee 4. So let us execute this statement and we'll see the output. Right now employee 4 table has various columns such as employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hiring date, job ID salary manager id and finally department id now there are different ways uh, to delete the duplicate records so we'll discuss uh, one by one each so firstly we can delete the duplicate records using the group by and having function so let us understand the syntax first now before we get into the execution part you'll have to understand how to uh, fetch the duplicate records from the database table right so for that we'll use the following query as select first name comma last name which are basically the columns and I'll use the count function which will basically count all the duplicate values that are present in our employee 4 table mention the table name and we'll use the group by function group by mention the column names you want to group which is basically the first name and the last name right having count mention the star operator greater than one right let us now execute the statement and we'll see the output so as you can clearly see in our resultant set we have a total of five records 
such as Donald O'Colan, Jennifer Wallen, Michael Hastin, Herman Baer, and finally Alexander Hunold, where their records in the employee table have been repeated. For example, Donald, Donald O'Colan uh, records have been repeated three times here. And similarly, we have Jennifer Wallen's two, Michael Hatton's two times. Again, Herman's Baer was also two times. And finally, Alexander Hunold's also four, four times. Right. Now, now that we have understood uh, how to find the duplicate uh, records that are present in our table, let us now understand how to delete. Now, the uh, query for that would be delete from mention the table name, which is employee four, where employee ID not in. So, let us first understand the syntax. Then I'll uh, clearly explain how it how it actually works. So select, which is a subquery now, use the max function, mention the employee ID column name, close the parenthesis from employee four, and you can use the group by function as well. So we'll group by uh, the first name and the last name here. And close the brackets right there. So let us now execute this statement and we'll see the output. Uh, there is an error in the code uh, which says you can't specify the target table employee for for update in from clause. Well, guys, I think there is an issue in the back end. Uh, maybe there's a error in the code, but I think the logic is correct here. So what this uh, query actually does is it basically executes the inner query first, which is it selects maximum employee ID from the employee table, right? And it will display all those records. Now it will delete all the records in the employee uh, four table whose employee is not in the maximum value, such as if I have, let's say 104 is the maximum value. And if I have 101, 102 or 103, which are basically the duplicate records. So it will basically delete all those records, right? So it, this is how it will uh, delete the duplicate records in the SQL. I don't know why it is showing error, but we'll get back to you again with the right code. So this is one of the way to uh, actually delete the duplicate rows from the SQL using the group by and having function. So let us now understand a different scenario where you'll use another method here. We can also delete the duplicate records using the delete join statement. Okay, so for that, uh, the query would be delete. Now I'll First, me, uh, first, let me write the query and then we'll understand how the syntax works. So delete, I'm taking an alias name for a table employee. So I'm taking as E1 from employee four, which is the table, right? As E1 and I'm joining the table employee four as E2 where even dot employee ID is less than E2 dot employee ID and even dot first name is equals to E2 dot first name. Right, so this is our query now. So let us understand how this actually works here, right? So now basically we are, uh, this query is referencing this to, uh, employee for table twice. And therefore we are using, we'll use this table alias as E1 and E2. And after this executing the statement, we'll get the following output as, so let us see the output and uh, we'll understand. Uh, it's showing an error, which is, uh, okay. Employee underscore ID it is. So as you can see in our output, a uh, total eight rows have been affected. Now let us understand how this query is working, right? Now I've taken uh, two similar tables here. That is basically the one table. I'm referencing it twice here. So basically it will delete all the rows, which are less than the values that are present in the employee two table here. So let me just uh, display the values again so that we'll have a clear idea. Select star from employee four table.
So as you can see now, previously we had the repetition of uh, certain records. For example, Douglas Grant we had, and similarly we had Alexander Hunold, and for similarly Herman Bernos. After execute this statement, we have only a single record where all the existing duplicate records have been successfully deleted. So in this way, you can use the delete join statement as well uh, to delete the duplicate records from your table. Now let's uh, the next to be method to delete these re duplicate records is using the row number function. Now row number function is basically a SQL ranking function guys that will assign a sequential rank number to each record in a partition. Now when this SQL row number function detects any two identical values or let's say duplicate values in the same partition, it, it assigns different uh, rank numbers to both and this rank number will be determined by the sequence in which they are being displayed. I know this might sound a bit confusing, so let us understand the query and see how it exactly works. So the query is followed as select employee ID, comma first name. So basically display all the uh, columns that you want in your resultant table. Last name, mention the row number function. row number function over partition is the keyword partition by is the keyword and we are partitioning using the first name here right so mention the column name as first name and similarly we'll also mention the order by clause mention the first name again as now let us give an alias name for this let's say uh, we'll take it as row underscore num mention the table name that is employee th employees so let us consider another table here which is employees 3 right so this is our query so let us understand what exactly uh, this syntax is all about now we are using the over keyword here which basically is a clause which specifies the windows or set of rows that the window function operates and the partition by and order by are the two possible clauses of the over clause and next we have the partition by keyword which is an optional clause in the row number function it is basically a clause that divides the result set into partitions now the row number method is then applied to each partition which assigns a separate rank number to each partition and if the partition by a uh, clause is not specified the row number function will treat the entire result as a single partition and rank it from top to bottom and finally we also have a uh, order by clause we are using here which is the clause it allows the allows the user to order the rows in the resultant set so i hope you have understood this so let us now execute this statement and we'll see the output right now as you can see in a resultant set we have uh, details of an employee alexander hunold whose employee id is 103 here which has been repeated for four times here right so in this way the row number function will assign values in a sequential manner starting from one that is one two three four that is basically four different values now again we do not have a repetition of this value so again it is mentioning or it is assigning one as value for the next record now similarly we have bruce ernest as only one record so we have row number as one now next we have donald o'connell whose records are again repeated thrice here right you can see here so the row number function assigns the values as one two three so similarly for all the rest of the uh, records that are present in the table, it assigns the value in a sequential order on the number of times it has been repeated. So now that we've uh, added the partitions and the row numbers to the our, uh, resultant set, let us now understand how to delete these duplicate records. Now the syntax for that would be delete from, sorry, uh, delete from employee 3 which is the table name employee 3 where employee id in now within the uh, 
parenthesis will write a subquery here which is basically select all the employee IDs from mention another subquery here which is basically the uh, previous query that we have uh, written here so we'll just write it again select employee ID comma first name comma last name and mention the row number function over partition by is the keyword first name again we'll use the order by clause for the first name again and we'll give an alias name for this uh, sub, sub table that which is uh, row num from employee 3 table and for this uh, outer uh, part of the query we'll give another temporary name let's say temp table where row number is basically greater than 1 so what this uh, query does is, is basically it will check all the values and it will see that for all the values which is having row number greater than 1 for example we have for Alexander Hunold we have uh, row numbers has 1 2 3 4 right so it will remain this uh, the first record as it is and it will uh, delete the remaining records for example the records having Alexander Hunold as row number function 2 3 4 will be deleted and similarly for Donald O'Connell 2 3 the row numbers will be deleted so let us now execute the statement and we'll see the output Uh, it is showing an error again so let me just make some changes well the query is actually correct guys I don't know why it is showing the error here Okay, I forgot to uh, close the parenthesis here, right? So that was my mistake. Sorry. Uh, so let's now execute the statement and we'll see the output. I3. Three. I think the employee table name has been returned wrong, right? So let us execute this statement and we'll see the output now. Okay. So our query has been successfully executed guys and we can see that 13 rows have been ex uh, have been affected. So let us now use the select statement again and we'll see the records where whether they are not whether the duplicate records have been not deleted or not. So select star from employee 3 table. Right, so clearly uh, you can see that in a resultant set we have all the duplicate values that have been successfully deleted permanently. So in this way you can use the row number function as well to delete the duplicate records in your SQL table. So that brings us to the end of uh, today's session guys that was all about uh, how to delete the duplicate uh, records or rows from the SQL tables. I hope you understood how to implement this. Discussing uh, what is pattern matching in SQL and we'll see how to find certain values in the table using, so, uh, using some patterns with the help of some special characters. So without any further delay, let's get started. Now in order to, for the execution part, let us jump into MySQL Workbench. So as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and on the left side, you can see the Simply Code database, which has various tables like Crypto 2022, Customer, Department, New Employees, Olympics, and etc. So before getting into the execution part, guys, let us understand how exactly the pattern matching works. 
now remember when you uh, start typing something into google search bar and it auto completes feature already completes your sentence right so what exactly is happening there so google is basically trying to accomplish is what is pattern matching pattern matching is basically checking whether a specific sequence of characters or token or a data or the other information that you are looking is existing in the database or not so for that we use pattern matching in sql now sql pattern matching allows you to search for patterns in data if you don't know how the exact word or phrase you are finding is there or not so this kind of sql query uses wildcard characters to match a pattern now the like operator is basically used to find the specific uh, pattern in the tables column it is also used to compare columns within the specified values now together with the where clause it determines if a pattern matches specific values in a table it also uses some special wildcard characters uh, such as the like percentage as well as the like underscore operator to find the specific pattern so basically the uh, like percentage sign is used to represent zero or more characters and the underscore sign is used to represent exactly one character right to get a clear picture of both these uh, operators using the special wildcard symbols let us look at some examples and see how they are executed and how it will return the values so for that let me just switch to another tab and uh, let us consider the olympics table to perform operations using the pattern matching in sql so let me just display the results uh, from the olympics table so i'm using the select star from olympics table right so the olympics table has various columns or fields such as id name sex age height weight country noc games year season city sport and event and also the medal that they have won so Firstly, let us uh, discuss some examples using the like percentage operator, guys. So, as we discussed earlier, like percentage operator basically returns one or more characters having certain patterns that we've mentioned in the condition in our query. So, let me just take a first example here, and we'll see how it gets executed. Now, let's say if I want to fetch details of all the athletes who have participated in Olympic games whose name starts with S. So, in that case, the following query would be select. star from olympics where name like and within the single quotes you have to mention the character that you are searching for which is s and mention the percentage symbol so let us execute this statement and we'll see the output so it will basically display the results of all those uh, athletes who have participated in the olympics whose name starts with s so if you want to further uh, write a queries in order to display in ascending order you can use the order by function as well so i'll use the order by name so this will basically uh, represent all the names starting from s and also the second character uh, which will maintain in the ascending order like if you see salim abnos and next we have silvano aba and so on till stephen anthony base right so in this way if you want to uh, display only Uh, the results using the first character you can use this next let us disc, uh, discuss another example now you can use multiple characters also to find the patterns uh, in order to fetch the data let's say if you want to retrieve the details of all the events uh, in the olympic games whose name starts with let's say sa so in that case we'll be using the query as select star from olympics where event like sa percent so let us execute this and we'll see the output so we were talking about events right so we have events here like various events so let me just uh, use the distinct so that we'll have only the events name select distinct event and we'll see the output okay So as you can see, we have a total of five records that starts with the characters SA, like sailing woman, windsurfer, sailing mix, three person keyboard, and so on. So in this way, if you know the first two characters of the value that you want to search, then you can use the percentage 
operator with by mentioning the first two characters here that is we have taken sa here right so let us move to the next query uh, let's say if you want to display the names of all those employees sorry all those uh, athletes in the olympic table whose name ends with letter or the character n so in that case you use the query as select star from olympics where name like now in order to get the details of all those athletes whose name ends with n you have to first mention the percentage and then mention the character that you are searching for which is basically n right so we'll execute this query and we'll see the output so in our resultant set you can see list of all those uh, athletes whose name ends with a like if you consider arvo ocean alton and similarly we have juhamati tapio altonen and if you scroll down a bit you'll find all those names of the athletes whose uh, name ends with n so you can use this uh, percentage operator to find the uh, names of all those uh, athletes in the olympic table that ends with n as well right moving ahead uh, similarly you can also uh, find the Olymp uh, names of the um, name of the athletes in the uh, olympic table that ends with multiple characters so now other than names let us uh, take another example let's say if i want to uh, display distinct uh, records of the sports whose sports name ends with ing so in that case i'll use select star or sorry select distinct sport from olympics where sport like percentage ing so let us execute this statement and we'll see the output so it will basically display the records of all those sports played in the olympic games which ends with the characters ing so no matter what it has in the starting places it should end basically with the ing characters so we have various sports like speed skate, uh, skating cross country skiing swimming sailing alpine skiing weightlifting and finally wrestling oh sorry we have more than uh, that so basically it uh, displays all those uh, sports which have ing in the last place so i hope you understood this uh, so let us now understand another scenario where we'll use this percentage now if you want to uh, display the records of all those uh, athletes who's who have i or k let's say ik in any particular order in their names so in that case you'll use the following query as select star from olympics a stable name where name like so the name can start with any character so i'm using the percentage now it should have only ik in between their name so at any positions and finally i'll enclose in with the percentage so it can be in uh, second third or you can say fifth sixth but basically it should have ik characters in the name so let us just uh, for what to mention a single quote so let us execute this statement and then we'll see the output right so as you can see we have uh, the resultant set which has for example you if you consider agnes erica anderson uh, she uh, she has ik in between her name and similarly jan eric uh, similarly he has ik characters in middle of his name and similarly we have mika lauri arnika rv alec monica ava and so on so even in this way you can use a different scenario where you can understand and use uh, the percentage operator well uh, let us now consider another example guys uh, let's say if you want to display all those countries where the olympic uh, say so, sorry uh, the countries of all the athletes who have participated in the olympics whose country name starts with c and ends with a so in that case the following query would be select star from olympics where country like c percentage a so what this basically does is it will uh, retrieve all the records of the countries which has the letter c as its either first position and a as in the last position and it can have any number of characters in between so for that we are using percentage sign so let me just execute this and we'll see the output so if you can see in our output we have uh, different countries that start with c and ends with a so let me just uh, use this thing so that we can have a clear picture
So as you can see, we have China and Cuba, which are only two countries uh, which have the letter C as it's in the first position and A in the last position as well. So this is another case where you can use the percentage uh, operator sign as well. So and finally, let us look another example of like uh, before uh, moving ahead with the underscore operator. Now, let's say if you uh, want to find the uh, details of all the uh, athletes who have participated in the games uh, in the 20th century, that is from 1900 to 2000. So not only the character values, you can even work on the numerical values as well while you're performing like, like operations. So let me just write a query. So select, I'll use the distinct uh, name because we have uh, repeated values of uh, athletes. So and also mention the year from Olympics where game like 19 percentage so it will basically display all the records uh, whose uh, the games that were played in the year 19 9, or 20th century that is between 1900 and 2000 so let us just execute this and we'll see the output oh sorry i think it's games the column name is games So as you can see, it will display the records of all the athletes who have played uh, various games in this year, starting from uh, 1900s to 2000. So if, if you want a more uh, good looking query, you can use the order by so that it will sort the result in uh, ascending order. So let us just execute this. So as you can see, uh, in a resultant set, it is displaying the records starting from 1900 and so on up to 1998. So in this way, you can use the numerical values also to find certain uh, patterns as well. And you can also use uh, the and or operator and or, or operator as well. So let us consider an, another, another example there. Now, let's say if you want to fetch the details of all these athletes who have taken part in various Olympic Games, be it Summer Olympic Games or Winter Olympic Games. And the sport that they have participated uh, is basically starts with the letter B. So in that case, what we'll do is we'll add game section as well, which is a column. Mention the and operator and sport like percentage B. So what it does is it basically displays all the records of the athletes who have taken part in all the uh, Olympic Games paid summer or winter Olympic Games in the 19th, 20th century that is from 1900 to 2000 and also it will filter the records wherein it will only display the sport which starts with the letter B and similarly we will uh, do the order by year. So let us just execute the statement and we will see the output. So as you can see it is displaying me the record of all those athletes who have taken part in various uh, games starting in the 19th from 1900s from we have 1924 1952 and so on up to 1998 so in this way you can use also use the and operator basically to uh, fetch the records using the percentage operator so i hope you've understood till now how we use the like percentage uh, in order to find certain par uh, pattern in our uh, values that are present in our tables to fetch those records let us move ahead and discuss some examples uh, by using the like underscore operator, right? As we discussed, like underscore operator basically returns only exactly one character that we specified. So let us just understand with an example here so that you'll have a clear idea. So let's say if I want to uh, fetch the details of all the names of athletes in the Olympics table, whose name starts with J and have uh, a total of let's say five characters so in that case the following query would be select star from olympics is the table name where name like mention the single brackets and we know that their name starts with j and they have a total of six characters so we'll write underscore five times one two three four and five so let us see the output. So as you can see in a resultant set, we have no records of the athletes whose name starts with J and has a total of six characters. So let us take another example. Uh, let's say if you want to uh, 
find the details of the cities where the Olympic Games have played, which basically starts with the letter B and has a total of six characters. Right. So in that case, what we'll do is select star from Olympics where city like B and mention five underscores because it has a total of six characters. We also we already mentioned the character B in the first place. So we'll have five uh, underscores. So let us just execute this and we'll see the output. So in a result and set, we can see Berlin is basically this city. I think it is only one and only the city that they have uh, played in, which has the letter B in the first position and it has a total of six characters. Now, since you don't know uh, the exact characters that are, are present in what positions, you're basically uh, using the underscore characters to mention that. Right. I hope you understood this, guys. Uh, let us take another scenario uh, so that we have a more clear picture of how the underscore works. Now we'll use this uh, underscore in the last position wherein we'll uh, display the records of all the countries of the athletes that they have taken part in the Olympic Games whose country name ends with N and has uh, basically uh, six characters in total. That is five characters we have to mention as underscore and we will ha have the N as the last letter. So select star from Olympics where country like so mention a total of six and mention the last letter which ends with A. So let us execute the statement and we'll see the output. So these are basically the uh, so let me just use the distinct so that we can will have only the uh, country names in our result table. So basically Cameroon and Pakistan are basically the two countries uh, that the athletes belong to uh, which have a total of uh, seven characters and has N in the last position. So as you can see Cameroon and Pakistan are both those countries. Right. So let us discuss another example, a final example before we move on uh, to our next uh, scenario. So finally, let's say if you do not know uh, the name of the, let's say the sport that you want to retrieve, but you know, it has a total of only six characters. You don't know the starting letter. You don't know the ending letter, but you know that it has at least, or let's say a six characters in total. So in that case, we'll use select distinct. So we'll uh, display the sport. So I'm taking the sport column from Olympic games, Olympics where sport like so mention six underscore values one two three four five six so let us execute the statement and we'll see the output so basically we have five records of the sports that are played in the olympic games which have a total of six characters which is hockey rowing bowing diving and tennis so in this way, you can use the underscore operator without mentioning any characters or values at all to find the actual or the value that you're searching for in your table. While well, So that is uh, how you use the like underscore operator, guys. Now we have another case wherein we'll use both the like percent as well as the underscore values all together in order to retrieve the data from our table by specifying certain patterns. patterns. So let us uh, understand this with an example. So let's say if you are uh, trying to fetch the uh, details of all the countries of the athletes, which uh, whose country name starts with S and has at least three characters. I'm using the word at least because uh, it can have any number of values after the first character. So let me just ex explain this with a query here. Select star from Olympics where country like now the country name should start with S and it can have basically three characters. So I'm using the percentage sign as well. Now I'm not uh, telling it should have exactly three characters. It can have uh, at least three characters. That is, it can have uh, four, five or even six. So let us just execute the statement and we'll see the output. So where is this the country, right? So we can see in a resultant set, Spain 
is a country which starts with S and have more at least three uh, characters in total. And similarly, we have Soviet Union as well. So in this way, you can use both underscore as well as the percentage operator. So let us just understand with another example here, guys. Uh, let's say if you're trying to fetch the details of all the events from the Olympic Games that were played, uh, which basically has uh, which basically has M in its third position and can have any number of characters. So in that case, the following query would be select star from Olympics. Sorry, we are just selecting the event, right? So I'll mention the event. Select event from Olympics where event like. Now I said the uh, character M is present at the third position. So first I'll mention two underscores. Next I'll mention the M character. And then finally I'll mention the percentage so that it can have any number of values after the character M. So let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output. So it will basically re uh, retrieve all the uh, events that are played in Olympic Games, which has M in the third position. So as you can see, gymnastics, men's individual all round. Similarly, gymnastics, men's team all round, floor exercises, horse world, and all this have M in the third position. And basically it has any number of characters. That is a total number of characters. So right, I, I hope you're following with me and you are understanding this. So let us consider another example. Uh, so let's say if you want to, if you're trying to retrieve the uh, countries that the uh, athletes are belonging to, uh, where the country name has A in the second letter and ends with N. So in that case, what we'll do is, I'll write another query, which is select star from Olympics, where country like, So I said uh, we have A in the second position. So we do not know what is present in the first place. So I'm just mentioning an underscore and then I'm mentioning A and then I'm using percentage because we have uh, no restriction here. It can have any number of values. Now the only criteria is that it should end with N. Right. So we'll just execute this and we'll see the output. Okay, it is displaying all the records, right? So let's just use the distinct country. So as you can see, we have a total of four records, which are basically Typhoon, Cameroon, Bahrain and Pakistan. Now, if you clearly look into this resultant set, we have A in the second position. Uh, you can see, right? So we have A in the second position and it is having n number of characters, which is which is of no limit. And the only condition we have specified is it should end with n. So in all these records, uh, the country names are ending with n. So in this way, you can use uh, the percentage and alias, sorry, percentage and the underscore uh, to specify this kind of pattern as well. So I hope you've understood this guys. Uh, so finally, let us look at another uh, example so that we can uh, wrap this session finally. So let's say if you want to display records of various sports that are played, which can have any number of characters, but the last but one character should be N. That is, it should contain letter N or basically the penultimate character uh, should end with N. So in that case, the following query would be select distinct sport from Olympics where sports like so i hope you understood the question now the question is uh it can have this sport can have any number of characters but the only condition is the last but one character should be n so i'll first mention the percentage that is it can have any number of uh, characters before and after the percentage i'm mentioning n which is basically the last but one character and i'm mentioning an underscore that is it can have any number of uh, any value in the last place that is any it can uh, fill any character in that place. So let's just execute the statement and we'll see the output. Okay, sport. Sorry, it is just sport, not sports. So in our resultant set, you can see that we have various sports which basically has n in the second last position. So you can see in speed skating, in cross country skiing. 
swimming, sailing and so on in all these uh, uh, values we have n at the last position. So in this way you can use the you can use both percentage as well as underscore to find patterns in your data table as well. So and similarly guys we have the not like uh, operator to find the pattern matching as well. So let me just uh, help you with this example. So let's say if you want to find the age of all the athletes uh, who's who are not in the age of who are in the not in the age group of 20. Right. So in that case, what I'll do is select star from Olympics where age use the not like keyword and mention two percent. So it will basically uh, omit all the values or uh, the values of all the athletes who's a who's are ranging in the age group of 20 to 30. So let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output. Uh, we'll also uh, use the order by so that we'll have in the ascending order order by H Right as you can see the resultant set has all the ages of the athletes uh, starting from 16 17 18 and 19 and if you clearly observe here after 19 we have 30 so basically it is omitting all the values that has uh, two or that is the uh, athletes uh, age is lying in the range of between 20 and 30. So in this way you can also use the not like uh, values not like operator to omit the values that in the pattern uh, matching. We will be discussing about triggers in SQL. So in this tutorial we will be going through various concepts of triggers understand its significance and see how it exactly works in SQL. Now have you ever watched a line of dominoes fall when you knock the first one down? Now in that case you have just invoked a trigger which has created an event there. Your touch of first style triggered the chain reaction that has knocked down the rest of the dominoes as well. Now this is the same principle applied to database triggers as well. Now a trigger in database terms is set of instructions that is activated or we say it as fired by some specific event normally a command issued through a SQL code. Firstly, let us discuss the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what are triggers in SQL and then we'll go through why we use triggers and after that we'll see different types of triggers used in SQL and after that we'll be discussing various operations used with triggers and then we'll get into the execution part in MySQL Workbench using various examples and finally we'll wrap the session by discussing some advantages and disadvantages of triggers. So without any further ado, let us jump straight into today's topic. So firstly, what are triggers in SQL? Now triggers is a database object which fires when an event occurs in a database or you can say a trigger is a piece of code executed automatically in response to a specific event occurred on a table in a database. Now triggers as the name suggests are store pr procedures now what are stored procedures ba means procedures are basically functions which contain SQL statements which are stored in database and can return some output which are executed or fired when some event occurs. Now a trigger is always associated with a particular table and if the table is deleted all the associated triggers are also deleted automatically. Now the triggers are executed in response to certain events like insert, update or delete in a particular table. Now a trigger is invoked either before or after the following events of from the DML commands like through insert when a new row is inserted or through an update command when an existing row is updated or through a delete command when a row is deleted. So when you issue an insert update or delete statement the relational database management system fires the corresponding trigger. And also these triggers helps in maintaining the integrity of the data by changing the data of the database. Let us now understand the syntax of triggers. Now we can create triggers for various types of operations as discussed above and we'll mostly focus on DML triggers as these are the most commonly and extensively used triggers and also at the same time most important. So a DML trigger can be created using the following syntax which is followed as create trigger trigger name before after instead of insert or update or delete on table name for each row begin trigger body end double slash. 
So let's just discuss the different parts of the syntax clearly. Now we have the create or replace trigger trigger name in the first line where we give the name of the trigger we are creating or updating. Here trigger name is to be replaced by the name you want to have for your trigger in your database. Now it can be of any name as per your choice. Next we have the before after instead of keywords. Here we define when the trigger would run that is before or after the DML operation. For example, if you want a trigger to be executed after insertion to a table, we will consider after insert here. Next, we have various DML commands like insert or update or delete. This is the operation or event we have to define which will trigger a procedure to be executed. If you want a procedure to run after a deletion happens on the table, then we'll consider writing delete there. Next, we have on table name. Here we have to specify the name of the table on which we are attaching the trigger. And next we have for each row keyword where this line specifies that the procedure will be executed for each one of the rows present. Here we can set a condition for which rows to be impacted. This part is optional though in case we don't use this a trigger shall convert to a statement level trigger rather than being a row level one. So we'll discuss about that later. So next we have the when condition where which mentions some condition basis of which the trigger will run. In absence of when condition, which is again optional, you can expect it to run for all the eligible rows. So this is very important as this will control which rows the trigger must run. And finally, we have the trigger body, which is the main logic of what to perform once the trigger is fired. In the previous statements, all we define is when this trigger will be fired. But here we have to define what to do after the trigger is fired. So this is the main execution part of the SQL code. And we end the uh, syntax with end double slash. Right, moving ahead. Why we use SQL triggers? Now, since a trigger resides in the database and anyone who has the required privilege can use it, a trigger lets you to write a set of SQL statements that multiple applications can use. So it allows the user to avoid redundant code when multiple programs need to perform the same database operations. SQL triggers also maintains complex column constraints. Now what I mean from that is it helps in maintaining the integrity constraints in the database tables, especially when the primary key and foreign key constraints are not defined. And it also helps in maintaining the track of all the changes like updation, deletion and insertion that occur in the database table. Triggers also increase the performance of SQL queries because it does not, it does not need to compile each time the query is executed. All right, moving ahead, let us now discuss the types of triggers in SQL. Now triggers are of two types in general, according to the SQL standard language, which is row level trigger and statement level trigger. Now row level trigger, which is activated for each row by a triggering statement, such as insert, update or delete. Now, for example, if a table has inserted, updated or deleted multiple rows, the row trigger is fired automatically for each row affected by this insert or update or delete statement. And next we have the statement level trigger, which is uh, fired once for each event that occurs on a table, regardless of how many rows are inserted, updated or triggered. Now further, we have uh, a six types of triggers based on the uh, events of occurrence of the triggers uh, through the DML commands that are invoked and at the time of when they are uh, executed. So we can define the maximum of six types of actions or events in the form of triggers, which is before insert, after insert, before update, after update, before delete and after delete. Let us now discuss about them in detail. Now, first we have uh, the before and after insert trigger. The before insert triggers are used to modify or check record values before they are saved to the database. Whereas the after insert triggers are used to modify other records and access field values set by the system. And the syntax for before and after insert trigger is followed as delimiter create trigger trigger name before or after is the keyword we have to mention after, uh, prior to the insert uh, name on table name for each row begin mention the uh, body of the trigger and mention the end keyword and end with a delimiter. Next, we have the before and after update trigger in SQL. 
Now, before update triggers are invoked automatically before an update event occurs on the table associated with the triggers, while after update trigger is invoked when the operations on row is under execution after an update operation on the database. Now, the syntax is also same. Instead of uh, the insert, you have to just replace, replace it with the update keyword uh, with the before and after keywords as well. Now, firstly, we'll specify the trigger name that we want to create and it should be unique within the schema. Next, we'll specify the trigger action time, which should be before update or after update. So this trigger will be invoked before each row of alterations occurs on the table if you use before and similarly with the after keyword as well. And third, we'll specify the name of the table to which the trigger is associated. So it must be written after the on keyword. And if you do not specify the table name, a trigger would not exist. Finally, we'll specify the trigger body that contains a statement of execution uh, when the trigger is activated, where you can mention the different condition using the when keyword as well. Now we cannot update the old values in a before update trigger where and uh, we can change the new values as well, which we'll discuss while uh, we are executing the code in MySQL Workbench so that you'll have a clear idea. And finally, we have the before and after delay trigger as well. Before delay triggers are fired automatically before a delete event occurs in a table and after delete triggers are invoked, when the operations on the rows is under execution after any delete operation on the database as well. Now the syntax is also similar to that of uh, previously to that of insert and update, which is create trigger trigger name before after delete on table name for each row and then mention the trigger body. So in this way, you can apply various uh, triggers on your database. So to understand this in a more better way, uh, let us jump into MySQL Workbench for further execution part. So as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and first let us uh, discuss how to create a before insert trigger now. Now as discussed earlier, a before insert trigger in SQL is invoked automatically whenever an insert operation is executed. So let us uh, discuss how to create a before insert trigger with its syntax and an example. Now in order to create a trigger, you have to first create a new table and then insert values into it to perform a trigger operation. But we already know how to create a table and uh, insert values into it. So let us just consider an already existing table, let's say new employees. So I'll just display the values, select star from new employees. So the new employees table has various attributes such as employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hiring date, job ID, salary, manager ID and department ID. Right. So let us now run the before insert uh, syntax. So first we have the delimiter here. Uh, now when we are writing uh, SQL statements, we generally use the semicolon, right? To separate two statements. Now, since uh, a trigger is a stored procedure, which consists of multiple statements operated by a column. So if you're using MySQL to define a stored procedure like trigger that contains semicolon characters, it will not treat the whole like the stored procedure as a single statement, but many statements. Therefore, you have to uh, define the delimiter temporarily so that you can pass the whole uh, the body of the trigger as a single statement. So typically we are just uh, separating uh, the statements using the uh, double slash here. So delimiter. Now we have to write the actual syntax for the before insert trigger, which is create trigger, which is the keyword I'm using. And let us take the uh, trigger name as let's say before insert, you can take it as per your own choice. Insert before insert is the keyword on the table that is new employees. Now I'm applying trigger for each row. So I'm specifying uh, for each row. Now here uh, comes the main part where you have to mention the condition. Now the trigger that I'll be invoking is uh, let's say now we have department IDs here, right? Uh, which are uh, having values like 10, 20, 50, 100, 60s and 100. So if you notice here, uh, we have the department IDs in the name in the multiples of uh, values of 10. So I'll be creating a trigger whenever a new user is trying to insert values into the table as department ID, which is less than 10. So in that case, I'll set the new department ID as zero. So the query would be if new dot department ID is less than 10, then set new dot 
department id equals to 0 so mention the end if and end double slash now you might get a doubt here uh, like why I'm using new dot department ID uh, now triggers allows access to values from the table for comparison purposes using the new and old keyword and this availability of keywords will also depend on the trigger event uh, which you're performing now since you're checking or modifying a value when you're trying to insert data using the new dot column modifier which is available whereas if you're trying to insert old values that is using the old dot column name value does not exist for an insert statement because there is no information exists in in its place beforehand so that is the reason i'm taking the new keyword here so we have created our trigger so let's just uh, execute this statement and we'll see the output okay there is an error so let me just so it says that trigger already exists uh, might be have taken it already so let me just change it and Keep it as department insert. So as you can see, our trigger has been successfully created. Now let us consider the new employee table again and let us insert some values to understand how this in, uh, works. So I'll be inserting some values into the table. So I'm using insert into new employees values. So mention the employee ID, let's say 288 comma Mention the name of the employee first name, let's say Carl and the last name as Haddon. Next we have email, so let's take C Haddon. Next we have phone number, just type a random number. Next we have hiring date, so let us take as 15th uh, June 2009. Next we have job ID, let's take SH clerk as our job ID. Next we have salary, uh, let's take 35,000. Next manager ID, let's take 125 or 126. Next we have the department ID, so we have, I'm taking the department ID here as 7. Right, so let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output. So our record has been inserted. So let me just uh, retrieve the values again. So if you scroll down a bit, uh, we have our uh, new details of our employee having employee ideas 288 whose name is Carl Haddon. And if you slide a bit and you can see that since we have inserted the department ID value as seven and the trigger will automatically uh, be created here, which is uh, department ID is less than 10, right? So automatically it has changed the value into zero. So in this way, you can use the before insert to create a trigger in your table. Right, so I hope you've understood how to create a before insert trigger. Uh, let's move ahead. Uh, let us now discuss how to create an after insert trigger. Now, after insert trigger in SQL is basically invoked automatically whenever an insert has already occurred on the table. So let us just understand this with an example. Uh, so let us consider the customer tables here. So let us just display the values in the customer table. So a customer table has uh, four attributes, which is customer ID, customer name, age, address, and we have a total of five records. So let us understand how this after insert uh, trigger works. Now we have customer ID starting from 101 and 105. Now basically I'm going to create a trigger like a, when, whenever a customer's details has been inserted which is having customer ID more than 200. So in that case I'll be inserting this into an other table instead of this customer table. So for that let us just create another table. So we can create a table using this icon here. So I'm creating a new table which is customer new and we'll create uh, the columns as well. So the column names need not be identical. It should uh, basically have the same data type even if it's not having the same column names. So ID and then we have name of the customer and then we and then we have the age and finally we have the address. 
right so let us just apply and we'll create a new table all right so we have created a new table which is customer new here so let us now uh, write the syntax for after insert so i'm again using the delimiter and let us create a trigger now create trigger so i'm taking the trigger name as again after insert you can take it as per your own choice so since we are creating after insert mention the after insert on the customer table for each row now begin so let us now create a trigger here so the condition that we have taken is if new dot first id is greater than uh, let's say 200 so in that case insert into customer new values new dot cust id comma new dot customer name and then we have new dot age comma new dot address right so let us just close this and we have the end if double slash so let us just execute this query and we'll see the output so our query has been successfully executed uh, let us now try to insert some values into the customer table so i'm using the insert into again insert into customer values so customer id let's say i'm taking 108 name of the customer let us take Tria. let us take the age as 24 and address as pune and similarly let us insert some more values uh, let us now take do not four as the customer id name as uh, harsh and age is 27 and address as chennai let us insert a final record which is uh, let's say 180 109 comma name as uh, Sam uh, age 24 city let us take Hyderabad close the brackets and let us insert one more final uh, record uh, let us take 214 as our customer ID uh, and the name will be John age 25 and city will be Mumbai right so we have inserted the values into our customer table so as you can see four rows have been inserted so let us just uh, display the records again so as you can see uh, we have four new records of the uh, customers having customer id 108 109 204 and 214 now let us see whether our trigger has been created or not so let us display the values from the customer new table now select star from customer new so as you can clearly see that the trigger that we have applied to our table is whenever the customer id exceeds 200 now in this case we have two ids of the customers which is 204 and 214 in that case the trigger will automatically insert new values into the new table instead of the previous table which is customer so in this way the after insert trigger works all right uh, moving ahead uh, let us now discuss about the before update in a uh, trigger now before update a uh, trigger in sql is invoked automatically whenever an update operation is performed or fired on the table associated with that trigger so let us just uh, understand this uh, with an uh, example here so let us just consider again the new employees table here for our reference added another attribute which is bonus in our table now basically the trigger which you are going to create will be of this sort wherein if you are uh, updating the salary of the employees let's say if you are updating the salary of uh, employees whose salary is greater than 40, 50,000 or 40,000 then we will set the bonus value as 5,000 and if the salary is less than 40,000 in that case their bonus will be 
3000. So let me just uh, write this syntax so that we'll have a clear understanding of it. So we'll use the delimiter again. Let us create a trigger update bonus. So we are creating before update trigger. So I'm writing the before update keyword on new employees for each row. Since we are performing on all the rows, mention the begin statement and mention the condition now. So the condition is basically is a new dot salary is greater than 40,000. So in that case, the new bonus value will be equals to 5,000. So else if, uh, if the salary new dot salary is less than 40,000. So in that case, we'll set the bonus value as 3000 set new bonus equals to 3000. So mention the semicolon and mention the end if since we have uh, used two end if statements, uh, if statements, so we'll mention end if two times before we close our uh, statement here. So let us now execute this statement and we'll see the output. So our query has been successfully created here guys. Uh, let us now uh, update the values in our new employee table. So let us write the update statement here. So I'm updating uh, the empl new employees table. So update new employees set salary equals to uh, let's say 45,000 for only limited uh, employees let's say uh, whose employee ID is more than 200. So I'm just taking a reference here or just an example or a scenario so that we'll have an understanding on how this before update trigger works. Whose employee ID is greater than 200. So right, let us just execute this statement. So as you can see, seven rows have been affected. So let us now display uh, the new employees table again. So I'm using the select star from new employees. All right, so let us move aside and see. Now, as you can clearly see that now employees who are having employees ID more than 200, which you have taken uh, in our query. Now, if you can see employee ID of Michael Haston is 201 and Pat Fay 202. And for Susan Marvis, uh, we have 203 and so on. So for all those employees, we have a bonus attached to their, uh, you know, salary, which is 5000, which is basically the cre uh, trigger that we have created. That is, if the salary is more than 40,000, in that case, we'll invoke a trigger where it will add bonus of 5000 to all those employees. So in this way, before update trigger works in SQL. So in the same way, you can also create the before and after delete trigger as well. Uh, so now that you've understood how to uh, implement this and uh, now try to implement this uh, before and insert delete in your system. If you are facing any issues, do let us know in the uh, comment section below. We'll help you out. Uh, if you still face uh, further issues, let us uh, know that if you, if you want us to create a separate video on those as you all know, while working with vast databases in SQL, several tables and data fields will require unique numbers. Now, for instance, a column of the table with a primary key or a unique constraint will always require a new number. That means in that field, you always need to enter a new number and it's not have any duplicate values. So you might be able to do it manually to a limited extent, but when it comes to enormous or large or huge databases, you might forget the last unique number you have entered or merely included the same number twice as it isn't easy to remember everything, right? Besides, it providing a unique number to all the records is also a tedious task. And that's where auto increment in SQL comes to play. So in this tutorial, we are going to discuss what exactly is auto increment in SQL and how to use it. 
So without any further delay, let's get started. Let us now jump head into MySQL Workbench for execution part. So as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started. Uh, let me just enter the password to enter into it. All right, we have logged in into our MySQL Workbench. So before getting into the execution part, let us just quickly understand what is auto increment. Now the auto increment in SQL is basically a feature that is applied to a field so that it can automatically generate and provide a unique value to every record that you enter in an SQL table. Now this field is often used as the primary key column where you need to provide a unique value for every record you add. However, it can also be used for unique constraint columns as well. So let us now understand this with an example here. So let me just create a new table uh, so that we can implement it. So let us create a new table here, which is let's say orders. Open the parenthesis and let us now uh, mention the columns that you want to create. So let us take uh, the first column as product ID and product ID will be of int and we'll make sure that it is not null. And then in a, if you're working on SQL, uh, you it applies an auto increment field with the keyword as auto increment. So we'll write it as auto increment. And then comma, mention the next attribute, let's say, let us take as customer ID in our order table. And I'm again giving int as the data type for this. And again, we cannot have customer ID as null. So I'm mentioning the constraint not null. Next, I'm mentioning the product name. That is a list of uh, orders that the uh, a customer has placed and the name of that product. And here I'm taking uh, the data type as varchar and I'm taking it size of up to 20. Next, uh, let us take, let's say quantity and let us then take it as in data type and let's, and finally we'll take price, which will be again of varchar of 20 size. So that's it. Uh, mention the comma and let us close it. So let us just execute the statement. Uh, there is an error. I don't know guys why it is showing as error. Uh, let me just check it once. So I think there is an error. So let us just uh, create a table using this icon here. And let us mention the column names here, which is customer ID. Sorry, first one will be product ID. Product ID. We have customer ID, and then we have Product name and then quantity and finally we'll take the price here. All right. So let us give uh, the product ID as the auto increment. We can.
So click on this auto increment uh, value where you can find it as AI and let us now execute, click on apply and our table will be created. So as you can see, our table has now created. Uh, so let us now just insert some values into it and we'll see the output. So mention the insert into, mention the table name that is orders. Now, in order to uh, insert the values into it, you know, you need not in, uh, write the product ID uh, column here. So we'll just directly write the customer ID and we'll see how the auto increment directly works. So customer ID, next we have uh, product name. Next we have quantity. Next we have price and mention values and insert some values. So customer ID, I'll just take it as 101. Next product name, let us take as AC for quantity, let's say two and price will be 60,000. All right. And similarly, let us insert another value here. I'm taking the next order customer ID as 102 and we'll take the uh, next product as cooker and close in my single brackets next we'll take quantity one and price will be 45,000 25,000 sorry and finally let us take another example uh, let's say 102 103 comma let's say phone as our next product name and we will take uh, the quantity as three and the price will be 90,000. All right, we are good to go now. Let us execute the statement and we'll see the output. Sorry, orders, new right. So as you can see, three rows have been uh, inserted. So let me just display the values from it. So, so as you can see, uh, in the product ID column where we haven't mentioned it in our insert statement and it is automatically generating the values like sequential starting from one, two and three. Now you can also make an auto increment in SQL uh, to start from another value with the following syntax using the alter table as well, guys. Now let's say if you're working on an employee table or let's say if you are working on any other student table for example in that uh, it might be of different uh, digits like the employee id can be of five digits or six digits so in that case you have to change the order in which you want to create and increase the employee ids right so in that case what we'll do is we'll write alter table and then mention the table name so we are taking orders new table here and mention the auto increment keyword and set from where you want to start it. So let's say if I want to start it from uh, uh, 12,001, right? So let us just execute and we'll see the output. So our query has been executed. So let us now uh, insert some more values into our table and we'll see how it goes. So let me just... Uh, now I'll add some more values like uh, 107 comma the product name as cooker, let's say the quantity two and the price will be uh, 50,000. Similarly, let us take another record, let's say 109 comma, let us take as tablet as our product name and then we'll mention the number of quantity as four and price will be 1,50,000. All right, so let's just execute the statement and we'll see the output. So uh, two rows have been inserted into a table successfully. So let us just uh, call the uh, orders new table again. So let me just use the select statement, select star from orders, orders new. 
So as you can see, the now the two records that we have inserted, which is of customer ID 107 and 109 and the orders they have placed as cooker and tablet. Now, if you look at the product ID, we have started uh, their product ID from 12,001 and sequentially it will uh, increase the value by one. That is now we have 12,001 and next we have the 12,002. So in this way, you can use the auto increment in SQL to set up uh, values in order to make them uh, automatically update for your for your database. Now, instead of writing every time, you can just simply mention the auto increment and it will do the job. And if you're working on various other databases like uh, SQL Server or even Oracle, in that case, the syntax will change. In that case, what you have to do is in the create statement, you have to take uh, the keyword as identity and mention the uh, values from which your uh, column name, uh, column values will start. Let's say I'm taking as 100 comma and how much values you want to increment. Like let's say if I mention one, it will increase the value by one, like 100, 101, 102 and so on. But if I take it as let's say five, then it will start from 100. Next, the value will be 105, 110 and so on. So in this way, if you're working on various other databases, you can use this as well. So that brings us to the end of today's session, guys. Uh, I hope you understood how to use the auto increment in SQL. So now that you have learned everything about auto increment in SQL and you have gone through the use of auto increment in SQL uh, and to set up in different DBMS servers. So I hope you can uh, execute in your system. As you all know, as a SQL developer, you often work with enormous amounts of data stored in different tables, right? So that are present inside the multiple databases. Now it often becomes uh, difficult to extract the data if it is not organized correctly. So using normalization, you can solve the problem of data redundancy and organize the data using different forms. So this tutorial will help you to get or uh, know the concepts of normalization in SQL in detail. So without any further ado, let us uh, dive into today's topic. So let me just present you my screen. Firstly, let us go through the agenda for today's session, guys. Uh, we'll start the tutorial by understanding what is normalization in SQL and then we'll understand why do we need normalization. And after that, we'll discuss various types of normalization used in SQL, which are basically different normal forms such as first normal form, second normal form, third normal form and BCNF, which is boys for normal form. And finally, we'll wrap up the session uh, by discussing some advantages and disadvantages of normalization. So without any further ado, let us just dive into today's topic. All right. So what is normalization in SQL? Normalization is the process to eliminate data redundancy and enhance data integrity in the table. Normalization also helps to organize the data in the database. And it is a multi-step process that sets the data into tabular form and removes all the duplicated data. That is the repeated data in the relational database tables. Normalization organizes the columns and tables of a database to ensure the database integrity constraints pro properly execute uh, their dependencies. So it is a systematic technique of decomposing tables to eliminate data redundancy and various other undesirable characteristics. Now to better understand this concept, it simply means to bring something to its normal state. Now from that, what I mean is the columns and tables are organized to ensure that the data integrity constraints are appropriately executed with their dependencies in normalization. So normalization in SQL is mainly used to re uh, reduce the redundancy of the data. Since SQL is a language that interacts with the database to start any interactions with the data in the database, the data which is present in this database should be in the normalized form before it is processed further. So that's why normalization in SQL improves the data distribution in the database across. Next. Why do we need normalization? Now, as discussed earlier, normalization is used to uh, reduce data redundancy, which is the most important thing. So it provides a method uh, to remove the following anomalies from the database and bring it to a more consistent state. Now, a database anomaly is a flaw in a database that occurs because of various reasons such as poor planning and redundancy. Now, there are various reasons such as insertion anomalies, which occurs when we are not able to insert data into a database because some attributes may be missing at the time of insertion. Next, we have updation anomaly as well, which occurs when the same data items are repeated with the same values and are not linked to each other. 
and finally we have deletion anomaly which occurs when deleting one part of the data deletes the other unnecessary or necessary information from the database so that is the reason we need normalization so if i put them into a nutshell these are the main objectives of normalization guys so the normalization removes duplicate data and database anomalies from the relational database it also redu reduces redundancy and complexity of database by clearing unwanted records or values in the database it is also used to avoid creating and updating any unwanted data connections and dependencies now if you are working on a multiple ta tables there may be a chance of unwanted connections uh, so normalization prevents that it is also used to optimize storage space as well guys now you don't want unnecessary or repeated values in a in your database uh, tables right so to organize and optimize the storage space we need normalization and finally isolation of data is also maintained now a good design database states that the changes in one table or field do not should not affect each other so this can be achieved through normalization so these were some of the uh, important characteristics of normalizations and why we need it all right moving ahead let us now discuss some different types of uh, normalization in sql now there are four types of normal forms that are usually used in relational database as you can see in the following figure the first one is first normal form of 1f next we have second normal form of 2nf next we have three third normal form of 3nf and finally we have boys called normal form now actually we divide the normalization process into a set of normal forms so a normal form is nothing but a form of a table that follows some let's say a rules or regulations that prevent the above anomalies that we have discussed earlier to some extent so let us discuss about them in detail and see how they are different from each other and understand why they are important so first what is first normal form or 1nf now a table is referred to as being in its first normal form if atomicity of the table is 1 here atomicity states that a single cell cannot hold multiple values is it must hold only a single valued attribute the first normal form disallows the multi valued attribute composite attributes and their combinations i hope this is quite a bit confusing so let us just understand the first normal form with the help of an example so these are the two conditions which i have already discussed that the condition to for a table to be in first normal form is that every table should cell uh, should contain a single value and each and every record must be unique all right let us understand with an example now in the student uh, table uh, let's say you can see the course column has uh, certain values so if you look at some of the uh, courses and uh, assigned to each student we have more than one column that is the course column has two values thus it does not follow the first normal form now if you use the first normal form uh, to the above table you can get the below table as a result if you look at the side the second table in that we have basically divided or the record into two parts that is harsh whose roll number is 1 who has enrolled in courses sql and java which were basically dividing into two records separately that is harsh 22 sql course and similarly harsh 22 into java and similarly we have for kunal as well who has enrolled for uh, courses c and html and also we have sanya who has uh, enrolled for python and sql which we have uh, basically separated into two uh, different records so by applying the first normal form you can achieve atomicity and also every column has unique values so that was first normal form guys let us now move into the next normal form which is second normal form so the second step in a normalization is basically 2nf or the second normal form which is basically an additional layer added to the 1nf so a table or a relation is in 2nf only if the relation the table should be uh, in first normal form that is it should satisfy all the properties of the first normal form while the relations every non prime attribute depends on every candidate key as a whole so it should meet all the rules and every non key attribute is fully dependent on the primary key so i hope this is a bit challenging and confusing so let us again understand this uh, with an example here all right now the uh, second normal form states that there shouldn't be any partial dependency you know partial dependency is nothing but if a proper subset of a candidate key determines the non prime attribute then it is called a partial dependency so let me just uh, explain you with an example here consider this uh, student table here which has student id project id student name and project name here 
Now, in the above table, if you look at clearly, we have partial dependency. Let us understand how. Now, the prime key attributes here are student ID and project ID. And as stated, the non-prime attributes that is student name and project name should be functionally dependent on part of a candidate key to be partially dependent. Uh, I hope you uh, confusing between the keys guys. So if you want to learn more about SQL keys, we have a dedicated and a separate video on our channel. So make sure you check that out. So coming back to uh, the second normal form. So the student name can be determined here by partial dependent. So therefore the student project uh, relation, the table violates this uh, 2NFA normalization and is considered a bad database design. So to remove this partial dependency and the violation of 2, uh, 2NF, we have to further decompose this table in order to satisfy the property of uh, second normal form. So let us now understand how can we do that. Now basically I am converting this student table into two separate tables which is student info and project info. Now the student info table has the student ID, project ID and the student name whereas the project info has project ID and project name. Now a student name can be identified separately with the help of student ID. So it is uniquely identifying every record of the student name using the student ID. Hence the consider uh, the the condition has been satisfied here and similarly we have the project info with the help of project ID we can uh, get the name of different projects that are allotted to students. So now the relation is in second normal form in the form of uh, a database normalization using the second normal form. I hope you understood that guys. So moving ahead let us now understand what is third normal form. Now. In, it is a normalization level in DBMS similar to that of 1NF and uh, similarly 2NF. So a relation is said to be in third normal form in SQL when it is in the second normal form but no transitive dependency exists for a non-prime attribute. So let me just clearly explain you again. Now a given relation is said to be in its third normal form when it is in 2NF that is it should satisfy uh, second normal form properties that is ultimately indirectly it should satisfy first normal form as well but has no transitive partial dependency meaning when no transitive dependency exists for the attributes that are non-prime then the relation can be said to be in 3NF. So let's say in simpler words if I say it should be in 1NF or 2NF when none of the non-primary key attribute transitively uh, depend on their primary keys then we can say that relation is in third normal form of 3NF. So we can say that a relation is in third normal form uh, when it holds any of the given condition in case of functional dependency that is non-trivial where P uh, let's say X relates to Y where X acts as a super key and Y acts as a non-prime attribute meaning every element of Y forms a part of a candidate key. So let us understand this uh, with a simple example guys so that you will have a clear uh, understanding of that. So for that I am taking another table which is employee ID, employee name, department name, uh, city, zip code as its attributes. Alright, now the super key in the table mentioned above can be candidate ID, candidate ID plus candidate name or else candidate ID, candidate name and candidate uh, let's say zip code and so on. Now the candidate key here is basically the employee ID because it is uniquely identifying each and every record. So if you look at the non-prime attributes, all the attributes in the table mentioned above are non-prime instead only uh, instead of the employee ID, right? So notice that uh, employee ID and the employee uh, city that the employee belongs to are dependent on candidate zip code and the employee's uh, zip code and uh, employee zip code is dependent on the employee ID. Here all the non-prime attributes like the city of the employee and employees uh, state are dependently transitively on the super key which is employee id so the transitive dependency here would violate the rule of the third normal form thus we must move the employee city and the employees uh, zip code to a new table of uh, let's say into another table which is zip info so if you look at this uh, resultant table where i have uh, segregated the original table which is the employee table into three different tables here which has the first one is employee info which holds the employee ID, employee name, department as the attributes and its information 
and in the second table we have department id and department name separately and finally i'm categorizing uh, the cities based on their zip codes that is into zip info table so in this way you can use the third normal form uh, to perform the normalization using the three nf characteristics all right let us now move into the final uh, normalization which is bcnf now applications of uh, general definitions of 2nf and 3nf may identify additional redundancy caused by the dependencies that can violate one or more candidates key in a table so however despite these additional constraints dependencies can still exist that will uh, cause redundancy to be present in 3nf relations so this weakness in 3nf resulted in the presentation of a much stronger normal form called boy scout normal form or simply bcnf so it was uh, initially started it was coined by uh, dr h uh, cord in 1970 1974 so we will understand how this works so it basically adds a more layer to our first normal form second normal form as well as the third normal form so a boy scout normal form is also known as a 3.5 nf which is a superior or advanced version of 3 nf and was developed by raymond f boys as discussed which could tackle certain types of anomalies which were not resolved with the help of uh, the third normal form so the first condition of the table to be in boy scout normal form is that uh, the table should be in the third normal form and secondly every right hand side attribute of the functional dependency should depend on the super key of that particular table so for example for any dependency let's say a relation x to y x must be a candidate key or a super key in other words for dependency x relates to y if y is a any prime attribute so x cannot be a non prime attribute so now in general if a table is in a third normal form it would possibly be in bcnf and similarly like 4nf and 5nf as well so we do not need much of bcnf uh, if we know what is exactly 1nf 2nf and 3nf we are good to go and which, which is more than sufficient uh, for a beginner level so that was all about the bcnf guys and that brings us to the end of uh, today's session and let us now finally understand some of the benefits of normalization by understanding some advantages of normalization now the first obvious reason is it reduces redundant data now we might have a multiple data or multiple values in our database uh, without because of human errors or we do not know what we are entering so we might uh, add additional files without our knowledge so in order to reduce that you know repeated values or unnecessary records we need normalization normalization also provides data consistency within the database and and it is also more flexible and it gives more flexible data design which in turn uh, gives a higher database security and it is also better and quicker in execution as well so that was some main uh, you see advantages of normalization and talking about uh, disadvantages there are not there aren't much uh, disadvantages to talk about uh, like since the data is not duplicated we need table joins uh, you know more numbers which would make queries more complicated and thus read times are also slower since joins are required the indexing of the uh, tables also does not work as efficiently again this makes read time slower because the joins don't typically work well with the index indexing so that brings us to the uh, end of today's tutorial guys i hope you understood the tutorial so let us just wrap up uh, what we have discussed we have discussed about various uh, normal forms such as 1nf 2nf and 3nf in our tutorial so in this tutorial you have seen normalization in sql in a glance and understood how the different normal forms of normalization now you can organize the data in the database and remove the data redundancy and promote and achieve data integrity so in terms of if you are working on the sql databases this isn't much an important concept but this tutorial also helps for you if you are preparing for any interviews which will, which is a basic question which is asked in many of the interviews in various companies so it is important to understand the concept of normalization in sql so i hope you understood this and so good indexes are the key to good performance in sql and the key to creating good indexes is to understand what indexes are and 
how SQL uses them to evaluate queries. Now, an SQL index is a structure within SQL to which is used to quickly locate specific rows within a table. More on that soon. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest technologies and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's topic. Firstly, let us go through the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what is indexing in SQL and then we'll go through different characteristics of indexing in SQL. After that, we'll understand why we exactly use indexing in SQL. Up next, we'll discuss how exactly indexing works in SQL and then we'll discuss how to create an index using its syntax and after that, we'll be going through the syntax and execution of the indexing part in MySQL Workbench using certain examples. After that, let us uh, discuss advantages and disadvantages of using indexing. And finally, we'll wrap up the session by understanding when you should be using and when you should not be using uh, indexing in SQL. I hope the agenda is clear. Uh, so let us just dive into straight into today's topic. All right. So what is indexing in SQL? Indexes are basically a special lookup tables that need to be used by database search engine to speed up the data retrieval process. So an index is simply a reference to data in a table and a database index is similar to that to the index in a uh, back of a book. Now, it also retrieves a vast amount of data from the tables quickly. So if you're working on large databases that has chunks amount of data, in that case, indexing is useful. Now, indexing makes columns faster to query by creating pointers to where data is stored within a database. We'll understand when uh, we'll discuss how exactly uh, indexing work. So now, for example, in order to reference all pages in a book that address a particular subject, you go to the index first, which lists all the topics alphabetically, right? So if you consider a textbook, it, it has various topics which caters to a particular subject. So if you want to find a particular uh, topic, you go to one or more specific page numbers. Now indexes are in a database are similar to that of indexes that you find in a book guys. So if a book has an index and if I ask you to find a chapter in that book, you can quickly find that with the help of the index. On the other hand, if the book does not have any index, you'll have to spend more time looking for the chapter by looking at each and every page from the start to the end of the book. So it is time taking and tedious as well. So simply you can uh, use the index and you can directly go to that page. So basically indexes uh, prevent duplicate entries in the columns or combination of columns on which it is created. So you can say that uh, MySQL indexes are quickly used to find rows within a specific column values and without an index MySQL or any SQL database must scan the whole table to locate the relevant rows. So now the larger the table becomes the slower it searches. So I hope you understood what exactly is indexing in SQL. Let us now understand why we use indexing in SQL. Now indexes are built to provide faster data access to the user to the specific data your query is trying to retrieve. Now indexing in DBMS is a technique that uses data structures to optimize the searching time of a database query and makes the overall database performance better. Now indexes are used for faster data recovery guys. Uh, indexes are used to quickly locate data without having to search every row in a database table every time a database table is accessed. Indexes can be created using one or more columns of a database uh, providing the basis for both random lookups and efficient access of ordered records. And finally, indexes provide search efficiency. An index can be used to efficiently find all rows matching some columns in your query and then walk through only that subset of the table to find exact matches. So if you don't have uh, indexes on any column in the where clause or the select clause, the SQL engine has to walk through the whole table and check every row to see if it matches, which may be a slow operation on big tables or if you're working on large data sets, which has like thousands or lakhs of data. So these are the main uh, reasons why we exactly use indexes in SQL. All right, let us now understand how exactly uh, indexing works. Now, generally the database takes the columns provided with the create index command and sorts the column values using a special data structure called as B trees. Now a B tree is a type of tree data structure that contains two things, which is uh, basically the index and the uh, index key and the corresponding disk address. 
Now index key refers to a certain disk address and that disk further contains rows or tuples of data. Now using B tree we can achieve faster searches and faster retrievals of data. And since the data structure of B tree is sorted in order, it makes a search more efficient. So this is how in general index works in SQL. So let us understand this uh, with an example here guys. Now let us consider uh, we have an employee table which has uh, let's say 200 records in it. Now employee ID in that table let us consider it as a primary key. So by default an index on the employee ID column is created. This means employee data is sorted by uh, employee ID column and physically stored in series of data pages here in a tree like structure that look like the following which is uh, like the visible on the screen as you can see. Uh, so let's say the nodes at the bottom of the tree are basically called as data pages or leaf nodes and contains the actual data rows in our case the employee data's uh, information. So these employee rows are sorted by employee ID column because employee ID is the primary key and by default an index on this column is already created. Now for example let's say uh, in our employee table we have 200 rows and let us assume in each data page we have uh, let's say 25, 25 rows in each of them. So the first data page we have is from 1 to 25. In the second we have from 26 to 50 and then 51 to 75 and so on and so forth. And the node at the top of the tree as you can see is called as the root node guys. And the node between the root node and the leaf node are called as intermediate level nodes. So the root and the intermediate level nodes contain index rows. As you can see the uh, 1 to 200 rows has been further uh, subjugated into 1 to 100 and into 101 to 200 and so on. So each index row contains a key value which is in our case as the employee ID and a pointer to either an intermediate intermediate level page in the B tree or a data row in the leaf node is been given. So this tree like structure has a series of pointer that helps the query engine find data quickly. Now let us understand how SQL finds the particular row by ID that we want to search. For example, let's say we want to find employee row which is having employee ID as uh, 96. So in that case, how the uh, SQL engine uh, performs indexing on this data. So basically the database engine starts at the root node and it picks the index node which is the root node that is from 1 to 200 and it basically searches on the left side because the 1 to 200 uh, data has been further divided into 1 to 100 onto the left side, right? So because the data engine knows it is this node that contains employee ID from uh, 1 to 100, it will basically look for all the records starting from 1 to 100. From there, it picks the leaf node that is present on the extreme left because employee data rows from 1 to 100 again and are present in this leaf node. And then the data rows in the leaf node are sorted by employee ID. So it is easy for the database engine to find the employee row with ID 96 here. So as you can see in just three operations, uh, SQL is able to find the data we are looking for. So it's making use of the index we have on the table and performing the operation in the most simplest way. So this is how exactly SQL indexing works. All right, moving ahead, let us now discuss how to create an index in SQL. Now creating an index involves a create index statement, which allows you to name the index name to the specify the table and which column or columns that you want to create index. So this command is used for basically generating the table index in uh, SQL using the built index expression. So let us now go through the syntax. The syntax is followed as create index, which is the keyword index name on table name and in the, within the brackets you have to mention the column name. So if you want to create indexes for more than one column, in that case you have to mention the different column names uh, and the query is followed as create index, index name on table name, column one, column two and so on. So basically we can uh, generate sorted list using indexes in SQL instead of having to create new sorted table which would take up a lot of storage space, right? So for example, if I want to create an index, uh, let's say index underscore ID on a table called uh, students and on the column student ID, then in that case, the uh, query would be followed as create index, index ID on students, student ID. So basically, if you are working on the student ID uh, column and if you want to fetch details which has a relation to that attribute, in that case, you can use this example. I hope the syntax is clear. So let us now jump straight into MySQL Workbench for the execution part. 
So as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and uh, we are good to go now. So as discussed earlier, in order to perform indexing in SQL, you need a data set or a table that has a large number of records. Now, when I talk about record number of records, it shouldn't be like a hundred or 200. It should have more than hundred, like in thousands. So I have downloaded a data set from Kaggle, uh, which is of uh, Netflix information, which is, as you can see in this uh, Excel sheet, which has the uh, show ID, the type, uh, title, director, country, date added, release year, rating, duration, and the genre of that particular uh, movie or show. So if you look at this table, we have like thousands of records, I guess. Uh, let me just scroll down and show you guys. So as you can see, we have a chunk of records. Uh, as you can see, we have a total of 1896 records. So I think we can perform indexing on this table and we'll see how it works. So let us just import the data set first. So right click on the uh, table section, click on browse and the table name is Netflix. Open the table, next, click on next. Again, click on next and we are good to go and we can import uh, the data now. So click on next again. So wait some time uh, depending upon your net speed or uh, your uh, RAM functions, uh, it will take some time. So just hold back for some time and let it finish. So as you can see, uh, the data has been successfully imported. Click on next. I think only 264 records have been imported. I don't know why exactly, but it's okay. Uh, let us go ahead and uh, let us understand how it works anyway. So let us just uh, double click here and we'll refresh the schema part. As you can see, Netflix table has been added. So let me just uh, display the values from the table. So I'm using the select operator, select star from Netflix. So let us execute this query and we'll see the output. As you can see, uh, various attributes that we have discussed earlier has been displaying in our resultant table. So let us now go ahead and we'll, uh, let us write a simple query first. Let's say if I want to select all the titles uh, or the shows that are related to movie type and uh, that have the release year, let's say after 2000. So in that case, I'll uh, take as select title, comma, type, comma, release. Uh, okay, yes. title type from table Netflix, where release year is greater than 2000. So let me just uh, execute this query. So as you can see, it will display the records of all those titles and the type of that uh, show or the movie name, which is released after 2000. Now, if you look at the duration part, I am not sure why it is showing 0, 0.00 seconds, but it should like, it should specify like more than uh, like half a second or something, but I'm not sure why it is, but it is showing like that. So maybe since we have imported only a limited number of rows, that is like almost around 300. That is the reason why it is showing uh, in 0.00 seconds. But in generally, if you're working on large data sets, which have thousands of records, it will generally take uh, like 0.05 or 0.36 seconds like that. So let us go ahead and let us just create a, you know, a simple index for this table Netflix. So the query is, uh, followed as create index. Let us take uh, index. I'm taking indexing on title. So I'll just specify index. Okay, Netflix will mention the table name here. On table name that is Netflix and mention all the columns that you want to create an index on. So I'll basically specify the title and the type. Okay, first we'll discuss on one column and we'll see the output. So let us execute this. So there was an error in the data type that we have mentioned since uh, the title, which is the column uh, name has a data type of text. So we have to mention the uh, number of bytes that it takes. So I'm basically mentioning 20 here. So let us just execute the statement and we'll see the output. So as you can see, our uh, index, which is index underscore Netflix has been successfully created. And if you look at the duration here, it has taken 0 0.078 seconds in order to execute this query. Now, similarly, uh, if you're working on large data sets and we are, when you're querying data, for example, select title type from Netflix, where release year is greater than 2000, it generally takes more than like half a second, but I don't know why it is showing since we have taken uh, only certain number of records. 
So again, when you uh, retrieve the query where you want to select title type from the Netflix where the release year is greater than 2000, it will basically take duration almost like in milliseconds, like it is showing 0 0.00 seconds, but it will take a max to max up to one or two milliseconds only. So in this way, you can use uh, index on certain columns. Now, if you want to create multiple uh, indexes on different co various columns, you can uh, specify the different column names as well. So I'll just copy this and I'll show you how it actually works. So title and similarly, I want to uh, create an index for the type as well. So 20. Let me just execute this statement. So I think we have to take another uh, keyword here. So let me just take index new on Netflix. So as you can see, a new index has been created successfully, wherein it will create a new index for title and type. So whenever you are performing a certain query in order to retrieve the data from these two columns, that is title and type, it will basically speed up the query process and it will retrieve the results quickly. So let's say if you want to uh, know all the indexes that you have applied on the table. So in that case, you have to uh, write as show index from table name, which is Netflix. So it will basically show all the uh, index uh, details. As you can see, we have created three indexes till now on the Netflix table. For example, index Netflix, index new, index new two, two times. Uh, we have created uh, indexes on column names like title, type, and similarly, you can see the index type is of B3, which we have uh, discussed earlier. And it of course has null values. Now, finally, if you want to delete uh, the indexes that you have created on your table, in that case, you have to mention drop index. So the index uh, that we have created, for example, let's say index Netflix on Netflix table. So it would basically drop the index. So as you can see, it was successfully uh, deleted. So let me just show the indexes as you can clearly see index Netflix has been successfully created. So in this way, you can use uh, the indexes as I discussed earlier uh, in order to make sure that your results are being processed fast and the data that you have in your tables are being retrieved quickly. So in that case, you will basically use the indexes. I hope you understood with this. So let us now move ahead and let us uh, discuss some advantages and dis disadvantages of indexes. So firstly, let us discuss some of the advantages of index. Uh, index basically gives the query optimization, which basically gives increased performance in searching for records or even sorting records, grouping different records or maintaining a unique uh, columns. And it will also speed up the select query. And similarly, you can also uh, speed up the process of the queries using the select as well as the where clause as well. Index also gives you uniqueness, guys. Uh, indexes like primary key index and unique uh, index helps to avoid duplicate rows data. And finally, indexes make it possible to quickly retrieve data, which is obviously one of the main characteristics uh, of indexes. Now, there are a certain number of disadvantages as well. Uh, the first one is the indexes takes up more or additional uh, disk space. Usually the space usage, usage isn't significant, but because of creating index on every column in every possible combination, the index file would uh, grow much more quickly from the data file. So in the case when a table is of larger table size or the data set you're performing is of a uh, larger size, the index file could reach the operating system's maximum file size and it can take a lot of uh, size as well. Now, secondly, the indexes slow down the speed of writing queries such as insert, update and delete because uh, in MySQL, MySQL has to internally maintain the pointers to the inserted rows in the actual data file. So there is a performance deficit uh, in order to pay in case of above said the writing queries like insert operations, update operations and delete operations because every time a record is updated or changed or manipulated, the indexes must also be updated. So however, you might be able to write your queries in a way that do not cause that very Notable, noticeable performance degradation, right? So these were some advantages and disadvantages of indexing. 
So finally, we'll move to our segment, which is when should you avoid uh, using indexes in SQL? Now, indexes should not be used in small tables. Like as I said earlier, indexes are only confined to large data sets or large tables that you want to uh, retrieve the information from. So if a table has, let's say, less than thousands of records, I think it's better to avoid using indexes and it will be of no use as well. Next. Tables that have frequent or large batch updates or insert operations. Now you can use indexes on uh, huge chunks of data sets that have like frequent changes to its you know values. For example, if you're performing uh, various search or insert operations on your tables, in that case, you can take the uh, index. And finally, attributes and fields that are frequently manipulated should not be indexed. So if you're working on certain columns and the values that are frequently manipulated or updated, in that case, you have to not use indexes. So that were uh, some exemptions in the cases where... So as discussed earlier, we will be discussing about SQL regex, which is uh, regular expressions. Now, as we all know, databases are enormous, enormous collections of data that are stored into organized data sets. But frequently, we encounter circumstances in which we need to get some particular data but lack the information necessary to filter it out. Regular expressions which is a fantastic feature of SQL comes in handy in this situation. So in this tutorial, I will provide you with entire explanation of SQL regex and we'll see how to use them through these uh, mediums of various syntaxes and etc. So let me just uh, present my screen so that we will go to the presentation part. All right, I hope my screen is clearly visible guys. Uh, so let us first understand what is SQL regex. Now SQL regex is defined as regular expression which contains a sequence of characters that are used to search and find a particular sequence of characters that matches a pattern. It is a rule that defines uh, the way characters should appear on an expression. Search pattern is determined by the sequence of character or set text. Say for example, if you want to identify the data that contains a combination like a student's name, a contact number, email ID, we can use a regular expression. It is also used in cases where you need to identify a particular text pattern or you need to apply a filter over numbers, text or special characters data. Now you might be wondering, we have SQL like operations. So why is it, how is it different from uh, the like, op like operation? So basically guys, if you're working on complex data set and uh, if you're search pattern is quite difficult. In that case, you have to use the SQL regex. So basically, re uh, regular expression provide a pro powerful means of identifying a pattern within a body of text. So a pattern describes what the text to identify looks like and it could be something quite simple such as that which describes any, like, let's say a three letter word or a four letter word to something quite complex like that which can describe as an email address. So it is a tool that gives you a concise and flexible way to identify strings of text for a text example, like characters, words based on patterns and etc. So let us now understand why we use SQL regex. Now regular expressions provide a powerful and flexible pattern matching that can help us implement power search utilities for our database systems. And it are also, and it is also not case sensitive. That is, it can work on both uppercase and the lowercase as well. So if you want a particular case, uh, you can mention them and you can proceed with your uh, database set. So basically it provides a simple yet powerful mechanism for rapidly uh, describing patterns and greatly simplifies the way in which you search, extract, format and manipulate the data in your database. The second reason is it queries database to find a smaller subset of data within a table. Now we, as we, we all know that a simple form of pattern matching has been a part of SQL through the likes of the SQL like operator condition that provides two variants of wildcards with the zero or more than one characters that is the percentage and the underscore. So such characters are termed as meta characters as they describe the pattern rather than the partake in it. So a simple example could be like, you know, if you want to uh, find a name that starts with ABC. In that case, we use ABC percentage that matches any row that uh, begins with the characters ABC, right? So in many cases, like is limiting and other solutions have been sought as mean to perform more complex queries. So 
that is the reason we started using SQL regex. And finally, as discussed, it supports, supports various meta characters for more flexibility. Now, unlike SQL like which provides only two wild characters that is percentage and underscore, we have a lot of meta characters uh, when we use regular expressions, which we'll be discussing in a while. So those are some of the reasons why we need to use SQL regex. And finally, uh, we'll discuss how it is different from uh, SQL like operation as well when we jump into MySQL for uh, execution part. So let us now understand the syntax of uh, regex, that is a regular expression. The syntax is followed as select column list from table name where string column regular expression pattern. So basically the statement performs a pattern match of a string column against a pattern. So if a value in the string column matches the pattern, the expression in the uh, where clause returns true, otherwise it returns false. So if either a string column or the pattern is null, the result rent set is also null. So again, we have the select statement, uh, which is the standard SQL keyword to retrieve the data. And we have the column list, which basically specify the rows that are to be retrieved. And we have where clause, which is used to specify a condition while fetching the data. And then we have the field names, which represents the name of the column on which the regular expression needs to be applied on. And then we also have the regex P, which is the keyword that uh, is used to find the pattern. And finally, you have to mention the pattern, which is basically a user defined regex pattern using certain meta characters to search the data. All right. So let us now discuss some regular expression meta characters that are used uh, in SQL. Now, the first one is the asterisk operator. So the asterisk meta character basically is used to match zero or more instances of the strings preceding it. Now we'll understand this uh, when we are executing in the MySQL workbench. So I'll just explain the description of how this uh, meta characters work. So next we have the plus meta character, which is used to match one or more instances of a string. And next we have the question meta character, which is used to match zero or only one instance of a string. And then we have the dot character, which is used to match any single character in exception of any new line. And then we have the caret which is uh, the symbol which you can see and we have the vertical bar or the pipe symbol which is used to start the matching at beginning and which is used to find the uh, characters alternatively respectively. Next we have the square brackets and the uh, closed brackets which are used to match any of the characters in the enclosed characters which basically uh, matches all the characters that are mentioned within the brackets and if you want to find exact uh, so exact name or the character's name, you have to take the closed brackets. And then we have the closed brackets and well, we have the uh, caret, caret uh, meta character, which is used to match only character, those characters, excluding the ones that are enclosed within the uh, square brackets. And finally, and next we have the uh, uppercase and lowercase characters as well. If you want to specify only, if you want to retrieve only certain uh, data which is in like if you if you want in uppercase letters you can use from a to z which in upper cases and similarly in uh, lower cases that is from a to z and finally you can also perform operations on the numerical values as well so within these uh, square brackets you can mention any numbers starting from ranging from 0 to 9 which basically matches any digits from 0 through 9 so these are the most commonly used regular expression meta characters so let us now discuss some uh, SQL regex operation and see how they exactly work. So you can also take a snapshot of this so that you can, it can be handy in future as well. So for example, if I have an expression where I'm uh, stating as ABC, that means the query is basically searching the exact character sequence that is ABC, that it should be in a proper sequence, but it can be in anywhere that can be in any position of this string. And next we have the caret ABC, that is ABC should uh, start at the beginning of this string. And similarly, we have ABC dollar sign, which will basically search for ABC pattern at the end of this string. And we have A pi B, which will uh, retrieve the values, which has either a character A or B. Now we can also perform multiple uh, operations using various meta characters simultaneously. Now, if you look at here, I have uh, taken the caret, I have taken the pipe symbol as well as the dollar symbol. So which basically states that it will look for the string ABC at the beginning or at the end of the string. 
so and so on you can look at uh, different operations which we'll uh, now discuss as we jump into the mysql workbench for execution part so let us just jump into mysql workbench so as you can see mysql workbench has started uh, let us now consider a simple table to perform mysql regular operation so let us just consider the netflix table which is in our database so let me just ret retrieve the values i'm using select star from netflix so the netflix table has various attributes here guys uh, which has show id type title director uh, country date which is added release year rating duration and genre so let us perform some basic to advanced uh, you know sql regular uh, queries so let us start with a simple one which matches literally the complete uh, sequence of a string that we have discussed earlier so let's say if i want to find the title from the netflix table where the title starts with let's say let us take any uh, sequence like ran okay uh, in that case the following query would be select title from netflix where title regexp is the keyword and within a single quotes mention the characters that you want to see so let us take ran as i've said earlier let us just execute this query and we'll see the output so it will basically search for all those titles which has ra and that is ran in the same order or the same sequence so if you look at your paranoia which has a r a n in the same or the uh, in the same order and similarly we have transformers again which uh, it has r a n and if you ne look at the next title which is how to become a tyrant similarly in tyrant we have r a n and so on so in this case you can uh, you can take the multiple characters to find a complete sequence that is in its original sequence all right moving ahead uh, not just only characters guys uh, you can also find for a particular word which is basically a substring so let's say if i want to find uh, let us consider love so if you want love in our title let us just mention love in the single brackets and we'll see the output so as you can see there are a total of three titles that has a love substring in the complete title for example sam smith love goes lever tabby road studios and next we have love don't cost a thing and finally love in a puff all right moving ahead let us now discuss another uh, example where we'll use the asterisk the plus sign and the question mark so let's say if i want to find the title from the netflix table again where in the pattern is it starts with a and n and it should at least have a one instance that it occurs and finally it should have an k so what i know it's a bit confusing so let me just write the query so that you guys will understand so select title from netflix where title regexp a n star operator and mention k so what this query does is it will find all the titles from the netflix table which has a which has n that is now as we discussed the asterisk operator finds you know characters which have zero or more instances that occurs in a table right so in that case the asterisk operators work so let us now execute and we'll see the output so as you can see these are all the titles that has a and k as a sequence wherein it can have zero or more than one n so if you look at uh, sankofa it has a and k which has one n and similarly if you look at the uh, bangkok breaking it does not have n in between that is because it can have zero or more than one n so in that case we are taking uh, the bangkok breaking as well in our title and similarly the others as well so in this way if you want to use uh, this asterisk operator wherein the first one has a character and then the next one has zero or more than one instance of appearing in the uh, sequences that you have mentioned in that case you'll use the asterisk operator so let us now take another example where we'll understand how to use the uh, the pipe uh, meta character let's say if you want to find the genre 
of all the uh, details of the titles you know where it can be crime or it can be either thriller or it can be fantasy so in that case the following query would be select star from netflix where genre reg xp within single quotes now i want the genre to be either crime and i'll mention the pipe symbol so do not mention the space here guys uh, directly mention it and why it can be thriller and finally it can be a fantasy as well so let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output so as you can see if i scroll this a bit so it will display the uh, records of all the titles that were added to netflix which has genre of either crime thriller or fantasy so if you look at this uh, for example title ganglands which is crime tv show similarly second one we have crime again and if you look at we have a thriller here which is basically movie paranoia and similarly we have fantasy as as well i guess if you scroll down a bit we can find it so as you can see we have action adventure sci-fi and fantasy so it will basically search for all the a uh, substring which has basically has a crime or thriller or fantasy sub substring in the genre names so this is how you can use uh, the pipe operator instead of now when we if you remember if we use the sql like operator which we use the percentage sign right so in that we have to use multiple or uh, operator in order to find the result so in this case we are just mentioning the pipe operator which will automatically search for all the uh, characters or the strings that you have mentioned all right let us now move to another example wherein discuss another scenario wherein we'll uh, match multiple co multiple characters with a single characters so what i mean from that is uh, let's say if i want to find the details of all the titles which has a combination of characters b c and r so in that case the following query would be select star from netflix where title reg xp now within the close brackets i'll mention two words that is b r sorry b c let us take as a b c and i'll close the brackets and i'll mention r next so it will basically search for all the patterns which has either b r or c r in the title name so let us just execute this and we'll see the output okay let us just only mention the title so that we have a clear idea all right so as you can see uh, if you look at the pattern b r right so in the first one we have the great british which has b r continuously so it it does not mean that it can have it any random position it should be in a sequential order that is continuous position so br we have british right next if you look at the bridgerton again we have br and similarly if you look at the cobra kai we have br again so that was one instance now if you look at uh, the cr combination right if we come to the cr combination we have crime stories which has cr and similarly if you scroll down a bit as well you can find some more examples of cr as well so again you can find crocodile dundi in los angeles which again starts with cr pattern so in this way you can uh, find multiple characters while mentioning them in the square brackets and with a single character as well all right let us now move to another example uh, where we'll use the close brackets now the close brackets is complete opposite of the uh, square brackets which will find the exact word that you are trying to find so let's say if i am finding if i want to retrieve the director details of the uh, shows that they have directed and the director's name should be either let's say antoini or it should uh, you can either have its name has that can start with b or or a character c so in that case what i'll do is select director from netflix where director reg xp mention the single quotes 
and we'll use this operator which is basically the caret symbol and within the uh, close brackets I'm mentioning Antony that is the director names should start with Antony or his name can start with B or his name can start with C so this is one of the pattern that we are looking into now so let us see how it executes so let me just display the results all right also we will use the order by so that we'll have in uh, the ascending descending or ascending order as per our wish so all right as you can see in the result and set uh, the director's name has started with b so uh, which is satisfying a condition which we have taken b and similar if you scroll down we have the director's name starting with c which is again satisfying the condition that we have taken and also it will look for the director name whether it is starting with antony or not so i don't think we have antony here in this so it will omit so you can basically take uh, any other character as well so let's say if i want the, uh, the director names to start with m so in that case it will search for it as well so if you scroll down it will display the records of all the directors with, who has m as the starting letter so we have like mark romson mark thornton and martin campbell and similarly etc so in this way you can use the close brackets with the caret symbol as well as the pipe symbol to find another pattern in this way as well so now if you want to find the director's name other than m b or c in that case you have to use the negation operator which is basically another caret which should be embedded inside the close brackets so when you execute this query All right, so we have to use the uh, square brackets here in order to uh, retrieve all the details of director's name whose name doesn't start with the characters M, B or C. So if you look at the result and set, it is displaying the uh, director's names like starting with A, D, F, G, H, J and so on, S, T, W and Y. That is basically except M, B and C characters, it will display the re records of all the directors. So in this way, you can also use this kind of pattern in order to find the data as well. So let us let, uh, look into our final uh, you know, example wherein we'll perform a complex you know, uh, regular expression search, wherein we'll find the title, the directors and the release year and the type that is the genre from the table where the title uh, name will be within a range. So let us consider a range here that is the all these uh, the title title direct, uh, where the title name starts with a character C and it can be in between C to K and it should have a type from Netflix where title regxp is a keyword open the uh, single brackets I'll mention the caret symbol and let us mention the range now. So I want the uh, title's name in the range of the character C to K. So let us mention them and we'll close the brackets and then mention the dot symbol because it will uh, allow you to find a single character in between and we'll have a total of 12 characters. So the title name should be of total 12 characters and we have to mention the dollar symbol. So let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output. So if you look at the result and set in the, uh, we have the title names, which has a total of 12 letters. So if you count the uh, first title, which is final account, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it has exactly 12 uh, characters in it. And it is also satisfying the condition uh, within the range. That is, it is starting with the character f which is lying in the range of c to k and similarly all the others as well so in this way you can also mention the uh, range in the pattern that you want to search for as well and you can also use the uh, numerical values now 
we don't have as such of uh, numerical values to retrieve so i'm not taking any uh, examples so i hope you understood this various scenario guys so that brings us to the end of today's session uh, that was all about the sql regex uh, operator now the now as we know that the advantage of using a regular expression is that you are not limited to search for a string based on a fixed pattern with the percentage sign or a underscore which is the wildcard characters in the like operator so the regular expression have more meta characters to construct flexible as well as the complex patterns so that is the reason why we are using the sql regex operation and coming to the uh, disadvantages of using regular expression is that it is quite uh, you know difficult to understand and maintain a complicated pattern so if you are an sql beginner you might struggle with uh, you know all these patterns so with a question given you have to change the patterns accordingly so if you are working on first time with this uh, regular expression so you might find it a bit difficult so therefore you should describe the meaning of the regular expression uh, in the comment of the sql statement so that you can understand clearly in addition the speed of the data retrieval in some cases is also decreased if uh, you know use complex pattern in regular expression now as you all know working on long queries uh, with complex logic is common for any sql developer out there so this can include using various joins various levels of aggregation data aggregations and filtering across any number of tables now in some cases a result resultant set can be cannot be obtained with a single query using a select statement or using a where condition it requires a series of queries to be put together now furthermore for complex queries the best way to write a query is to break it down into a logical steps and build it piece by piece now sub queries are typically one way to uh, consolidate functionality into a single sql statement that can be later be incorporated back to the main query now this has the potential to be useful but it is also challenging for a beginner who has just started with uh, you know a new level to read and comprehend and understand it well so this is where and it is possible to simplify difficult queries into a sequence of logical steps using cte or comal table expressions which also helps to make your queries more readable and allow you to produce more complex resultant set so in this session we'll be discussing all about common table expressions or cts in sql how they are used and implement them using certain examples in mysql workbench so without any further ado let's get started so firstly let us understand what is sql cte now cte stands for common table expressions and in sql it is a temporary resultant set that has a range within a single sql statement now a cte can be referenced at any place within that statement multiple times now generally the with clause is used to define a cte a common table expression do not exist as as a separate statement instead it is always used along with a select insert update or delete statement which immediately follows the ct so it is generally use uh, used and it enables users to write and maintain complex queries easily with increased readability and usability so you can basically define multiple expressions within a single query so once defined these expressions can be referenced repeatedly throughout the rest of your queries now common table expressions was relatively a new sql feature which was lately introduced in 1999 by microsoft sql server now ct was first introduced in sql server in the year 2005 and then postgresql made them available starting uh, in 2009 and which was further used by mysql which which has waited a bit longer and made them available in the year 2018 starting with the version of 8.0 so again uh, simply put it together it is a temporary data set guys which returns you know a query which is then used by another query so in order to reduce the complexity of a query we use ct so it is temporary because the result is not stored anywhere so it exists only when the query is being run so that is what a uh, ct is all about so let us now move ahead and let us understand why we use sql ct now the main reason is to store the result of a complex subquery for further use now in sql we will use subqueries to join the records 
or filter the records from a subquery, right? So whenever we refer the same data or join the same set of records using a subquery, the code maintainability will be difficult. So a CTE makes improved readability and maintenance easier for the user. And another reason being is uh, CTE can be reusable, guys. Now, the reason uh, why I'm telling it is reusable means, you know, a CTE is reusable by design. Instead of having to declare the same subquery in every place you need to use it, you can simply use a CTE to define a temporary table once, then refer to it whenever you need it. So you can call upon the uh, specified CTE whenever you want in your query. Also, CTE is more readable than a subquery. Now, another reason why we use CTE is they are more readable than subqueries. Since CTE can be reusable, you can write less code using CTE than using subquery. Also, people tend to follow the uh, logic that we put behind uh, behind the CTE in an easier way than in a nested query fashion. So whenever you write a query, it is easier to break down a complex query into smaller pieces using CTE. And finally, uh, CTE increases the performance of a query. Now, if you're working on a complex data, performance is paramount, right? So using subqueries, using multiple joins and joining various tables put together can, uh, you know, increase can decrease the performance of a query. Now, CT can be defined in various uh, scenarios like in procedures, views, triggers, and many more. So it can be used recursively with a subquery not, which can ultimately increase the performance of a query. All right, let us now understand how CT works. Now, a CT must be followed by a single select, insert, update, or a delete statement that references some or all the CT columns. So let us now understand the syntax of a uh, common table expression. The syntax is followed as with is the keyword we use CTE name. Now you can specify the uh, name of your choice for the CTE as and within the parenthesis mention the select statement with all the columns you want to uh, get in your resultant table and from the table name and close the parenthesis and after that will be basically again selecting the columns from the CT name instead of the table and you can also specify the where condition as per your requirement. I hope you understood uh, the syntax and how CT works. Now it will be clear when we get into the execution part. So let us directly jump into MySQL Workbench for execution. Alright, as you can see MySQL Workbench has started and let us now run some queries using CT. So let us just take an example for that. Uh, let us consider the employee table for understanding how CT works. So let me just display the values from the employees table. Alright, so the employees table has various attributes such as employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hiring date, job ID, salary, manager ID and their department ID. So let us now run a first query uh, wherein we'll find the highest salary of an employee working in different departments or you can say in each department. So in that case, we'll use a CTE here. And as we discussed earlier in the syntax, it starts with the with keyword. And after that, you can give uh, the CTE name as per your choice. So let us give it as highest salary since we are uh, finding the highest salary of employees in uh, different departments. So highest salary. And after that, use the as keyword and within the parenthesis, use the select statement and display all the records that you want to fetch in a resultant table. So select, I want my uh, first name of the employee, uh, last name, comma, department ID, comma, salary. Now, since we are finding the highest salary of each employee uh, from different departments, we'll be using the rank over function. Now we have discussed uh, about the rank over function in how in our uh, previous video, which is how to find the nth highest salary. So if you want to know it in a more detailed way, make sure you check that out. So I'm using a uh, rank over and which is followed by the partition keyword, which is partition by We are partitioning uh, based on the department ID here. Order by salary. And we'll use the descending keyword here because we 
uh, we are only concerned with the highest salary so it will be basically from highest to the lowest point so close the parenthesis and you need to give a temporary name for the uh, rank over function so let us just uh, let's say give it as salary rank from employee table employees table right all right and after that we have to mention the select statement again where we'll display uh, all the columns that we have mentioned in our uh, uh, ct again so let me just mention the first name last name salary department id from now you have to mention the ct that you have chosen here now highest salary is basically the name of our uh, ct so i'll mention the highest salary here instead of the table name where salary salary rank is equals to 1 now why i am choosing one is it will segregate all the salaries and it will only choose the highest salary from that so all right i think we can we are good to go so let us just execute the statement and we'll see the output all right as you can see in a resultant set it is displaying all the uh, data of the employees that is their first name last name and their highest salary uh, that is the employees working in different department and their highest salaries so let me just explain how the query is working here now the ct is named here as highest salary we use it to rank employees within each department by salary by using the window function rank over now we partition that data by the column which is department id this means we rank the salaries only within each department not across all the table right so the data is sorted according to the column salaries in a descending order because we want the highest salary as i said earlier in the department to have the highest rank which is one also we also have selected several columns from the table employees in the same ct and we need data from the ct in the next select statement uh, in order to uh, fetch in our resultant set and in the select statement we are basically selecting the columns needed to uh, uh, have in a resultant set that is the first name last name salary and department id so in this way you can use the ct to find the highest salary of each employee from uh, different departments now i know you might be wondered you know why uh, ct is being used where you can simply write a sub query to find the highest salary now i i get it i'll uh, explain it in a bit where we'll discuss in in the end why we are using ct here so le let us just uh, again take another example here guys so that we can have a clear cut idea on uh, more how the ct can work so in the second query we will be basically finding the average salary of each employee working in different employee now previously we have found the uh, you know highest salary of the employee in this case we will be using the uh, we will finding the average salary by each department of the employee so let us just write the query here first so again i am taking with so let us name our uh, ct name as average salary here since you are finding the average salary and within the parenthesis mention uh, all the uh, column names and the uh, operation that you are performing so since we are performing the average operation on the salary i am taking as average salary as i am taking it as average salary just give it a alias name and then we are uh, mentioning the department id from the table that is employees and we'll be basically grouping all the uh, details of the employees by their department id so that we can have the uh, average salary in each department so close the parenthesis now again we have to mention the select statement which is the outer statement after the ct now select first name last name department id salary from employee table employees table right 
Now, basically, uh, the criteria which is to find the average salary is basically we have to join the two tables, which is basically the same table that is employees, and we'll be comparing the salary of employees from these two tables simultaneously, right? So we have to join these two tables that is the CT table and the employees table here. So that is the reason I will be joining the table now. So let me just take the employees table uh, alias name as E so that we can find it easily. So E dot first name I'm taking E dot last name E dot department ID and E dot salary from employees E. And basically, I'll be uh, joining this with the CT that is average salary that we have taken. All right. So I hope you have understood this till now. So let us just give a name to this. Uh, let's say AVG. And we are joining the uh, table based on the department ID from both these referenced tables. Right. So I'm taking E dot department ID is equals to AVG which is the name of our uh, CT table that is the temporary table which we have taken. So department ID and we'll order we'll use the order by statement so that we'll have a more clear resultant set order by department ID and we are good to go now. So let us just execute this statement and we'll see the output. All right, as you can see in our resultant table, it is displaying all the average salaries of the employee. So let us just quickly go through the uh, explanation. So this query is using a CT named average salary guys in order to calculate the average salary in each department. Now the select statement in the CT groups the rows by department and uses the average aggregate function to calculate the average for each department. Now, once we have that, we combine it with other columns from the table employees to complete the resultant answer. Now, to do so, we are basically joining the uh, employees with the CT name as we would do with any two tables to join them. So, we select the columns, the required columns as we have taken here, which is the first name, last name, department and salary from the employee table and the column average salary from the CT. So, in this way, you can use the CT to find the average salary uh, in each department of different employees. Uh, so there's a little error guys. I forgot to mention the average salary columns. So I was just wondering why we didn't have the average uh, salary in our resultant set. So let us just mention that now average dot average salary which we have taken earlier. All right, so let us execute the statement. All right, now you can see the uh, the salary of the employees working in different departments and also the average salary of that particular department. Now, if you look at the department 10, now the salary is 44,000 and the average salary is also 44,000. Now, if you look at the department ID, which is 20, now we have two different employees, Pat Frey and Michael Haston whose salaries are different that is 60,000 and 13,000 but the average salary in that uh, department is 36,500 and similarly you can see for the rest of uh, the different departments as well. So I hope this is clear. Uh, now it brings us to the main question that why are we using and when we are using you know CT. Now traditionally you've probably noticed that CTs are a lot like subqueries. Maybe you're wondering why I'm using CTs when everything I did could have been done with a simple subquery. Now that's true aside uh, from being more readable CTs have one big advantage of uh, subqueries that is the resultant set or the results from a CT can be used more than once in a query. So let's say if you're working on a complex database where you have to join multiple uh, tables from the database and you have to perform various operations. So in that case, you have to keep on writing the subqueries. Now, let's say if I want to find the maximum of average salary from the uh, employees table. So in that case, now that I've created a CTA, I can directly uh, write a select statement, which says select max. And inside that I'll be writing the average salary, 
which is the name of the CT from the CT name. CT name that is we have taken as AVG underscore salary. So now instead of calculating the average salary uh, of each employee from different department using subqueries, which is a whole complete whole uh, process, right? It takes a bit of time. So instead of that, I'm writing a simple CT for that. And later I'm using the same to calculate the maximum average salary. So when I execute this, it will directly display the maximum of average salary of all the employees in a different departments. So it becomes quite easier, you know, instead of writing subqueries each and uh, every time. Now, if the code with the subquery is less readable and it is harder to understand the code with a CT in simple way, right? So you would be trying really hard just to understand what every part of the code does when you're writing subqueries. Now having difficulties understanding a code can be frustrating. So that is where CTs can help you guys. It is one of the most powerful tools to process hierarchical complex data into a simple manner where you can e use it multiple times. So that brings us to the end of today's session guys. That was all about uh, CTs in SQL. I hope you as you all know learning how to answer the SQL interview questions is a powerful skill which can make the difference between getting hired for the job or not and nowadays the competition for one job is quite high and many candidates are applying for the same position so if you want to get hired you cannot afford for not being prepared to present yourself as the best fit candidate for that particular job role so in order to answer the interview questions one of the main area where you can prepare the best is especially when it comes to the most common SQL interview questions because these questions are asked during all the interview all the job interview questions, right? So in this session, we'll be discussing some uh, SQL queries where you can practice them and which will also help you during your uh, interviews as well. More on that soon. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest technologies and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let us jump into MySQL Workbench uh, in order to uh, execute this top five free SQL queries. So let's get started. All right, as you can see, MySQL Workbench has started. Uh, so firstly, let us look at some of the key things that you need to keep in mind while you know uh, preparing or answering the interview questions. Now the general questions will revolve around key concepts like you know asking the uh, different types of commands in SQL, different constraints, indexes, views, uh, joins, different functions, and etc. And at the same time, not just this theoretical and the uh, you know scenario-based questions, rather than the objective questions wherein you can be asked to write a query, you know, a proper SQL query wherein the interviewer wants to test your knowledge in deep you know whether you're uh, understanding the SQL queries or not. Now this level of interview questions also entirely depend on the position that you're applying. So keeping in mind I have uh, already created five SQL uh, questions that you might find tricky. So this might be useful for a beginner as well uh, which is the difficulty of the queries is from uh, you know from beginner level to moderate level. So you can easily answer this qu queries but there is a bit of you know a tricky part in them as well which we'll discuss as the session progresses so before answering the queries you have to be thorough with all the concepts of sql so we have a dedicated playlist on sql wherein we have covered various topics on uh, topics and concepts regarding uh, sql so make sure you check that out before uh, you know you start performing the queries so let us discuss the queries uh, one by one. So the first query is write an SQL query to fetch the third last record from employees table. So let me just uh, open this new tab. All right. Uh, let us now first uh, display the records from the employee table. That is select star from employees. So as you can see, the employee table has various columns such as you know employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hiring date, job ID, salary, manager ID. And department ID. So the query that was asked is write an SQL query to fetch the third last record from this employee table. So if you scroll down a bit and you can see the last uh, record is William and the third last record is 
Herman Bayer. So basically, we need to get the record of this employee who's having employee ID as 204, whose name is Herman Bayer, and he works as a PR or uh, some PR uh, as a specialist on PR. So, right. So basically, you can solve this, you know, in different ways. So basically, the logical approach is using any window function, which we'll be discussing now, and sort the data in descending order, you know, based on the employee ID, and then provide a row number to each of the record and fetch the record having row number as three. I know it is a bit of confusing, so let us just directly write the query first, so you guys can have a clear cut understanding. Select, uh, mention the all the uh, rows you want in your resultant table so i am taking employee id uh, their first name their last name department id as well salary from now we have to write a subquery in this wherein we'll use uh you no know, select operator select star comma now we have to use a window function here. Now the window function which I'm going to use here is row number function. So the row number function is basically a you know SQL ranking function that assigns a sequential ranking number to each new record in a partition. Now when the SQL row number function detects two identical values in the same position, it will assign different rank numbers to both. So the logic behind is that we'll be assigning row number to each of the records based on the employee ID and then we'll find the third last you know record from this table. All right. So row number and I'll be using the over which is the syntax and we'll order we'll sort the data in descending order. So order by employee ID in descending order. from the employee table that is employees where you have to mention the row number as well so row number so let us take uh, the row number here as row number this is a, basically a sub table right so you, you need to mention the row number as well where row number is equals to 3 since we are finding the third last record from a table so let us execute this and we'll see the output. So there is an error which says every derived table must have its own alias. Uh, so I think we forgot to mention the alias name for the table here. So let us take the alias name as employees E here. And uh, let us take it as X. So it will basically be X dot RN. So I think uh, it is correct now. So as you can see in our resultant set, we have got the resultant uh, table, which is of Herman's Bayer record whose employee ID is 204, just as we discussed previously, which is the third last record in the table who belongs to department ID 70 and his salary is $10,000. So in this way, you can simply use uh, the window function uh, row number to find the third last record from the table. So similarly, you might be asked to find the, uh, you know, second last or fifth last in different contexts. So the scenario might be different, but the order and the approach to solve this query is the same. All right, moving ahead, let us now discuss the second query. Now the second query states that from the Olympics table, fetch the details of all athletes who belong to the same country, but have participated in different Olympic games. All right, so let me just uh, open another tab. So firstly, let us uh, retrieve the details from the Olympics table, which is select star from Olympics. So the Olympic table has various uh, attributes like ID, name, sex, age, height, weight, country, NOC, games, year, season, city, sports, and event. So what the query states is from the Olympics table, fetch the details of all the athletes. So we are concerned with this uh, column, which is name, which is the details of all the athletes who belong to the same country, but have participated in different Olympic games. Now in the resultant set, we need to have the resultant table, which has 
the details of all the athletes who have, who are from the same country but have participated in different Olympic games here, yeah, like the 1992 summer, uh, 2012 summer. So basically, they have to be from the same country but different games. Now, the logical approach uh, to write this query is basically by using the self join to solve this problem, which is uh, used to join a table to itself to compare the values within the same table. All right, so let us discuss the query now. So again, though, in order to solve this query, you have to be uh, thoroughly, you know, knowing the uh, joins concept. So we also have a dedicated video on that as well, where you have discussed uh, the various different kinds of joins. So make sure you check that out as well. So let me just write the query select. Now there might be, uh, you know, multiple, uh, you know, athletes participating in same or different games, right? So I'll be using distant clause here, distinct. And since we are joining the two tables, we need to have a temporary name for two different tables. So the for the first table, I am taking it as D1 dot name, which is the athletes uh, details. Next, I am taking uh, D1 dot country, comma D1 dot games from Olympics, which is the first table D1. And then I'll use the join keyword, which will basically self join the same table, which is Olympics again, but we have to mention a different temporary name, which will be D2 here. I hope you're understanding this on D1 dot country equals to D2 dot country. So the condition that I'm specifying here, specifying here is that we need to have these in country here. That is the athletes participating in different Olympic games should be from the same country, but he should be, it should have, he should have played different Olympic games. So in that sense, I'm using another condition, which is and operator where D1 games, I'm using not equals to operator here, which will compare two operators if they are same or not. If they are not same, it will retrieve all the values. So D2 dot games. And I'll similarly use an order by, so we can have in a sorted order, which is order by name, as well as let's say a country as well. All right, so let us now execute the statement and we'll see the output. All right, we have the resultant set. Uh, as you can see in a resultant set, we have the details of athletes who have participated in various different games, but belong to the same country. Now, if you look at uh, A. D. Jang, who's belong to China has participated in 1992 summer games, whereas A. Lamusi, who is from the same country again, China, but has participated in 2012 summer games. Now, similarly, we have this Abdul Latif, oh, it's a big name, let us just take another one. Uh, we have Augustino Abangel, uh, who's from the country Italy, who has participated in 1988 summer games. Similarly, we have, you know, Uh, Alejandro Abascal Garza, who is from Spain, who has participated in various different uh, games uh, ranging from 1984, 1980 and 1976 summer games. So in this way, you can uh, find the details of all the athletes uh, who is from the same country but have participated in different games. Alright, let us now move on to the next query which is uh, write a SQL query to display only the details of employees who either earn the highest salary or the lowest salary in each department from the employee table. All right, so let me just open another tab and we'll retrieve the details from employee table again. So start from employees. All right, we have the employees table. So the question, let us go through the question again, which says write an SQL query to display only the details of employees who either earn the highest salary or the lowest salary in each department from the employee table. So we need to provide uh, in the resultant set the details of all those employees who are either having the highest salary or the lowest salary from each department. Now the logical uh, approach to this question can be is like we can write a subquery which will partition the data based on each department ID and then identify the record with the maximum and the minimum salary for each of the partition department. And you know you can finally from the main query you can fetch only the data which matches the maximum and the minimum salary return from the subquery. I know it is a bit uh, confusing, so let us uh, write the query so that we'll have a clear understanding again. 
so select i'll just uh, display all the records so i'll use the select star operator select star from employee employees so we'll give an alias name since it will take a lot of time uh, writing employees each and every time so i'm just taking it as e now we have to basically self join where it will compare the records from the same table so i'm using the join table join statement again and i'm using a subquery and within the subquery i'm basically selecting the records again which is select star and now we have to create uh, you know the partition for maximum salary and minimum salary in our employee table so create a partition which is maximum salary over partition by department id now since we want the highest and uh, highest and lowest salary from each department so i'm considering the department id here now since we are using the partition we need to give a name for this so we'll take it as max salary and similarly you have to create you know minimum salary partition as well the syntax remains same guys just mention it uh, partition by again department id this will be minimum salary all right from the table which is employees now since this is a subquery and it is a derived table we need to give a alias name for this table as well so we'll just take it as x and since we have used the join we have to mention the join on which uh, table we have uh, performed which is basically a self join on the employee table itself so e dot employee id which is basically the primary key which has which will uh, uniquely uh, you know identify all the records so that's why i'm taking employee id here is equals to x dot employee id all right and now mention the condition here so the condition is basically it should match the salary with the maximum salary from the uh, table that is employee or it should match the salary with the minimum salary from the same table that is employee so i'll be taking e dot salary is equals to x dot maximum salary all right or the condition can be e dot salary equals to x dot minimum salary so it would basically uh, find all the you know details which has the salary which is either maximum or minimum right that is it and you can also use order by if you want to uh, get in a you know particular order so order by x dot department id comma x dot uh, let's say salary as well all right i think we do not have any error we can just directly run the query and we will see the output all right our query has been successfully executed and we have a total of 18 records so let us just understand how the query has worked here all right now we have uh, various departments ids that are being uh, displayed in our resultant table now if you look at the first uh, department id which is then the maximum salary uh, is 44000 and the minimum salary is also 44000 in this department and the employee id or the employee details is jennifer valen so let us just discuss another example here so next let us move on to the department id 20 which has the maximum salary as 60000 and minimum salary as 30000 now we have a total of two records here that is uh basically mikan haston who is basically having the lowest salary in the uh, department who belongs to the department 20 and we have pat fay whose salary is the highest which is 60000 in the department 20 20 which is being uh, being displayed here with in the separate section as maximum salary and minimum salary and so on for rest of the department ids also it will basically segregate all the details of the employees who is having the maximum salary and the minimum salary 
So I hope you've understood how to solve this query. Uh, this isn't, uh, you know, rocket science or, you know, uh, having a lot of difficulty to solve the question. We have just basically used, you know, a self join and a partition by statement. Now partition by is basically an optional clause used in the row number function basically, which is a clause that divides the resultant set into partitions like, you know, group of rows. Now the partition which we have created is basically the maximum salary and the minimum salary. Now when this row number is applied to each partition which assigns a separate rank number to each partition right so in the same way we can see that you know different salaries are being assigned to the maximum salary partition that we have created all right let us now move on to our uh, next query which is our query 4 which says write sql query to find the seventh highest salary from a table without using the top or limit keyword now this is one of the most common SQL you know interview questions is to find the nth highest salary of employees where n could be anything like 3, 4, 7, 13 anything you know based on number of records that the interviewer wants to know like in order to ex uh, find the let's say 13th highest salary in SQL uh, sometimes this question is also twisted to find the nth minimum or nth highest maximum salary in SQL now since many programmers only know the easiest way to solve the problem is using the top or the limit keyword which will directly fetch the records now what if the interviewer wants to know uh, another you know uh, case to solve this problem so in that situation what you will do you know you, you cannot use the top or limit keyword for that so basically we use the row number function or the rank or dense rank function to find the nth highest salary uh, to find the nth uh, highest salary from the table but in this case, we shouldn't we shouldn't use all those and even the top and limit keyword. So let us now see how to you know uh, write this query. So let me again use a new tab. Now, in order to find the nth maximum uh, salary from the employee table, we have to use a correlated subquery. Now, the question that is asked is to find the seventh highest salary from the employee table. So basically, a correlated uh, subquery is a special type of subquery where the subquery depends upon the main query and executes for each and every row returned by the main query. Now the only uh, drawback of this that it is a bit slow but it can solve the problems which are difficult to solve for example like to find the 15, 20 or 100 like in thousandth uh, you know highest salary from the employee table. So let us now uh, write the query so that we'll have a clear understanding again. So the query is followed as select. So basically first let us, you know, uh, find the seventh highest salary. For that I'll be using the maximum. Select max salary from the employees table. Uh, sorry guys there was a mistake uh, we shouldn't need the maximum salary we just need the salaries and in the order of which they are uh, separated so order by salary in descending order that is from highest to lowest we will be sorting them right so let me just execute this query so the highest salary in our table is 93,000 and the second highest salary is 90,000 so the query that was asked for is to find the seventh highest salary that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 so 80,000 okay uh, we have a uh, repeated value so we'll just use the distinct keyword as well so that we'll have a uh, unique records all right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so the seventh highest salary is basically 79,800 so we know we need to now fetch the details of the employees whose salary is basically the seventh highest salary which is 79,800 so the query would be followed something as select uh, you know star from employee employees uh, let us take it as e1 since we will be uh, you know comparing the same table where n minus 1 I'll explain in the uh, at the last why we are using n minus 1 here guys so let's just uh, continue with the query now we have to write a correlated subquery just we've uh, discussed earlier which is basically select count distinct salary so i'm using distinct 
e2 dot salary basically we are comparing the same table once again from employees e2 where mention the condition on which you want to perform uh, you know the separation now we need to find the uh, highest salary right so the salary in second table that is e2 dot salary should be greater than e1 dot salary so this is what the query uh, exactly is guys so let us just understand how now how this query is working here so as i said uh, the distinct keyword is there in order to deal with any duplicate uh, records or the salaries that are present in the table so in order to find the nth highest salary uh, which is basically we need to find the seventh highest salary right we are only considering the unique salaries here and the highest salary means no salary should be higher than it for example if the second highest salary means only one salary is higher than it that is the first salary similarly the third highest means no two salaries are higher than the first two salaries similarly uh, for the seventh highest salaries the, you can say there are n minus 1 salaries that are higher than it so for example if i am taking 7th salary so n basically becomes 7 so 7 minus 1 is basically 6 right so which is finding the 7th highest salary from the table so let us just execute this and we'll see the output so as you can see the 7th highest salary that we have already uh, seen the output table which should have 79800 as a resultant table and it is uh, showcasing all the details of the employees who is having the 7th highest salary uh, who is Payam Coughlin whose employee ID is you know 122 whose email is P Coughlin his hiring date his job ID and the rest of the details are being displayed so in this way you can uh, find you know the seven, nth highest salary uh, you know from the employees table so this is basically a generic solution which works in all databases including you know MySQL Oracle database SQL PostgreSQL and the only drawback as i said earlier is it is slow because the inner query will run for every row possessed by the outer query so do let us know in the comment section below what all different methods we can use for this same query and we also have a dedicated video on how to find the nth highest salary using various uh, keywords like the top limit using uh, dense rank functions so you can check that out as well so moving on to the final question guys uh, the final question is write an sql query to fetch the details of all the shows and the countries and sort the shows made in india at the top and the rest of them in ascending order uh, i think this is from netflix table so from the netflix table so let us just uh, retrieve the details first and we'll see how the query works select star from netflix all right so the netflix uh, table has the show id type title director country date added release your rating duration genre so let us go through the qu uh, query again it says that we need to fetch the details of all the shows that is basically the title these are the show names right and the countries countries we have the countries also which they are made in and sort the shows that are made in india at the top that is we need to mention we need to display all the shows that were made in india at the top level and the rest of them in ascending order from the netflix table so i hope the question is clear guys so let us now write the query all right since we are only concerned with the uh, you know the show name that is the title and the country we will just select those now we may have the titles repeated so i am just taking the distinct values distinct title comma country from netflix and we'll basically order by country first and we'll see how the output is all right so it basically uh, displays all the show uh, details of all the shows that were made in uh, by different countries for example you can see el patron uh, rodrigo d and crimen has has been made uh, from argentina we have a level 16 from canada so the query that was asked is we need to sort the shows made in India at the top and rest of all the shows in ascending order. 
so basically we need to have uh, the show names that are in india so let me just check we have uh, so yeah right we have uh, certain shows that were made in india as well so you can see there are list of so many records of all the shows uh, for example angamali diaries anjam dhanak gurgaon jeans minasara kanavu and so many others so basically in a resultant set we want all the details of all these to be at the top and the rest of them in the ascending order like for example australia and then we need brazil and then canada and similarly france so basically in the alphabetical order so the logical approach for this is using the case expression guys now that is the tricky part where you know the interviewer wants to know whether you are familiar with this concept of case expressions so basically the case expression goes through the conditions and return a value when the first condition is met just like an if uh, if and else statement you use for other programming languages like c c++ so the once the condition is true it will stop reading and return the result and if no conditions are true it result it returns the values in the else clause so basically we need to mention the case condition here all right so the query is followed as so mention the case keyword the syntax is uh, followed in this in this way which is case when country is equals to india then return zero that is basically return the true values if there is any record or the title name having india else will mention it as one and finally we'll end the statement which is again the keyword we have to use for case expression all right so let us now just uh, implement this and we'll see the output so there was a minor error guys uh, so as you can see in a resultant set we have the details of all the shows that were made in india that is being displayed at the top as you can see we have all the list of all the uh, shows of india and then after that the query states that we need to uh, sort the rest of the or the remaining shows that were made from different countries in ascending order as you can see uh, just like we have discussed earlier the country names have been uh, sorted in ascending order like argentina austria brazil canada china italy japan nigeria and so on pakistan united states right so united states is the last country which is being sorted in the alphabetical order now the same question can be asked you know uh, when we have multiple conditions to specify now for example if i want all the shows that were made in india as well as germany to be at the top and the rest of the remaining shows from different countries to be sorted in the ascending order after the shows that were made in india and germany so in that case the query just remains the same you just need to add another condition now first which is which is case and country is equals to india then zero next the condition will be case uh i don't think we need to write the case again and again when country equals to germany then we'll we'll specify it as one so if there is uh, no country that is having shows uh, other than india and germany so we'll be basically we'll uh, mention it as two and we are ending the statement so let us just execute this query and we'll see the output so as you can see in a resultant query the firstly we have the case condition which will uh, retrieve all the details of the shows that were made in india as you can see in a re resultant set and after that we need to have the shows that were made in germany so since we have mentioned the country as germany it is being displayed as germany that is the titles or the shows that were made in germany and the rest of the remaining shows that were that belongs to other countries and we need to sort them in ascending order in the form of their alphabetical orders like argentina australia brazil and so on so this query is asked in general you know when you want to give a uh, certain records a priority that is you want to mention you know you want to display certain records at the top and the remaining at the bottom so in that case this query will be useful which can be done using a case expression and with that we have come to the end of today's session guys uh, these were some of the top 5 you know sql interview question and answers that would have given you an insight into what kind of 
questions could be asked in your next interview and you need to be prepared for it as well as discussed earlier uh, not just the theoretical questions you need to be prepared for the uh, <coughs> real time sql queries where you have to write the queries you know exact queries so in that case you have to be prepared for that as well so in this session we only covered you know uh, the difficulty level from uh, easy to moderate level so in our upcoming videos we'll discuss in a same way like the top 5 or top 10 tricky questions where the uh, difficulty becomes a bit more higher where we'll discuss advanced sql queries that might be asked in your next interview questions and with that we have reached the end of this session on mysql full course overall the future of mysql looks bright as it continues to be the popular database solution for businesses of all sizes mysql offers a combination of ease of use high performance scalability and reliability which makes it an attractive option for many users and organizations hope the session was informative and helpful we hope you had a lot to learn and if you have any further queries regarding any concepts or topics in this tutorial feel free to let us know in the comments below and our team of experts will be more than happy to assist you until next time thank you and keep learning hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here